Chapter 701 Light Beasts Challenge All the major factions who wanted to vie for first place mobilized their forces to study what kind of companion beast the Origin Realm King was, as well as its various abilities. Without a doubt, the Origin Realm King's most terrifying ability was invisibility. Even Primordial Sword Immortal couldn't find it. This was an extremely terrifying ability. In addition, it was also probably very fast. Otherwise, even if it was invisible, it would be difficult for it to dodge Primordial Sword Immortal's high-speed sword beams. Based on these two points, professionals began to study and analyze various possibilities. Everyone was constantly paying attention to the rankings. As there were less than 72 hours left, there was a chance that someone could challenge the Origin Realm King at any time. In fact, other than first place, there were already many people with lower rankings challenging those with higher rankings. They hoped to obtain a better spot before the ranking matches ended. In the final 72 hours, there was only an hour to accept the challenge. If one didn't accept the challenge within the hour, they would automatically be declared the loser. Jowen was also studying Origin Realm King. After watching the battle between Origin Realm King and Primordial Sword Immortal, he had a nagging feeling that something was amiss. After getting the video to watch carefully, he still failed to see any problems. Origin Realm King's invisibility ability could be said to be perfect. He couldn't find any flaws. No matter how strong Primordial Sword Immortal was, no matter how strong he was, it was useless against an enemy who could casually appear beside him. All companion beasts have their weaknesses. Is the invisibility ability of the Origin Realm King really that perfect? Shouwen didn't believe in absolute perfection. Just like Torch Dragon's Bright Torch Vision world, such a powerful skill could be nullified with just a mirror. Origin Realm King's invisibility was indeed very powerful, but Jowen felt that it definitely had a weakness. It was just that he hadn't discovered it yet. Just as the various factions were nervously studying it, a companion beast named Light Beast suddenly challenged the first-ranked Origin Realm King. Light Beast? Isn't that a companion beast of the family clan of gods? I heard that it has the power of light, but its combat strength isn't strong. At best, it's about the level of Inferno Dragon? It's far inferior to Primordial Sword Immortal. How can it challenge Origin Realm King? Could it be that the family clan of gods has found the weakness of the Origin Realm King? Can Light Beast restrain Origin Realm King? Everyone was puzzled as they waited for the battle to begin. They wanted to know from this challenge if the family clan of gods had really found the weakness of Origin Realm King or if they had other motives. Li Xian organized the members of the Xianwen Club to watch the battle in front of a cube. Zhou Wen followed them to the cube. He had a nagging feeling that Origin Realm King's invisibility wasn't that perfect. Holy sh asterisk t, don't tell me everyone in Luoyang is here? Li Xian said gloomily, as he looked at the crowd. They were still a few streets away from the cube, but they were already unable to proceed forward. They could only see human heads bobbing about. They couldn't see the cube at all. That's not surprising. The various companion beasts that appeared before, including Primordial Sword Immortal, might be very powerful, but they could at least be clearly seen. However, this Origin Realm King is completely different. You can't even see it. The unknown has a fatal attraction to human curiosity. Everyone wants to know what kind of companion beast Origin Realm King is, Li Weiyang said. At this distance, we can't see a thing. We might as well stay at home and watch from our phones. It was rare for Huang Ji to join them. He was actually very interested in the abilities of various companion beasts, so he participated in the Xianwen Club's excursion. Of course, he mainly wanted to reproduce the data and abilities of these companion beasts in-game. After the ranking battles began, Wang Ji had been analyzing the abilities of the companion beasts. He planned on using them as prototypes to create some game bosses. If there's really no other way, let's find a quiet restaurant and watch the live stream, Gully suggested. He felt that watching the live stream was no different from watching from the cube screen. Zhou Wen also felt that they were too far away. Even Truth Listener couldn't reach such a distance, but they couldn't barge through the crowd. Li Xian's heart suddenly stirred as he said to the silent Gu Yin, who was at the rear, Old Gu, walk ahead of us. Zhou Wen and company's eyes lit up as they knew what Li Xian was thinking. They hurriedly made way for Gu Yin to take the lead. Stop squeezing! You? Ah! A fierce-looking man felt that someone was trying to squeeze past him. He opened his mouth and wanted to curse, but just as he did so, he turned his gaze over. When he saw the person, his legs trembled in fear, and he nearly fell to the ground. He hurriedly shut his mouth and retreated in fear. He looked fierce himself, but when he saw the person squeezing through, he was so frightened that his heart pounded and cold sweat broke out on his back. He had never seen such a ferocious person in his entire life. He was very worried that the other party would directly stab him to death. Therefore, he kept retreating, forcing out some space to make way for the person. Gu Yan ignored him and continued walking forward. Zhou Wen and company lined up 
and followed closely behind Gu Tian. For some reason, they felt the thrill of cutting through a line that spanned several streets. The streets were extremely crowded. Everyone wanted to squeeze in, but no one was willing to give in. There were even quite a number of people who had verbal disputes. However, Gu Dian successfully passed through the crowd. It didn't look difficult at all. Before long, Zhou Wen and company arrived at a suitable distance. It was equivalent to the best seats in a theater, around the sixth or seventh row. They waited for Origin Realm King to accept the challenge. As it only had an hour to accept the challenge, and it took Zhou Wen and company quite a bit of time to rush over, there were less than ten minutes left. Yet, Origin Realm King still hadn't accepted the challenge. It can't be! Origin Realm King hasn't accepted the challenge? Could it be that Light Beast is really its nemesis? It's really possible. Under the light, darkness has nowhere to hide. Perhaps it's really the nemesis of invisibility? No matter how great a nemesis it is, Origin Realm King is an existence that can fight Primordial Sword Immortal. It would be odd if Light Beast could have an effect on it. As people were arguing, they saw the name on the arena flash. Origin Realm King had accepted the challenge, but they didn't see its figure. Everyone knew that Origin Realm King had already appeared in the arena, but they just couldn't see it. Light Beast clearly knew this, so it didn't hesitate to launch an attack. Light emitted from its body like a sun, illuminating the entire arena. This was its Wheel of Destiny's power, Light Ray. Chapter 702 Perfect Companion Beast I see! This Light Beast is using attacks indiscriminately to force out Origin Realm King. No matter how invisible Origin Realm King is, it can't really disappear. Such an attack is very likely to find its traces, Gully said. Sadie nodded and said, Light Beast is a mythical companion beast of the family clan of gods. Its Wheel of Destiny is called Light Ray. Although its offensive power isn't strong, its range is very large. Furthermore, it can last for a long time. It's suitable for restraining invisibility. From the looks of it, the family clan of gods didn't find a way to restrain Origin Realm King. They just want to use this method to figure out what kind of companion beast Origin Realm King is. Zhou Wen and company stared at the cube's huge screen. The light illuminated the entire arena. If anything was in the arena, even if it couldn't be seen, it would be injured by the light rays. Even if it couldn't be injured, it would have some reaction. Strangely, nothing happened across the entire arena. The light rays didn't meet any obstacles, nor did they collide with any forces. Neither did the light refract. That's strange. Could it be that Origin Realm King is really an invisible and intangible spirit body? Impossible. If it's really an invisible and incorporeal spirit body, how could Origin Realm King directly attack Primordial Sword Immortal during the battle? It definitely has a form. As you can see, Light Ray has already enveloped the entire arena. If it really has a body, it's impossible for it to not react to the Light Ray. Perhaps it's some temporarily incorporeal skill. It shouldn't last long. The various families were discussing how Origin Realm King had dodged Light Ray, but they couldn't make an accurate guess. Light Beast continued shooting out Light Ray. It could do so for several hours, so there was no need to worry about it being ambushed by Origin Realm King. Just as everyone was discussing, they suddenly saw the nose and face of the Light Beast crater, as though it had been smashed by an invisible fist. Then, Light Beast flew out, bleeding from its seven orifices. It died immediately without even having the chance to surrender. Instantly, everyone broke out into a cold sweat. Many people had guessed that Light Beast was no match for Origin Realm King. However, no one expected Light Beast to lose so tragically. Not only did it fail to force out Origin Realm King, but it was even killed in one strike. Clearly, the difference between the two was too great. Light Beast couldn't even withstand one strike. The family clan of God's plan had failed, and they had even lost Light Beast. It's really too powerful. It has invincible invisibility and invincible strength. It's practically a perfect companion beast. If Origin Realm King wants to assassinate someone, I'm afraid no one in this world can escape its assassination, right? Just the thought of it is terrifying. What primordial sword immortal? What death of the underworld? Compared to Origin Realm King, they are so weak. I wonder who was so lucky to obtain a companion beast like Origin Realm King. The ordinary citizens of the Federation were discussing the topic of Origin Realm King. In the battle against primordial sword immortal, people were still doubtful of Origin Realm King's strength. However, Killing Light Beast in one strike had allowed Origin Realm King to truly ascend to the throne. It left a deep mark in the history of human companion beasts. The various families began their intense research and analysis work. They had used all sorts of high-tech equipment to record videos, so they repeatedly studied and analyzed them. However, no matter how they analyzed and studied it, Origin Realm King's invisibility was perfect. Light Beast's indiscriminate light ray couldn't touch its body at all. It was even killed in a frontal attack. 
This capability was terrifying and made one feel uneasy. Just as the man on the street said, having Origin Realm King was equivalent to having the most terrifying assassin in the world. Even the members of the six families were worried that they would be assassinated by Origin Realm King. If Origin Realm King was from overseas, the Federation would be in even more danger. Even if it was a companion beast of the Federation, it would be equally intolerable. It was like a sharp blade hanging over one's neck. It was unknown when it would land. Furthermore, the person holding the blade wasn't them. Repeated studies and analysis ensued as everyone in the world wanted to find out the weakness of Origin Realm King. I wonder if the power of Origin Realm King can augment its master, Feng Chiyun said in thought. I don't think so. It's already invincible in this state. If it can augment its owner, wouldn't it be like a bug in games? Li Xian curled his lips. It's not impossible. Just like the invisibility cloak that once caused a stir, it can make people perfectly invisible. No reconnaissance method can see its existence, said Huang Ji. Sadie seemed to know something about the invisibility cloak as she continued. Although the invisibility cloak can result in complete invisibility that can't be detected, there's a time limit. It can only maintain an invisible and formless state for a period of time. Usually, it's just invisibility, but it can still be detected by special means. Just like the light ray from Light Beast just now, it can expose the invisibility cloak under normal conditions. If not for that, the Zhang family wouldn't have been able to successfully return the invisibility cloak to its companion egg form back then. The few of them discussed as they walked. Zhou Wen didn't say a word. He had a nagging feeling that something was amiss, but he couldn't tell what was wrong. After this battle, no companion beasts challenged Origin Realm King again. This was because no one wanted to risk having their companion beasts killed. No mythical companion beast was easy to come by. Knowing that it was suicide, no one was willing to do it. The various factions could only keep researching and analyzing, hoping to find the weakness of Origin Realm King. However, in the blink of an eye, there were only 48 hours left. No one could figure out the weakness of Origin Realm King. They watched the video so many times, but they couldn't even tell where Origin Realm King was, much less figure out what it looked like and what weaknesses it had. Now, many people believe that Origin Realm King was probably going to take first place in the ranking battle. Up to now, no companion beast could restrain it, and there wasn't much time left. Zhou Wen had been studying the video the entire time as well. After repeatedly watching it, he failed to find the location of Origin Realm King. Could it be that the invisibility ability of Origin Realm King is really that perfect? How many modes of invisibility are there? Spirit bodies are considered one of them. Origin Realm King is most likely a spirit body. However, from its attack patterns, it seems to have a corporeal body. Also, total invisibility is impossible. If it's just total invisibility, it will definitely be detected by light ray. Then, there's the type akin to invisibility cloak that can temporarily turn into nothingness. From the looks of it, this possibility is the highest. Also, it could be as small as primordial spore, so it can't be seen. However, no matter how small it is, it should react when it's shot by the omnipresent light ray. Wait, that's not right. Zhou Wen seemed to think of something. Chapter 703 Zhou Wen Speculation Zhou Wen carefully recalled Origin Realm King's two battles, and specially watched a few important parts of the recording. The things that he originally felt were amiss gradually became clearer. If I view Origin Realm King as a companion bee similar to Primordial Spore, or something even smaller than Primordial Spore, so small that even the Holy Hell King's eyes can't see the sin flames on its body, wouldn't that explain why Primordial Sword Immortal Sword Beam can't hit it? It's not because its speed is so fast that Primordial Sword Immortal can't hit it, but because it's too small. In that case, its strength definitely can't be too strong. Therefore, although it looked like it was thrashing Primordial Sword Immortal in all sorts of ways, it was actually unable to kill Primordial Sword Immortal due to its insufficient strength. Zhou Wen continued surmising. The battle with Light Beast proved this point even more. Light Ray was everywhere. If Origin Realm King was really in the arena, it would probably trigger a reaction to Light Ray. Even if it can turn into nothingness, at the instant it attacked Light Beast, it should have collided with Light Ray. However, despite repeatedly watching the recordings, nothing whatsoever happened. Light Ray didn't collide with anything from the beginning to the end. Then, there's only one explanation. Ever since Origin Realm King entered the arena, it had already drilled into the body of Light Beast. Therefore, Light Ray couldn't illuminate it no matter how vast the rays were. It wasn't in the arena at all. Furthermore, Origin Realm King used this ability to destroy Light Beast's body or brain. Then, it used an ingenious opportunity to come out of its nostrils and strike Light Beast. It looked like it was extremely powerful and instantly killed Light Beast. In fact, it had already wreaked havoc in Light Beast's body. The Light Beast was almost dead. Not only did it kill Light Beast, 
but it also made everyone believe that Origin Realm King's destructive power was extremely powerful. It concealed its greatest weakness, preventing others from easily challenging it. What a good plan. The more Zhou Wen thought about it, the more he felt that it was right. He brightened up. Although he had guessed the various possibilities of Origin Realm King, defeating it wasn't an easy task. Even Truth Listener's ability and the Holy Hell King's I couldn't discover its existence. Its body was definitely much smaller than Primordial Spore. It had probably reached the level of an atom. Primordial Spore can parasitize large creatures, but it's not that effective against those that are smaller than it. Torch Dragon's Bright Torch Vision World should be able to kill it, but if it enters Torch Dragon's body before Torch Dragon activates Bright Torch Vision World, then Bright Torch Vision World will be useless. After some thought, Zhou Wen realized that the Origin Realm King wasn't easy to deal with. It was very easy to fight Origin Realm King to a draw. With the strength it displayed during its battle with Primordial Sword Immortal, Zhou Wen only needed to use Tyrant Behemoth to challenge it. No matter how it attempted to drill into Tyrant Behemoth, it couldn't cause any injuries. However, it wouldn't be easy for Tyrant Behemoth to find and kill it. I wonder what kind of companion beast Origin Realm King is. If it's a fungal or bacterial type, perhaps I can send Tai Sui to deal with it, Zhou Wen thought to himself, but he didn't immediately attempt it. After all, everything was just Zhou Wen's speculation. Tai Sui was only at the epic stage. If his speculation was wrong, or if the Origin Realm King was just small in size, and wasn't a companion beast like a fungus, Tai Sui wouldn't be able to restrain it. Wouldn't that lead to a tragic death? There were still more than two days left. There would definitely be companion beasts challenging Origin Realm King. So Zhou Wen planned on taking a wait and see approach before deciding if he should send Tai Sui. Even if he were to send Tai Sui, he would have to wait until the time was almost up. Otherwise, with Tai Sui being so weak, it would be easily defeated by other mythical companion beasts even after he defeated Origin Realm King. While waiting for Origin Realm King to be challenged, Zhou Wen didn't idle. He continued grinding in game. Ever since he knew that killing guardians could advance slaughterer, Zhou Wen had been targeting them. Unfortunately, the one in Ant City was just too powerful. After some thought, Zhou Wen decided to target the nine black dragons in the underground sea. I have quite a number of mythical companion beasts now. I have the ferocious pair, behemoth and truth listener, and torch dragon's bright torch vision world. Together with the great might Vidra bull, golden overlord sword, and demonic neonate, who specializes in sneaking attacks on others, I can try to see if I can deal with the nine black dragons, Zhou Wen thought to himself. After arriving at the underground sea, Zhou Wen first summoned his mythical companion beasts. Together with Demonic Neonate, the lineup was rather powerful. Six-Winged Guardian Dragon was still the same as before. It appeared behind the blood-colored avatar in its six-winged form to prevent it from being instantly killed. I still have to find time to draw more substitute talismans in the future. With Zhou Wen's order, Truth Listener and Behemoth charged into the underground sea. The Great Might Vidra Bull was actually afraid of water. It could only provide support on land and didn't enter the sea. However, this wasn't a big deal. All he needed to do was lure the nine black dragons to a spot near the coast and let the Great Might Vidra Bull's soul suppression bell work. Before long, the nine black dragons appeared with the war wagon. After they saw Behemoth and Truth Listener, the chains on their bodies automatically released. The nine black dragons immediately perked up as they transformed into ferocious dragons that charged at Behemoth and Truth Listener with a roar. Zhou Wen made the two of them fly back and return to the shore. The two giant beasts stood in the shallow water, where the seawater only reached their calves. When the nine black dragons charged over, Zhou Wen immediately realized that something was amiss. The strength and speed of the black dragons were even stronger than Truth Listener when it had shattered an earring. Zhou Wen originally imagined that Truth Listener and Behemoth could each fight three or four black dragons alone, but now, he realized that without using absolute strength and shattering the other earrings, fighting two alone was somewhat difficult. Roar! Behemoth roared and used absolute strength to suppress the nine black dragons. The nine black dragons were beginning to be affected by the suction of absolute strength, but soon, they forcefully escaped its restraints. Boom! Behemoth, who had used absolute strength, threw a punch and collided with a black dragon horn. To Zhou Wen's surprise, Behemoth, who had absolute strength, was forced to take a few steps back by the collision with the black dragon. It plopped into the seawater, stirring up huge waves. Truth Listener was in a worse state. It clashed with a black dragon and was sent flying into the sea. Something's amiss. How can the nine black dragons be so powerful? Zhou Wen was alarmed as he carefully looked at the nine black dragons, but he didn't see anything. Zhou Wen's heart stirred as he switched to the Holy Hell King Life Soul. With the Holy Hell's eyes, he was immediately alarmed. There were chains that couldn't be seen with the naked eye connecting the nine black dragons to the war wagon. 
Chapter 704 Battling the Nine Dragons The chains weren't corporeal, but they were like soul chains. The nine black dragons were connected by them, and at the same time, the chains combined their powers. The power unleashed by a black dragon was equivalent to the power of nine black dragons unleashing their might at the same time. It's no wonder Tyrant Behemoth, who has used absolute strength, can't suppress the black dragon. This is fighting nine alone, Jowen thought. Tyrant Behemoth stood up again and roared as it charged at the nine black dragons. Its strength was unparalleled, but it was still difficult to deal with them, when it was actually equivalent to single-handedly fighting nine. The black dragon was a mythical creature with immense strength, and with the nine of them combined as one, the explosive power they released suppressed Tyrant Behemoth. Every clash of strength forced Tyrant Behemoth to retreat. Thankfully, Tyrant Behemoth was indeed extremely powerful when using absolute strength. It wasn't severely injured even under the combined forces of the nine black dragons. Truth Listener rushed out and attacked the black dragon from another direction. The nine black dragons' movements were not affected at all despite being connected by invisible chains. Furthermore, the power circulated among them extremely quickly. As one side sent Tyrant Behemoth retreating, the other side fought Truth Listener, who had gathered its strength again. The terrifying dragon claws broke through normal speed limits and blasted Truth Listener away. Jowen had already controlled the blood-colored avatar to slash at the black dragon. The great might bedraw bull also released the soul suppression bell at the same time. When the bell rang, the invisible chain trembled. The soul suppression bell didn't work, nor did it make the black dragons faint. Truth listener looked like it was about to go berserk and shatter another earring. Jowen hurriedly summoned it, and Behemoth back before turning around to escape to the back cave. Demonic Neonate hadn't attacked all this time, so it looked like she hadn't found a chance. The nine black dragons didn't dare come ashore. They roared in the water, causing huge waves to surge into the sky. The commotion was extremely terrifying. The nine black dragons are so terrifying. I wonder how powerful the guardian in the war wagon is. I'm afraid it's another Buddha annihilation. Jowen looked at the nine black dragons that surged with ferocious flames as he secretly calculated his chances of killing the guardian in the war wagon. I finally understand why the lost immortal sutra can imitate so many essence energy arts and obtain many benefits so easily. Even with such an abnormal ability, killing a guardian is still as difficult as ascending to the heavens. Jowen had already realized that the lost immortal sutra was indeed an unparalleled essence energy art. Ignoring the question of whether the lost immortal sutra could advance to the mythical stage, just killing the guardian to advance to the life soul realm was probably unprecedented. Unless I think of a way to sever the connection between the nine black dragons, preventing them from gathering the power of nine dragons to attack together, killing them is just a pipe dream. Jowen began to miss the six-winged seraphim. Among the guardians that Jowen had seen, he was the easiest to kill. Unable to kill the nine black dragons, Jowen had no choice but to vent his frustration on the other dimensional creatures. He killed all the rare dimensional creatures in the dungeons, and also killed some musical note sprites. Now, Jowen's musical note sprites numbered nearly 10,000. Under the control of the golden harp, they could be of some use. However, they were still a distance away from the million-strong army that Jowen had expected. I heard that there's an undead scourge in the West District, which sent millions of undead rampaging across the land. In the future, I'll control the million strong musical note army and create a musical scourge. It will be much cooler than the undead scourge. At the very least, they look better than them, Jowen thought. Despite leaving a wake of destruction, his luck today seemed to be especially bad. He didn't have any rare companion beasts drop. It was time for Medusa to respawn. Jowen planned on farming Medusa once. When he arrived at the Cursed Demon Palace, he suddenly thought of something. Every time he came to the Cursed Demon Palace, the beautiful girl would become the demoness Medusa. Therefore, Jowen killed Medusa in her demoness form every time. What will happen if I kill the beautiful girl before she becomes Medusa? Jowen couldn't hold back his emotions when he had this thought. How can I kill her before she transforms? Jowen didn't open the door to Medusa's palace. In the past, Jowen had attacked her when she was a beautiful girl, but once he attacked her, she would immediately become Medusa. Killing her before she became Medusa was clearly not an easy task. In terms of speed, my transcendent flying immortal is fast enough, but I can't kill the beautiful girl before she becomes Medusa. In that case, I can only rely on her. Joe Wynn's heart stirred as he looked at Demonic Neonate, who was standing there with a cold expression like a doll. As long as Joe Wynn didn't take the initiative to attack, the beautiful girl wouldn't become Medusa even if he entered the palace. After Joe Wynn finished his plans, he carried Demonic Neonate into the palace. Indeed, he saw Medusa sitting there quietly. The current Medusa was still a beautiful and pure girl. Just one look at her made him pity her. If it wasn't in game, but in the real world, Joe Wynn really couldn't bear to attack her. However, 
This was the game world. No matter how beautiful she was, she was still an NPC. He didn't have any qualms. Zhou Wen walked towards the beautiful girl step by step without gathering any essence energy or using his companion beasts. However, demonic neonate was slumped on his back. Her black eyes were secretly looking at the beautiful Medusa. When he arrived in front of the beautiful girl, Zhou Wen didn't continue walking forward. If he continued walking forward, even if Zhou Wen didn't attack her, the beautiful girl would become Medusa. At that moment, demonic neonate, who was on Zhou Wen's back, suddenly moved. A black purple sword being drilled out from beneath the blood-colored avatar's crotch. Without giving the beautiful girl a chance to react, the demonic sword had already stabbed her in the chest, causing her blood to splatter everywhere. Demonic aura invaded her body, causing her to fall to the ground. It's done! Zhou Wen was delighted as he looked at the beautiful girl's corpse, only to see it disintegrating and disappearing. Ding! Soon, something dropped. Zhou Wen took a closer look and was immediately overjoyed. The thing the beautiful girl dropped was a companion egg that was crystalline like a sapphire. A companion beast dropped. Zhou Wen found it unbelievable. It hadn't been a day or two since he started farming Medusa. Dimensional crystals had dropped, but there had never been a companion egg drop. Could it be that only Medusa in her beautiful form can drop a companion egg? Zhou Wen guessed as he picked it up. Chapter 705 Medusa Companion Beast Medusa, Mythical Life Providence, Tragic Beauty Life Soul, Eyes of Enticement Wheel of Destiny, Demon God Transformation Strength, 41 Speed, 41 Constitution, 41 Essence Energy, 41 Talent Skill, None Companion Form, None Zhou Wen was immediately alarmed when he saw Medusa's stats. The weakest mythical that Zhou Wen had seen was Primordial Spore. However, Primordial Spore still had the eternal immortality life providence that made it invincible. It also had a parasitic skill that was very useful. Medusa was ridiculously weak in contrast. She didn't have any skills. Her life providence was tragic beauty, a negative skill that actually reduced her stats. The only useful ones were probably the eyes of enticement and the demon god transformation. The eyes of enticement were very similar to the eyes of petrification. They could petrify people, but the limitations of the eyes of enticement were much greater than the eyes of petrification. The demon god transformation was even more ridiculous. It was actually a single time use wheel of destiny. The annotation was very clear. Once used, it would forever transform into a demon god, making it impossible for her to be restored to her human body. From the looks of it, after using the demon god transformation, Medusa should become a snake-haired demoness. Although becoming a snake-haired demoness will definitely be much stronger than she is now, she's just too ugly in that form. She still looks good now. However, good looks can't be eaten or used to block bullets. What's the point? Although he had such thoughts, Zhou Wen still couldn't bring himself to do it when he thought about how such a beautiful Medusa would become an ugly snake-haired demoness. Forget it. I'll keep her for now. Who knows what special effect she might have. Zhou Wen planned on farming Medusa tomorrow, to see if Medusa in her girl form would continue dropping companion eggs. If a companion egg dropped, he would try to see what would happen after the demon god transformation. Before Medusa respawned again, a companion beast challenged Origin Realm King on the rankings. This time, it was none other than Death of the Underworld. Li Xian invited Zhou Wen to watch the duel at the cube. When they arrived, the Origin Realm King still hadn't accepted the challenge. Old Zhou, who do you think will win this battle? Li Xian asked. It's hard to tell. Zhou Wen said with a shake of his head. The battle between Origin Realm King and Death of the Underworld was worth watching. Zhou Wen couldn't predict the final outcome. Death of the Underworld had a spirit body, rendering physical damage virtually ineffective. It was useless even if Origin Realm King entered its body. However, it was also unknown if Death of the Underworld's attacks were effective against Origin Realm King. Therefore, Zhou Wen was very curious about the outcome of the battle. Soon, only 10 minutes were left for the countdown. Just like the last time, the name on the ranking flashed at the end. Origin Realm King had accepted the challenge. Everyone, including Zhou Wen, widened their eyes. They wanted to know how Death of the Underworld would deal with Origin Realm King. With the experience gleaned from Light Beast's lesson, Death of the Underworld would definitely do something. It might even use its Wheel of Destiny to transport the Origin Realm King into the Underworld for the final battle, just like with Primordial Sword Immortal. However, to everyone's surprise, after Origin Realm King accepted the challenge, Death of the Underworld did nothing but float in the air. What's going on? Why isn't Death of the Underworld moving? Does he want to be passive and end up getting beaten? Shouldn't he strike first to force out the invisible Origin Realm King? What is he trying to do? People discussed as they guessed what Death of the Underworld was planning. Zhou Wen's heart skipped a beat, 
when he saw the motionless death of the underworld. It was as though it had fallen asleep while floating there. It was not good. That's bad. Someone has guessed that Origin Realm King is a microscopic companion beast just like me. They know that its strength is insufficient to kill a top mythical companion beast, so they want to use the characteristics of Origin Realm King to stall for time. They want to wait until the countdown ends before defeating Origin Realm King. Shouwen already understood death of the underworld strategy. In fact, Shouwen had thought of a similar method. For example, if Tyrant Behemoth challenged Origin Realm King, Origin Realm King wouldn't be able to kill Tyrant Behemoth, so he could continue delaying until the time was up. However, as Tyrant Behemoth might not be able to kill Origin Realm King, Zhou gave up on this plan. Now that Death of the Underworld had used this plan, it meant that its master was confident that he could defeat Origin Realm King at the final moment. Zhou originally imagined that Origin Realm King would definitely take this opportunity to kill Death of the Underworld. However, to his surprise, Origin Realm King didn't take any action. Zhou thought for a moment, and immediately understood that Origin Realm King's master was indeed smart. It was the best choice for him not to let Origin Realm King move. If Origin Realm King was really as Zhou Wen and company had guessed, a microscopic companion beast that wasn't very strong, then if it were to attack now, not only would it fail to kill Death of the Underworld, but it would also expose its true strength, allowing the master of Death of the Underworld to understand its weakness. However, Origin Realm King remained motionless, giving Death of the Underworld immense pressure. If it didn't move, Death of the Underworld's master wouldn't be able to confirm if his judgment was correct. This would raise doubts. Could it be that Origin Realm King also wants to stall for time? Could it be that it's different from my conclusion? Could it be confident that it can defeat Death of the Underworld at the end of the countdown? All sorts of guesses appeared in people's minds. It was originally Death of the Underworld who was stalling for time, but it devolved into both sides stalling for time. No one could be sure whether Origin Realm King had the ability to defeat Death of the Underworld. If this continued, there would be no time or chance in the event Death of the Underworld was defeated. If Death of the Underworld were to attack now, the previous plan would fail. It would also expose Death of the Underworld's strength. It was equivalent to shooting oneself in the foot. Although the two companion beasts in the arena didn't move, the battle had already begun. Such a battle was no longer limited to the confines of the arena. Instead, the owners of the two companion beasts were having a psychological game. Ordinary people couldn't figure out the mystery behind it. After waiting all day, people who were originally looking forward to a huge battle ended up surprised to watch a battle in which one of the companion beasts couldn't be seen while the other companion beast remained motionless. It left them depressed. What the hell? Wasn't this supposed to be a challenge? Why aren't they fighting? Hurry up and fight. Let us see which is the best, Origin Realm King or Death of the Underworld. Can't you tell? Death of the Underworld doesn't even dare to move. It must be afraid of Origin Realm King. When Origin Realm King makes a move, Death of the Underworld will die like light beast. Boolsh asterisk T. It's obvious that Origin Realm King is afraid of Death of the Underworld. Don't you see that it doesn't dare to attack? Death of the Underworld is almost falling asleep waiting for it to attack. The arena remained still. The fans of the two companion beasts and the streamers who supported them were the first to engage in a war of words. Chapter 706 Quick Battle The silent battle continued, greatly displeasing many onlookers. By standing there for a few hours without moving, how was this a duel? It was a punishment questions that this was a rigged match began to spread. Some people were already suspecting that Origin Realm King and Death of the Underworld came from the same faction. They were stalling for time to directly obtain first place. In fact, even many of the six families had such doubts. Zhou Wen also felt that something was amiss. Although Death of the Underworld might not be from the same faction as Origin Realm King, if they were to continue wasting time like this, either one of them would definitely end up coming first. All the factions that still had hope for coming in first were paying attention to the battle situation. At the same time, they were secretly gathering information. Although they didn't know who Origin Realm King belonged to, Death of the Underworld was undoubtedly from the family clan of gods. Therefore, all sorts of probing and pressure targeted towards the family clan of gods continued. Old Bowl, if you can't beat it, hurry up and admit defeat. Don't end up letting that Origin Realm King reap all the benefits later. Regal Cape said with a smile, while on a video call with the family clan of gods. Bowl said indifferently, There's no need for you to worry. Rigo continued, Oh Bowl, if you have a 100% chance of defeating Origin Realm King, it doesn't matter if you wait until the end. But if you don't have a 100% chance, why don't you leave a chance? Bowl naturally understood what Rigo was getting at. He was also very conflicted. He had originally planned on dragging it out to the end, before letting Death of the Underworld defeat Origin Realm King. Just as Shouwen had guessed, 
he believed that Origin Realm King was a microscopic companion beast. As long as death of the underworld opened the path to the underworld and pulled the microscopic companion beast in, it would no longer be able to hide. When that happened, killing it wouldn't be difficult. But now, Origin Realm King was also stalling for time. This worried Bull a little. Many people already knew about the abilities of death of the underworld. The owner of Origin Realm King definitely knew some, but he still chose to remain still. This made Bull suspect that the Origin Realm King might have the ability to defeat death of the underworld, but it could also be a psychological battle. After hanging up the call, Bull was thinking about what to do next. However, Fia said, Father, if we don't have full confidence in winning, why don't we do as Rigo said and leave a way out? We can still grasp the opportunity in our hands. Tell me about it, Bull said to Fia. Fia said, Since we can't be sure if Death of the Underworld can defeat Origin Realm King, why don't we complete the battle before the final time limit? It's naturally best if we can win. If we can't, we'll find a chance to forfeit. When the time comes, our companion beast has the initiative to pose the challenge. It's equivalent to having another chance. I'm just afraid that this opportunity will be snatched away by others. Bull muttered. There can only be one challenger. It depends on who poses the challenge first. We are the ones deciding when death of the underworld admits defeat, so we can also apply for the challenge at the same time. How can others be faster than us? Said Fia. That's right. Then let's do it this way. Prepare your companion beast. If death of the underworld fails, you will be the one to complete the final battle, said Bull after some thought. As there was no battle in the arena, many spectators lost their patience after waiting for several hours. Many people chose to return to work or to do other things. They planned on watching the results nearer to the end of the countdown. Joe and watched as time ticked by. Neither side had any intention of taking action. It was apparent that both sides wanted to drag it out until the countdown ended. They knew that there was no hope of vying for first place. However, Zhou Wen still held onto a sliver of hope as he rushed to the town in Funyo Mountain. He wanted to wait there for the countdown to end. If there was a chance, he could try again. In fact, there were many people with the same thoughts as Zhou Wen. Many people from large families were standing guard in front of the cube. Once the battle ended or one side gave up, they would immediately initiate a challenge. Regardless of whether they could win, it was better to try than have no chance at all. Time slowly passed. When there were only two hours left before the countdown, more and more people returned to the cube. Most of them returned just to see the results. However, Death of the Underworld and Origin Realm King remained still. One couldn't be seen, while the other was motionless. An hour and a half, an hour and fifteen minutes, an hour and ten minutes. Suddenly, Death of the Underworld, who had been silent all this while, finally moved. Its cloak spread out, and the strange underworld domain was about to devour the entire arena. This was identical to when it fought Primordial Sword Immortal. However, Origin Realm King wasn't Primordial Sword Immortal. If it were to be trapped, there would be a question if it could storm its way out. Everyone's spirits were lifted. Death of the Underworld's sudden attack meant that the two companion beasts weren't from the same faction. They still needed to determine a victor. Although there was less than an hour and ten minutes left, having some time left meant that there was a chance. The only thing they were afraid of was that there was too little time left. If one side lost and there was less than an hour left, then even if they chose to challenge the victor, the other side would still have an hour to prepare for battle. Before the challenge was accepted, the countdown would be over. Please decide the victor before the hour mark. Many people were praying. However, no one expected the outcome to be far faster than they had imagined. At the instant death of the underworld activated its underworld domain, a strange scene suddenly happened. Inside the death of the underworld's grayish smoke-like spirit body, a flower suddenly grew out of its head. The flower was beautiful like snow, and there was lightning circulating over it. It was like an electric flower. The flower rapidly grew. In an instant, the flower bud bloomed. As the flower bloomed, death of the underworld spirit body seemed to be pulled by some force as it rapidly flowed into the flower, as though it had been devoured by the flower. Before the underworld domain could fully activate, half of death of the underworld's body had been sucked into the flower. Not good. Bull was shocked. He quickly wanted to give up and admit defeat, but it was too late. The remaining half of death of the underworld's body was completely absorbed by the flower in the blink of an eye. As for the flower, it bloomed and shimmered with a strange electric light. Then, it quickly withered and vanished as though nothing had happened. Everyone was stunned. No one dared to believe that the nearly invincible death of the underworld had died just like that. Old Bowl's face was ashen, and even Fia, who was about to issue the challenge, was stunned. It was just too shocking that death of the underworld was instantly killed. It made him hesitate, afraid that his companion beast would suffer the same outcome if he entered. It wasn't just Fia. 
Everyone who was prepared to issue the challenge hesitated. Death of the Underworld's death shocked them greatly. Origin Realm King is too powerful. The spectators also had such thoughts. Chapter 707 The Dust Settles Just as everyone was in a daze, a companion beast almost immediately issued a challenge. The cube screen lit up again as a name and a companion beast appeared on the screen. Tai Sway! Everyone was slightly taken aback when they saw the companion beast and name. The people from the East District knew what Tai Sway was, but the people from the other districts weren't aware. However, when they saw a white and tender ball appear on screen, it didn't look like a particularly powerful companion beast. No way! Is that thing a slime? Can such a companion beast challenge an invincible companion beast like Origin Realm King? Someone from the West District commented. Is that a legendary blob monster? The people from the North District were puzzled. How can such a companion beast challenge Origin Realm King? Isn't that guaranteeing Origin Realm King's first place? Don't tell me they're in cahoots? Many people guessed. Although the people of the East District knew about Tai Sui, they didn't know much about its abilities. They only knew that Tai Sui brought bad luck. As the saying went, Messing with Tai Sui incurs disaster. It was a very popular saying in the East District. Even if it could bring bad luck, it was impossible for it to defeat a powerful existence like Origin Realm King with bad luck in a duel, right? That was a terrifying existence that could kill Death of the Underworld. However, Zhou Wen didn't think so. Origin Realm King killed Death of the Underworld. Zhou Wen didn't dare release Tai Sui to challenge him. However, after seeing how the Origin Realm King killed Death of the Underworld, Zhou Wen was finally certain that Tai Sui would be able to restrain it. In essence, Origin Realm King was still a type of microorganism not some special physical entity. As for Tai Sui, it was extremely effective against all kinds of microbes. It could devour the mythical primordial spore back at the mortal stage. What's more, it was now at the epic stage. It had a high chance of defeating Origin Realm King. Time ticked by. Origin Realm King hadn't accepted the challenge. In the blink of an eye, less than an hour was left. What? Origin Realm King is just stalling for time. It looks like there's zero suspense left. First place will undoubtedly go to Origin Realm King. Origin Realm King is really too powerful. An existence like Death of the Underworld was actually killed by it. It didn't even have the chance to forfeit. Did you see what happened? What's up with that flower? The moment it appeared, it sucked in Death of the Underworld. I wonder what kind of ability it is. I should have known. Even Primordial Sword Immortal isn't a match for Origin Realm King, much less Death of the Underworld. Almost everyone believed that there was no longer any suspense in this battle. Without a doubt, Original Realm King was first, and the remaining time would be wasted. After Tai Sui was defeated, there wouldn't be enough time left to challenge it. Even if one had a companion beast that could fight Origin Realm King, they wouldn't be given the chance. However, some people didn't think so. Lung Zongjing had seen Zhou wins Tai Sui before, and knew that Tai Sui was very effective against microorganisms. Furthermore, he had clearly determined that Origin Realm King was a microorganism. From the looks of it, he got lucky. Your family's Zhou Wen sure is lucky, Lung Zongjin said to Ntianzua as he watched the live stream. And Tianzua replied expressionlessly, Humans can't just rely on luck. If we only rely on luck, we will suffer a huge loss sooner or later, Lung Zongjin said with a smile. Actually, luck is similar to money. Money isn't omnipotent, but it's impossible without money. There was less than half an hour left. Origin Realm King still hadn't accepted the challenge. Everyone believed that Origin Realm King would accept the challenge at the last moment. Then, with less than 10 minutes left before the countdown ended, its first place would then be secured. Origin Realm King still didn't accept the challenge in the final moments. Despite having less than 10 seconds on the clock, it still didn't make a move. It made people feel that something was amiss. What's going on? Why hasn't it accepted the challenge? There's no need to keep our hearts racing, right? Does it want to accept the challenge at the last second? Could it be afraid of Tai Sui? What a joke. How is that possible? That's Origin Realm King. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Everyone counted silently with a countdown in their hearts, but even at the last second, Origin Realm King didn't accept the challenge. Upon seeing the first ranked Origin Realm King's name being squeezed out and replaced by Tai Sui's name, the entire Federation and those overseas were in an uproar. Origin Realm King doesn't dare accept the challenge? Is Tai Sui that strong? Tai Sui. What kind of companion beast is this? I knew that Tai Sui was extraordinary, but I didn't say anything. Facing Primordial Sword Immortal and Death of the Underworld, Origin Realm King can definitely suppress them, but it didn't dare accept Tai Sui's challenge. It doesn't even have the courage to fight. That Tai Sui is too terrifying. I really want to know what kind of abilities it has. 
What bullsh asterisk t is this tie sway? I think it's all a scam. They're in cahoots. I don't think so. Origin Realm King was already first. If they're in cahoots, there'd be no need to admit defeat and let Tai Sui take first place. As everyone was discussing, they saw another companion beast issue a challenge. However, Tai Sui ignored it. It didn't accept the challenge even when the 72-hour countdown on the cube ended. The scene on the cube turned into a ranking. Tai Sui was first, and the defeated Origin Realm King was second. Third was Primordial Sword Immortal, and fourth was Zhou Wen's Tyrant Behemoth. This continued until the hundredth spot. The names of the companion beasts emitted a resplendent glow. It made the entire world know that they were the strongest hundred companion beasts among humans. However, most people did not realize that Tai Sui, who was ranked first, had yet to advance to the mythical stage. Mommy, Tai Sui is so cute. I want a Tai Sui doll. Can our family's factory produce one? A little boy hugging a tyrant behemoth doll looked at his mother with anticipation. This? His mother was somewhat hesitant. Although Tai Sui looked adorable, it seemed a little ominous. Mommy, our tyrant behemoth doll has been very popular. I believe Tai Sui will also sell very well. Pretty please? The boy pulled his mother's hand and wheedled. All right, let's give it a try. His mother stroked the boy's head dotingly. Chapter 708 Reward The hundred names on the cube lit up. Joe Wen suddenly felt a huge amount of energy appear out of nowhere in the bodies of his three companion beasts on the rankings, Tai Sui, Tyrant Behemoth, and Six-Winged Guardian Dragon. The least energy appeared in Six-Winged Guardian Dragon's body. It didn't result in much of a change. The energy in Tyrant Behemoth's body was extremely huge, causing Tyrant Behemoth's body to constantly stir. The most powerful energy was inside Tai Sui's body. The immense power turned Tai Sui into an egg, and it began to evolve. So there are benefits for all the companion beasts on the rankings. They can obtain a strange energy. However, the higher the ranking, the stronger the energy obtained. As Zhou Wen thought about it, he looked at Six Winged Guardian Dragon's situation. As it had obtained very little energy, it had completely absorbed it. Zhou Wen took out his phone and checked Six Winged Guardian Dragon stats. To his surprise, Six Winged Guardian Dragon's strength stat had reached 81 points. After being strengthened by the cube the last time, all of Six Winged Guardian Dragon's stats had reached 80 points, but that was all. They were still within the limits of mythical creatures. This time, the energy obtained by Six Winged Guardian Dragon allowed its strength to break through to 81 points. Although it was only one point, it was very significant. This was because only a top mythical creature had stats with 81 points. As Six Winged Guardian Dragon had never accepted challenges, its ranking kept dropping when it was challenged by other companion beasts. It had ended up in the 70s. For such a ranking to increase its stat by one point was amazing enough. Zhou Wen couldn't wait to see Tyrant Behemoth. He wanted to know what kind of strengthening it had obtained. It was ranked fourth, so the energy it obtained would be immense. It was incomparable to the energy that Six-Winged Guardian Dragon had received. When Zhou Wen looked at Behemoth, he realized that the power in its body was constantly erupting. Its stats hadn't changed for the time being. After more than an hour, the energy in Behemoth gradually stopped erupting. Zhou Wen hurriedly looked at its stats. Behemoth's stats were top-notch to begin with. Now, it remained unchanged at 81 points. Joe Wen carefully looked at Tyrant Behemoth's Life Providence, Life Soul, and Wheel of Destiny. There were no changes either. When Joe Wen saw Behemoth's talent skills, he was immediately overjoyed. Originally, Tyrant only had one talent skill, Mountain Consuming. But now, Tyrant Behemoth had an additional skill. The skill's name was Rampage. After reading the introduction of the Rampage skill, Joe Wen was even more excited. This skill could enhance its speed and strength for a short period of time. It was very useful for Tyrant Behemoth, allowing its strength to improve further. If I had known that there would be so many benefits, I would have gotten all my companion beasts to get a ranking. Even if I can't obtain any talent skills, it's good to increase their stats. Of course, Joe Wen was only musing. It wasn't worth it to expose his companion beasts' abilities to exchange for stats. The skills obtained by Tyrant Behemoth were just icing on the cake. It didn't have an absolute effect on Tyrant Behemoth's strength. The one with the greatest influence was Tai Sui, who was evolving. The immense energy allowed Tai Sui to directly evolve. By the time it completed its evolution, it would be at the mythical stage. In addition, Tai Sui had obtained first place. He likely had a chance of plucking the divine fruit, but Zhou Wen didn't discover the passageway that led to the divine tree. Just as he was feeling suspicious, he saw a pillar of light rise from the center of the cube, leading straight into the void. Zhou Wen was hesitating about walking towards the pillar of light, when he suddenly realized that a figure was slowly descending from it. It was none other than the mythical Wang Mingyuan. 
Wang Mingyuan slowly landed on the cube and said to Zhou Wen, I never expected the companion beast that obtained first place to be yours, little one. Zhou Wen looked at Wang Mingyuan and was momentarily at a loss for words. Wang Mingyuan was his teacher and had treated him pretty well. In this aspect, Zhou Wen should respect him. However, at the same time, Wang Mingyuan had caused great harm to the Federation. From this angle, Wang Mingyuan was already an enemy of humanity. Zhou Wen was a part of humanity, so he should treat Wang Mingyuan as an enemy. Therefore, Zhou Wen's emotions were extremely complicated. He looked at Wang Mingyuan and opened his mouth before calling out, Teacher! Wang Mingyuan could tell that Zhou Wen was struggling internally, but he thought nothing of it. He smiled slightly and said, I'm already very gratified that you can call me teacher again. Come, pluck the reward you deserve. With that said, Wang Mingyuan walked up the pillar of light. At the end of the pillar of light, a phenomenon of a divine garden appeared. The divine tree also appeared. Zhou Wen followed behind Wang Mingyuan and walked into the pillar of light. Immediately, he felt a gentle force envelop his body as he slowly rose up and headed for the divine garden at the end of the pillar. Soon, Zhou Wen followed Wang Mingyuan into the garden and immediately smelled a fruity fragrance. The air in the divine garden was clean and pure. Even with the holy hell king's eyes, he couldn't sense any impurities. There was no dust or bacteria. It was like the legendary paradise. Here, even if one wanted to get sick, it was probably very difficult. There was no way to get infected. Do you know the name of this tree? Wang Mingyuan walked to the divine tree and stared at it with a complicated expression. Is its name important? Zhou Wen asked. To ordinary people, its name isn't important, but to me, its name is very important. Wang Mingyuan said. What's its name? Zhou Wen asked curiously. Its name is Samsara. Wang Mingyuan said slowly. Samsara? Zhou Wen looked at the Samsara tree with mixed feelings as he thought to himself, if there's really Samsara in this world, will teacher make the same choice in this life if he were to live again? Little one, go pluck that divine fruit. This is the only ripened divine fruit in the past year. It can allow any companion beast to advance to the mythical stage. Even if it's just a mortal companion beast, as long as it consumes the divine fruit, it can still advance to the mythical stage. Wang Mingyuan said. Although he had guessed it, Zhou Wen still asked. What if a human eats it? I don't think you will like that outcome. Wang Mingyuan smiled and continued. Of course, you can also give it a try. There are some things that you have to experience before you know whether they're good for you. There's not much time left. Quickly pluck the divine fruit and don't let it fall to the ground. Otherwise, it will be useless. Zhou Wen walked to the samsara tree and reached out to grab the ripened fruit. With a gentle tug, he plucked off the fruit. Chapter 709 Dimensional Axis the fruit that emitted a divine glow felt similar to a peach when held in his hand. Teacher, have you realized your dream? Zhou Wen put away the fruit and asked Wang Mingyuan. If it's so easy to realize it, it wouldn't be called a dream. Wang Mingyuan pondered for a moment and pointed into the distance. Look over there. Zhou Wen looked in the direction Wang Mingyuan had pointed and saw a huge building in the void. It was extremely strange, like a pillar that emitted a divine glow. It was unimaginably huge. What's that? Zhou Wen asked the dimensional axis. Its existence connects Earth to dimensional zones, Wang Mingyuan said. Zhou Wen's eyes lit up. If we can sever the connection to the dimensional axis, will we be able to stop the invasion of dimensional creatures? In theory, it's indeed feasible. However, there's more than one dimensional axis. It connects different dimensional spaces. Every dimensional axis is the core of a dimensional space. Almost all the most terrifying dimensional creatures will gather here, making it very difficult to reach it. Besides, a dimensional axis can connect to dimensional zones. It's not that easy to destroy it, Wang Mingyuan said. Teacher, you have already thought of a solution, right? Zhou Wen asked. I've indeed thought of a way to sever the dimensional axis, but I don't plan on severing it, Wang Mingyuan said. Why? Zhou Wen was stunned. I thought of a solution, but it takes too long to implement it. I'm afraid Earth would already be occupied by dimensional creatures before I can ever sever a dimensional axis. Therefore, I don't plan on severing it. Wang Mingyuan said, as he narrowed his eyes at the dimensional axis. Why? Zhou Wen asked in puzzlement. No matter how difficult it was, there was still a chance as long as it was done. As for Wang Mingyuan, didn't he enter the dimensional zone to stop the dimensional invasion? Why was he giving up now? In ancient times, floods were a perennial threat. Humans wanted to control floods. In the beginning, they tried building tall levees to block the flood. Do you know the outcome? Wang Mingyuan asked. Zhou Wen had heard of this myth before. The people who tried to stop the floods naturally failed. The higher the levee was, the stronger the flood. 
Once it breached the levee, it would cause a destructive force that was ten times or a hundred times greater. Zhou Wen's eyes lit up as he looked at Wang Mingyuan and said, Teacher, do you mean to think of a way to guide dimensional creatures to other dimensional zones instead of rushing to Earth? Wang Mingyuan looked at the dimensional axis calmly and said indifferently, No, what I mean is that I want to control the flood. I want the flood to obey my orders. They will go wherever I tell them to go. They will do whatever I tell them to do. I will dominate everything. Dominate the dimensional zones. Zhou Wen's heart stirred. If it was really as Wang Mingyuan had said, he would one day be able to ascend to the top of the myriad races and become an existence that controlled the dimensional zones. How delightful would that be? However, this path was just too difficult. Even with Wang Mingyuan's shocking talent, it was difficult for him to reach that stage. Little Wen. Wang Mingyuan's gaze landed on Zhou Wen's face as he said with a strange tone. Don't take my path. There's only death at the end of this path. Zhou Wen was alarmed as he hurriedly asked. Is there a problem with spirit casting? He was somewhat worried. With Zhong Zia's personality, there was a high chance that he would take this path. If there was really a problem with the spirit casting art, Zhong Zia would be in danger. There's no problem with spirit casting, but this path isn't for humans. Wang Mingyuan sighed and waved his hand. A force swept towards Zhou Wen as he said, Don't come again next time. You shouldn't be in a place like this. Zhou Wen was about to say something when his body was sent into the void by an invisible force. The light in front of him changed, and by the time his body returned to normal, he had already fallen onto the town's cube. He stood up and looked up into the sky, but the pillar of light was gone. He found it indescribable. Wang Mingyuan's last sentence had hinted at something. If he wasn't Wang Mingyuan's student, he might not have plucked the divine fruit so easily. Unfortunately, Zhou Wen still didn't know what the person who obtained the divine fruit in his place would do, or what they needed to do. After Zhou Wen left, Wang Mingyuan sat on the tree's root and closed his eyes, as though he was deep in thought. In the void above the pure land, lightning and thunder suddenly flared. It was as though the end of the world had arrived. A terrifying divine voice sounded from the void. Wang Mingyuan, you actually dare to violate the agreement. You should know the consequences. Wang Mingyuan's eyes remained closed as he said indifferently. Since I've done it, I'll naturally bear all the consequences. Very good. Then prepare to suffer divine punishment. A terrifying lightning bolt descended along with the divine voice. Bolts of lightning descended from the void and stabbed into Wang Mingyuan's body like sharp swords. Thrust after thrust, they filled his entire body with lightning. However, Wang Mingyuan sat there without any change in expression. It was as though the lightning bolts that stabbed into his body didn't exist at all. However, blood red spots appeared on his white clothes like blooming peach blossoms. The divine punishment will continue until the next divine fruit ripens. I hope you will still be alive when that happens. The voice in the void faded, and the lightning in the sky vanished. The paradise returned to its original silence. Only the lightning on Wang Mingyuan's body sparked like countless lightning needles as they trembled. Zhou Wen returned to school and took out the divine fruit, but he was somewhat hesitant. There was only one divine fruit, and its use was to raise a companion beast to the mythical stage. He naturally didn't need to consider the companion beasts that had already advanced to the mythical stage. Among the companion beasts that had yet to advance to the mythical stage, Demonic Neonate had the greatest potential. However, Demonic Neonate had the ability to evolve. It was only a matter of time before she advanced to the mythical stage. And the greatest use of the divine fruit was to allow any companion egg to advance to the mythical stage. From this point of view, it was best to choose a low-level companion beast with immense potential to advance to the mythical stage. Joe would really had a few companion beasts with such potential. For example, Dr. Darkness, Golden Harp, Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General, and so on. All of them had immense potential. Of course, Joe Wen wouldn't dare raise the Fiend Armored Tiger Soul General again. He eliminated it. Joe Wen's idea was to choose between Dr. Darkness and Golden Harp. However, this was also risky. This was because he didn't know if the Wheel of Destiny they condensed after advancing to the mythical stage would be of any use. If it condensed a useless Wheel of Destiny, he might as well directly advance Demonic Neonate to the mythical stage. Her being at the mythical stage was definitely going to be extraordinary, allowing her to immediately possess powerful combat strength. Zhou Wen was somewhat hesitant as he was momentarily at a loss. Chapter 710 Darkness Right Hand 1. Explosive Fiend Man hasn't advanced to the epic stage yet. He would be a pretty good choice for advancing to the mythical stage. However, Explosive Fiend Man has the ability to evolve. He still has a chance of advancing to the mythical stage in the future. After some thought, Zhou Wen summoned Dr. Darkness. Dr. Darkness's abilities were rather outstanding. Furthermore, with his fight poison with poison ability, 
he could resolve many problems that ordinary powers couldn't resolve. More importantly, Dr. Darkness's companion form was a soul. It could directly raise Zhou Wen's strength. This was very useful to him. If Dr. Darkness could advance to the mythical stage, he would probably be more helpful. Without any hesitation, he handed the divine fruit to Dr. Darkness. Dr. Darkness took the divine fruit and his eyes flashed with excitement as he swallowed it. His body immediately emitted a divine glow. The glow grew stronger and stronger before finally turning Dr. Darkness into an egg. Unlike the evolution of typical companion beasts in which ordinary companion beasts took a long time to evolve, Dr. Darkness immediately completed the evolution after transforming into an egg and hatching. In a moment, he completed the evolution from the epic stage to the mythical stage. The Dr. Darkness in front of him didn't seem much different from before. He was still as dark and terrifying, like a puppet without a shred of humanity. Joe Wynn hurriedly took out his phone and read the information regarding Dr. Darkness post-evolution. Dr. Darkness, mythical. Life providence, golden left hand. Life soul, Dr. Soul. Wheel of destiny, darkness right hand. Strength, 79. Speed, 81. Constitution, 67. Essence energy, 81. Talent skill, scalpel, fight poison with poison, light of penetration. Companion form, soul. Indeed, Dr. Darkness had advanced to the mythical stage. His skills, life providence, and life soul hadn't changed. His stats had increased to the mythical stage, albeit a little extreme. Typically, a mythical companion beast's limit was 80 points. Dr. Darkness's speed and essence energy had broken through the limit to 81 points. However, his strength and constitution hadn't even reached 80. It was very strange. The Wheel of Destiny's name was Darkness Right Hand. It seemed to match his life providence, golden left hand, but the ability was unknown. Darkness right hand, a place where even divine light can't reach. That is the forbidden zone of the gods. From the introduction, it didn't seem to have anything to do with his right hand. Zhou Wen entered the game and planned on testing the power of darkness right hand. He brought Dr. Darkness to the Zhuolu battlefield and encountered a Qi Zhou when immediately ordered Dr. Darkness. Use darkness right hand! Dr. Darkness stood there and watched as the Qi ran over. He slowly raised his right hand. Dr. Darkness had the golden left hand life providence. Be it his strength or speed, his left hand was much stronger than his right hand. When Zhou Wen got Dr. Darkness to attach himself to him as a soul, he could clearly sense that the strength and speed of his left hand had been enhanced. During that period of time, Zhou Wen had deliberately practiced striking with his left hand because it was much faster than striking with his right hand. All along, Dr. Darkness's right hand had been weaker, but when Dr. Darkness raised his right hand, it seemed to have the power of a devil burning over it like black flames. The Qi had already rushed in front of Dr. Darkness, but Dr. Darkness remained motionless. Only when the Qi was about to collide with him did Dr. Darkness slightly tilt his body and dodge the Qi's charge, allowing it to brush past him. Zhou Wen kept staring at Dr. Darkness's hand, but he didn't see any movement from it. When he saw Dr. Darkness brush past the Qi, he was puzzled as to why he hadn't attacked. However, when Dr. Darkness turned around, Joe, Wynn's pupils constricted upon seeing his right hand. In Dr. Darkness's right hand was a bloody heart that was still beating. The Chi ran a few steps before letting out a tragic cry. It suddenly fell to the ground and convulsed. Soon it died. Joe Wynn looked at the Chi's corpse and didn't see any injuries. He had no idea how Dr. Darkness had plucked its heart out. Even I couldn't see how Dr. Darkness did it. Furthermore, its strength is too strange. It can actually pluck out a heart without dealing any injuries. No. I have to watch it again. Joe and continued proceeding forward with Dr. Darkness. Before long, he encountered a Wang Yang. This time, Joe Wen didn't only maximize the truth listener earring's abilities, but he also switched to the holy hell king life soul, raising his senses to their limits. Joe Wen got Dr. Darkness to rush over and quickly he brushed past the Wang Yang. At that instant, Joe Wen felt his devil like right hand move. As it was too fast, Joe Wen only felt it move a little. He didn't see it clearly. However, Zhou Wen was certain that the right hand had definitely moved. This was because there was something white on the right hand. It was like a pig's brain, and the blood vessels on it were still squirming. How terrifying! Zhou Wen was pleasantly surprised. The power of darkness right hand could actually remove organs in an invisible manner. It was so fast that even Zhou Wen couldn't see it clearly. Such an ability made his scalp tingle. In the future, if Zhou Wen didn't like anyone, he could get Dr. Darkness to pluck at their waist. If anyone pissed him off, he could pluck out their hearts, livers, and brains. It would scare him to death. However, Zhou Wen wasn't sure if Darkness Right Hand's ability was merely fast, or if it had any special effects. The Qi and Wang Yang weren't injured, yet, their heart and brain had been removed. 
Perhaps Dr. Darkness's darkness right hand wasn't as simple as being fast. Zhou Wen wanted to experiment further, so he went to the metalwork temple to find a runic heavy armored warrior with extremely powerful defense. The outcome was the same. After Dr. Darkness used Darkness right hand, he easily plucked out the heart. The runic heavy armor was useless. Even the runic patterns on it didn't light up. Amazing. The Darkness right hand actually has the ability to penetrate through space. It can ignore defense and directly pluck out organs. Zhou Wen was even more excited. With Dr. Darkness's ability, Zhou Wen could ignore dimensional creatures with powerful defense. More importantly, Dr. Darkness's companion form was a soul. He could attach himself to Zhou Wen and allow him to use his abilities. In other words, Zhou Wen could also use Darkness right hand. This was equivalent to strengthening Zhou Wen's strength and abilities. Zhou Wen still wanted to give it another try, but he was depressed. He couldn't use Darkness right hand again. After some research, he learned that Darkness right hand could only be used three times in 24 hours. Three times is enough. I'll pluck the kidney before plucking the heart. If that still doesn't work, I'll pluck the brain. I don't believe anyone can survive, Zhou Wen thought. Chapter 711 Snatching Blood, Condensing Soul He attempted to get Dr. Darkness to attach himself to the blood-colored avatar as a soul. Zhou Wen immediately felt his physical attributes increase, especially his left hand. After advancing to the mythical stage, the golden left hand life providence augmented Zhou Wen's left hand even more. After using all of Dr. Darkness's skills, he realized that the effects of his skills had increased significantly. Fight poison with poison's poison became even more potent. A single milliliter of poison could instantly kill an epic creature, even when it was a venomous creature like the Chi. The destructive power of scalpel became stronger, and it was sharper. The enhancement of the eyes of penetration was the greatest. The ability to see through things had been enhanced. It wasn't as troublesome as before, yet, the effects had increased significantly. It was very easy to see through every minute detail inside a creature's body. As long as Zhou Wen used the eyes of penetration, he could see the creature's meridians and blood vessels clearly. However, he could only see through lifeforms. His ability to see through objects like metal was very poor. All that's left is to experiment with darkness right hand. If everything goes well, I might be able to enter Ant City and obtain the blood of that guardian. Zhou Wen was somewhat excited. Since darkness right hand could dig out hearts across space, it might be able to dig out a guardian's heart. When that happened, it wouldn't just be a drop of blood. After waiting for 24 hours, it was finally time for Darkness right hand to be used again. Zhou Wen got Dr. Darkness to possess the blood-colored avatar, and he carefully studied the abilities of Darkness right hand. After Zhou Wen experienced it personally, he concluded that Darkness right hand was indeed extremely powerful. It augmented his right hand speed greatly. At the same time, this augmentation wasn't on speed alone, it also had the ability to pass through matter. From his tests, there was nothing that could block or prevent Darkness right hand from entering. The ability of darkness right hand didn't only remove organs. As long as it was a region the right hand could enter, it could pluck anything. However, darkness right hand also had a flaw. Just like the poison dragon palm, it required the palm to touch the opponent's body to be of use. This skill couldn't be used as a long-range attack. I thought I could pluck hearts from afar using my right hand to reach into the guardian's body. I wonder if I can do it with the speed of darkness right hand. Zhou Wen wasn't confident. Although darkness right hand was very fast, the Guardian of Ant City was also extremely fast. Even if there's no way to pluck the Guardian's heart, the ability of Darkness right hand is very useful. If a dimensional creature like Primordial Spore invades the body and can't be resolved with fight poison with poison, I can rely on Darkness right hand to extract it from the body. Also, this ability is undoubtedly a divine skill for doctors. Surgery can be performed without cutting up bodies. Unfortunately, I'm not a doctor. Joe and gave his last usage of Darkness right hand to Medusa. After Medusa respawned, Zhou Wen entered Medusa's palace. This time, he didn't give demonic neonate to help. With the speed of darkness right hand, he managed to pluck out her heart before Medusa's demon god transformation. Unfortunately, Medusa didn't drop a companion egg this time. All she dropped was a speed crystal. With my hand's speed, I might really have a chance of obtaining the blood of a guardian. I don't need a heart. Just a drop of blood will be enough. Zhou Wen felt hope again. After waiting for another 24 hours so that Darkness right hand could be used again, Zhou Wen entered Ant City and arrived at the familiar ant nest. With the golden flying ant easily killed, Zhou Wen arrived in front of the guardian cocoon. However, this time, he had no intention of cracking open the cocoon. Instead, he got Dr. Darkness to possess him and directly use the eyes of penetration. With his penetrative vision, Zhou Wen immediately saw the situation inside the cocoon. The guardian was curled up in the cocoon. Her body was already rather mature and the thin wings on her back had completely taken form. 
her body emitted a strange glow. The guardian sensed that she was being looked at and moved. Zhou Wen didn't dare hesitate as he used darkness right hand. His right hand seemed to be enveloped by a devilish power as it instantly vanished. Zhou Wen felt that everything in front of his right hand seemed to turn to water. His right hand easily passed through the cocoon and reached for the guardian's heart. Darkness right hand was just too fast, but the guardian opened her eyes first and grabbed it. However, the guardian missed as darkness right hand passed through her palm. Changing his plans, Zhou Wen didn't aim for her heart. He directly took a drop of blood from her palm and quickly retracted. Without any hesitation, Zhou Wen retracted his darkness right hand and switched to Lost Country. He teleported to distance himself before rushing out of Ant City at full speed. Boom! Just as Zhou Wen rushed out of Ant City, the underground space in Ant City exploded, instantly turning into ruins. Not daring to turn his head, he controlled the blood-colored avatar to run as he circulated the first order of chaos, the drop of blood in hand. He hoped to see if he could absorb it. The drop of blood was immediately absorbed when the first order of chaos circulated. As the first order of chaos circulated, it gradually underwent a strange change. Can I finally condense a life soul? In that case, I might be able to rehatch the invisibility cloak's companion egg. After Zhou Wen absorbed the blood, he switched instance dungeons to prevent the guardian from chasing after him. The first order of chaos constantly circulated. With the drop of guardian's blood as its foundation, it fused with Zhou Wen's essence, vitality, and spirit, nurturing a strange power. Zhou Wen originally imagined that the first order of chaos would be similar to the life soul condensed by the Tao Sutra. After all, both of them used the blood of the same guardian. Furthermore, the type of essence energy art was very similar. However, when the first order of chaos truly condensed a life soul, Zhou Wen realized that his guess wasn't accurate. Although the two shared similarities, they were two different essence energy arts after all. Boom! Zhou Wen's essence, vitality, and spirit, as well as essence energy fused together. Like a terrifying explosion, it made Zhou Wen's body and mind tremble. In the next second, Zhou Wen realized that the blood-colored avatar's body had turned into an egg. No, it wasn't that the blood-colored avatar had turned into an egg, but that a barrier that resembled an eggshell had formed around it. An eggshell? What life soul is this? Zhou Wen felt awed as he looked at the information on his phone. He saw the words, Chaos Egg, written in his life soul column. It's really an egg. Zhou Wen was somewhat curious. He didn't know what special effects the Chaos Egg life soul would have. Chapter 712 Incubating the Invisibility Cloak Zhou Wen summoned the Chaos Egg in reality, and an eggshell immediately enveloped his body, making him appear as a newborn baby constrained within. Inside the Chaos Egg, there was a mysterious force flowing. It was like water, but it wasn't corporeal. Zhou Wen couldn't move, nor did he know what use this eggshell had. Under such circumstances, Zhou Wen couldn't even move, much less fight. Such a life soul was probably useless in battle. I'll ignore it for now. I'll try hatching the invisibility cloak. Zhou Wen took out the invisibility cloak's companion egg and attempted to hatch it. In the chaos egg, Zhou Wen's essence energy stirred, and the invisibility cloak companion egg reacted. What was even more magical was that the strange power in the chaos egg also flowed into the invisibility cloak egg. The life force in the invisibility cloak companion egg increased in intensity. Before long, the companion egg transformed into a stream of light that entered Zhou Wen's body. It's done! Zhou Wen was overjoyed. After waiting for so long, he had finally hatched the invisibility cloak. It would be much easier for him to go anywhere in the future. With the invisibility cloak, he could freely enter the dimensional zones controlled by the various families. He had long wanted to visit a few dimensional zones, but because they were controlled by the six families, he had no chance of entering them. Zhou Wen already knew the invisibility cloak stats, which remained unchanged. He summoned it and put it on. A magical scene happened as Zhou Wen's body vanished into thin air. It was true invisibility. Zhou Wen experimented and realized that the invisibility cloak's ability only made him visually invisible. To truly be invisible, he needed to activate the Wheel of Destiny. Once the Wheel of Destiny was activated, invisibility cloak lived up to its name and reached an intangible state. No one could discover Zhou Wen's presence. However, the Wheel of Destiny had a time limit. He could only be truly invisible for three minutes. Three minutes is about enough. With Dr. Darkness's darkness right hand, it won't be difficult to assassinate someone. Zhou Wen's heart suddenly stirred. In the past, he couldn't kill the nine black dragons because they could combine their powers. Now, with the power of the invisibility cloak and darkness right hand, he could completely conceal himself and aim to kill three black dragons first. He could mostly rely on the strength of Tyrant Behemoth, Truth Listener, and the other companion beasts to deal with the remaining six black dragons. With this in mind, Zhou Wen couldn't wait to give it a try. 
Unfortunately, he had just used Darkness' right hand once, so he only had two chances to use it. He had to wait for some time before the cooldown ended. Young Master One, something happened to Deputy Governor Chin. Can you come over? And Shung spoke over the phone in a heavy tone. What's wrong with Deputy Governor Chin? Is there anything I can help you with? Zhou Wen had a rather good impression of Chin Wufu, so he hurriedly asked. And Shun said, Deputy Governor Chin returned to Chess Mountain to preside over it the past few days. He happened to encounter a breakout creature that rushed out of Chess Mountain and engaged in an intense battle. Deputy Governor Chin was heavily injured. We have done everything we can but to no avail. We hope to use your strength to save Deputy Governor Chin. I don't know any medicine. I used the power of a companion beast back when I treated the parasitic spores, Zhou Wen said. We want to borrow your companion beast's strength. That's our only hope. I'll pick you up now. We'll talk on the way. As Sheng spoke, he had already arrived outside the school. Zhou Wen left school and got into Sheng's car. As Sheng drove, he told Zhou Wen the general situation. In fact, many experts in the Sunset Army had already made a diagnosis of Qin Wufu's injuries and found the reason for his serious injuries, but no one could save him. A strange dimensional creature had drilled into Qin Wufu's brain. It was like a tumor that extended out blood vessels that intertwined with Qin Wufu's brain matter. Unless Qin Wufu's brain was sliced open, it was impossible to extract the dimensional creature from his brain. However, the brain was fragile. The dimensional creature had already penetrated deep into it and was entrenched in his brain. Even Chancellor Lung was unable to get it out without damaging Qin Wufu's brain. Many experts and specialists in the Sunset Army had thought of many solutions, but none of them would be effective. However, if they ignored the dimensional creature, it would continue invading Qin Wufu's brain. It was very likely that it would completely control Qin Wufu's brain and turn him into a puppet. And Sheng's idea was to let Zhou Wen take a look and see if he could use the method of treating the parasitic spores to inject poison into the dimensional creature, causing it to die automatically. The poison itself might affect Deputy Governor Qin's brain. Furthermore, I wonder how poison-resistant the dimensional creature is. There's no way to accurately apply the dosage with the poison. If too much poison is used, it will damage the brain. If too little is used, the dimensional creature's final struggle might destroy the entire brain. Zhou Wen pondered. And Sheng nodded and said, Actually, the experts have already analyzed this plan of treatment. Just as you said, it's very dangerous, but at this stage, we can only give it a try. We can't just watch idly as Deputy Governor Qin gets destroyed, right? Let's take a look at the situation first. There might be a way. Zhou Wen surmised that Darkness' right hand might be useful, but it was situation dependent. All right, let's head over now. And Sheng drove all the way to the military hospital. Zhou Wen saw Qin Wufu, who was already unconscious, on the bed. He was connected to all sorts of instruments, and some strange companion beasts were by his side. A companion beast that resembled a jellyfish wrapped around his head. Its tentacles connected to his brain, but it was unknown what use it had. Beside the bed were a few doctors and nurses. Many officers were in the room next door, looking at Qin Wufu through the glass window. And Tianzhuo was among them, and his expression looked terrible. Overseer, young master Wen is here. And Shun led Zhou Wen into the room. Zhou Wen and Tianzhuo subconsciously glanced at each other before they involuntarily looked away. And Tianzhuo looked at Shun and was about to say something when the room was pushed open again. An officer walked over with an elder. Overseer, Mr. Dugu is here. The officer reported. Mr. Dugu, please take a look at Deputy Governor Qin's injuries. And Tianz was said to the elder. The elder didn't refuse. He looked at all the diagnostic information and some x-ray photos before saying, It's not impossible to eliminate the dimensional creatures in Deputy Governor Qin's brain, but what conditions do you have? And Tianz was asked. Since Overseer is so straightforward, I won't beat around the bush. I can revive Deputy Governor Qin given 10 tons of refined essence gold. The elder said confidently. Chapter 713 Extracting an Object from the Brain The expressions of the officers changed. The Yin family might not even produce 10 tons of refined essence gold in three years. And Shun said, Mr. Dugu, can you reduce it a little? Or can we use money and dimensional crystals to make up for the rest? As you know, the production of refined essence gold is very low. It's really difficult for us to hand over 10 tons of refined essence gold. The elder said with a smile. Adjutantin, there's no need to act poor in front of an old man like me. Who doesn't know that the Yin family's essence gold mine is the richest mine in the Federation? Ten tons of refined essence gold might be a huge sum to others, but it shouldn't be much to the Yin family, right? I can guarantee you that Deputy Governor Qin will enjoy a full recovery. You can rest assured about this. The Dugu family is an expert in this aspect. There's no one else in the entire Federation who can guarantee you that. 
Mr. Dugu. And Shum was about to say something when he was interrupted by the elder. Ten tons of refined essence gold, not one bit less. Why don't you discuss it again? However, you have to be quick. If that dimensional creature injures the brain, even my Dugu family will be helpless. The elder said. Everyone knew that the Dugu family was trying to take advantage of the situation, but there was nothing they could do. No one in Luoyang could treat Qin Wufu's injuries. If they wanted Qin Wufu to live, this was probably the only way. And Tianzhu's eyes were resolute. Just as he was about to say something, and Sheng spoke first. Overseer, let young master Wen take a look at Governor Qin's injuries before making a decision. And Tianzhu fell silent as the elder beside him smiled confidently. It's fine. You can get anyone to come and take a look. I don't dare say anything else, but in the field of microscopic companion beasts, no one will dare claim first if our Dugu family claims second. This dimensional creature that invaded his brain can only be eliminated by our Dugu family. Young Master Wen. And Shun looked at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen nodded and said, I need to observe Governor Qin's situation up close. And Shun hurriedly led Zhou Wen to the ward. On the way to the ward, and Shun whispered to Zhou Wen, Young Master Wen, Using 10 tons of refined essence gold to save Governor Qin's life is nothing. As long as we can save him, Overseer will be willing to pay anything. However, the research on the new essence gold weapons in the military factory is at a critical juncture. A large amount of refined essence gold is needed for experiments. Without this batch of essence gold, the research progress will be delayed for a year or more. This will deal a severe blow to Luoyang and the family. I'll try my best, Zhou Wen said. After reading the information, he had a general idea of what to do. However, the images taken by the instruments weren't very clear. He still needed to use his eyes of penetration to take a clear look himself to ensure that nothing went wrong. Standing beside Qin Wufu's bed, Zhou Wen used his eyes of penetration to look at his brain. A strange dimensional creature that looked like a blood vessel had invaded Qin Wufu's brain. The blood vessels extended out like a fishing net that wrapped around a portion of his brain. Furthermore, it was still spreading. Many blood vessels seemed to be part of the brain. It was difficult not to hurt the fragile brain if one wanted to remove it. After watching for a while, Zhou Wen deactivated his eyes of penetration. Young Master Wen, what do you think? And Sheng hurriedly asked. I can do it. Zhou Wen nodded. And Sheng was immediately overjoyed. He hurriedly turned and said to Antianzua, who was on the other side of the glass window. Overseer, Young Master Wen said that he can be saved. Governor Qin, shall we get Young Master Wen to immediately rescue him? At this moment, the elder beside him said, Overseer, you have to think carefully. That dimensional creature has already merged with Governor Qin's brain. To eliminate it requires an extremely meticulous job. It also requires the cooperation of special microscopic companion beasts. Are you sure you want such a young man to do it? Ignoring the fact that he can't eliminate it. Even if he can, Governor Qin might end up a cripple if his brain is injured. And Tianzhu didn't say a word after hearing the elder's words. He walked to the glass window and stared at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen, can you ensure Governor Qin's recovery? I can only guarantee that I can eliminate the dimensional creature without harming Deputy Governor Qin's brain. I can't guarantee anything else. Zhou Wen answered. Young man, don't be too blindly confident. Do you know what that dimensional creature is called? Do you know what kind of ability it has? The elder said with a smile. I don't know nor do I need to know. I just need to know that I can eliminate it. Zhou Wen said. Overseer, did you hear that? What kind of statement is that? Do you really want to use such a person? The elder laughed. But soon, the elder's smile froze. And Tianzhu directly said to Zhou Wen, Immediately treat Deputy Governor Qin. Overseer, isn't your decision a little too rash? Or do you think Deputy Governor Qin's life is more important than 10 tons of refined essence gold? Wouldn't this demoralize your subordinates? The elder said with a smile. His words were clearly provoking the other officers. He wanted to use the officer's emotions to pressure in Tianzhu. Ten tons of refined essence gold were very important resources for the Dugu family. The elder wasn't afraid that Zhou Wen could treat Qin Wufu, because he didn't believe that Zhou Wen had the ability to do so. He was afraid that he would have no hope of obtaining the batch of refined essence gold if Zhou Wen killed Qin Wufu. And Tianzhu didn't answer the elder. He looked at an officer beside him and asked, If you were Governor Qin, who would you choose to treat you? Young Master Wen. The officer answered without hesitation. The elder's expression changed slightly. Things seemed to be different from what he had imagined. What about you? And Tianzhu asked another officer. Young Master Wen. The officer immediately answered. And Tianzhu asked one by one, and all the officers chose Zhou Wen without any hesitation. There was no exception. From their expressions, it seemed like a foregone conclusion. Overseer, 
Your methods of subordination are truly brilliant. The elder held back the surprise in his heart. He had imagined that Ntienzwe had given strict orders, making them be willing to risk their lives without any complaints. Although he said that, he couldn't help but look at Zhou when in the ward. He thought to himself, does he really have that ability? However, when his gaze landed on Zhou Wen, his pupils constricted. He saw a strange dimensional creature formed from red threads in Zhou Wen's hand. It was the dimensional creature in Qin Wufu's head. Zhou Wen had already taken out the dimensional creature at some point in time, and it was alive. That's impossible. The elder wore a look of disbelief as he pressed his hands against the glass window. His eyes yearned to reach out to Zhou Wen, hoping to see if the dimensional creature in his hand was fake. Chapter 714 Worm Dugu The dimensional creature contorted as it attempted to burrow into Zhou Wen's hand, but it was blocked by a force that prevented it. The doctor brought over a specially tempered piece of glassware that he had prepared, and Zhou Wen placed the dimensional creature inside. It constantly twisted and slammed into the glass container, hoping to rush out. Unfortunately, it was too weak and couldn't break through the tempered glass. Furthermore, there was an instrument made of essence gold above the glass container. It had a weakening effect on dimensional creatures. The elder didn't believe that Zhou Wen had really taken out the dimensional creature. He ran into the ward and wanted to examine Qin Wufu to confirm if the dimensional creature in his brain had really been taken out. However, there was no need for a checkup. The elder knew that Zhou Wen wasn't faking it. When he entered the ward, he saw that Qin Wufu had already woken up. Sorry for making everyone worry. Although Qin Wufu was still weak, his brain seemed to be functioning normally. He could already speak. You are young master one, right? Can you tell me how you did it? The elder asked Zhou Wen. No. Zhou Wen answered bluntly. The elder was slightly taken aback as he carefully sized up Zhou Wen before continuing. With young master Wen's abilities, it would be a pity if he doesn't join my Dugu family. Our Dugu family needs talented people. Young master one, why don't you consider it? Mr. Dugu, isn't it inappropriate for you to poach one of ours in front of our overseer? And Shun said, The Federation is a family. Young master one, you really should consider our Dugu family. Otherwise, your ability will be wasted. As the elder spoke, he cupped his hands at Ntienzwa and said, I've broadened myself today. Thank you for the overseer's invitation. However, with young master one around, I'm afraid we won't have many opportunities to cooperate in the future. Mr. Dugu, you're being too polite. There are still many opportunities for cooperation in the future, said Ntienzwa. Before the elder left, he gave Zhou Wen an additional glance. Qin Wufu chatted with Zhou Wen for a while, until the doctor told him to rest. Only then did Zhou Wen leave. When Zhou Wen arrived at the entrance, he saw Nsheng waiting for him in the car, but he didn't see Ntienzwa. Overseer has something to attend to. He told me to take you back, Nsheng said with a smile. It's not far. I can go back myself, Zhou Wen said as he got into the car. It's mainly because there's something I need to tell you. The person you saw just now is called Worm Dugu. He's a member of the Dugu family. In terms of seniority, Dugu has to call him second uncle. The Dugu family is adept at microscopic companion beasts, and this person is an expert in Gu-type companion beasts. And Shung explained the origins of Worm Dugu in detail. Why are you telling me this so solemnly? Could it be that there's something wrong with this Worm Dugu? Zhou Wen asked. Young Master One, you are getting sharper. Although Governor Qin was injured because of the breakout creature at Chess Mountain, we still have our suspicions. Firstly, we haven't seen such a dimensional creature in Chess Mountain before. Secondly, the Dugu family lives far away in the South District. It's a coincidence that Worm Dugu happened to be in Luoyang. Although it might be a coincidence, it's best to be careful. And Sheng explained. Zhou Wen understood what Sheng meant. If the thing in Qin Wufu's head was really put there by Worm Dugu, then with Zhou Wen ruining the plans, Worm Dugu probably wouldn't give up easily. Young Master One, that white ball-like companion beast of yours is quite fun. Why don't you let it out for some fresh air? Perhaps there will be an unexpected gain. And Sheng said casually. I will. Zhou Wen knew that Nsheng wanted him to use Tai Sui to prevent the invasion of Gu Tai companion beasts. Unfortunately, Tai Sui was still evolving. It was probably useless for the time being. After returning to school, Zhou Wen summoned Primordial Spore and made it stand guard. Tai Sui was still evolving, so it was the only weapon that could deal with microscopic companion beasts. Under the surveillance of Nsheng's men, Worm Dugu checked into a hotel. After dinner, he returned to his room to rest. He didn't do anything strange. Through the surveillance cameras, one could even see that Worm Dugu was sleeping in bed. However, in a place they couldn't see, a mosquito secretly flew out of the room, passing through the streets and heading for Sunset College at an unbelievable speed. As Worm Dugu flew, he thought to himself, how can those fools from the unfamily defend against me? 
I want to see how capable Zhou Wen is to be able to extract the blood thread brain eating goo that was connected to his brain. Even if I were to take action, it would be impossible for me to pull it out as cleanly as him. With his ability, he's practically a genius at raising goo worms. The mosquito shaped worm, Dugu, quickly arrived at Sunset College. After getting his bearings, he headed for Four Seasons Garden. Others might not be able to find Zhou Wen's location, but Worm Dugu had a smell seeking companion beast. It could find Zhou Wen by searching for his remnant smells. Soon, the mosquito shaped worm Dugu arrived outside Zhou Wen's building. He sniffed and confirmed that this was Zhou Wen's residence. Worm Dugu landed in the grass on the yard and thought to himself, Let's get my baby to test his strength first. With a thought, he summoned a companion beast that looked like a spider. The spider was only the size of a fingernail, and it was gray. One wouldn't be able to see it if one didn't pay attention. The spider accepted the order from Worm Dugu and crawled towards Zhou Wen's building. It crawled in through the crack in the door in a seemingly easy manner. Just as Worm Dugu wanted to use the perspective of his spider companion beast to take a look at the situation inside the building so that he could pick up a strand of hair or a skin flake to proceed with the next step of the plan, the spider suddenly lost contact with him. Worm Dugu Worm didn't even see a thing. He's indeed prepared. However, if he thinks that he can defend against me just because of some preparations, he is severely underestimating my Dugu family. Worm Dugu didn't seem surprised. With a thought, he summoned some companion beasts. This time, it wasn't a spider, but an even smaller insect. It was like a black sesame seed, so small that it was almost indiscernible. There were many of them. Under the control of Worm Dugu, the black sesame-like flying insects flew into the dormitory through the cracks in the door, windows, and so on. Although my hundred or so black blood goo are only at the legendary stage, they can enter the bloodstream the moment they see it. As long as one is bitten by it, they will quickly reproduce in the blood. They can only be cured by me. I want to see if you have the ability to get these black blood goo out as well, thought Dugu. Chapter 715 Magical Hair Goo However, very quickly, Worm Dugu's expression turned ugly. After the tiny black blood goo entered the dorm, he lost contact with them one after another. Originally, Worm Dugu believed that even if a portion of the more than a hundred black blood goo was discovered, there would definitely be quite a number of them, which successfully infiltrated. One was enough as long as it succeeded. However, by the time Worm Dugu realized that something was amiss, more than a hundred black blood goo was almost wiped out. He didn't even know who killed the black blood goo. In the dorm, a golden chick flew around. As long as a goo worm crawled in, it would eat them. No worm could come in alive. Worm Dugu refused to believe it as he released his companion beasts one after another, trying his best to infiltrate Zhou Wen's dorm. However, no matter what kind of companion beast he released, he immediately lost contact with them the moment they entered Zhou Wen's building. It was like a rock sinking into the sea. I don't believe that you can even kill my magical hair goo. Worm Dugu had sacrificed many companion beasts, but he refused to have his belief shaken. He just wanted to win once in his competition with Zhou Wen. He did not realize that Zhou Wen had no idea what was happening in his dorm. He was lying in his bedroom on the second floor, grinding instance dungeons. The moment Worm Dugu's companion beasts entered the building, they entered the chick's stomach without alarming Zhou Wen. Worm Dugu's magical hair goo was extraordinary. It was a mythical dimensional creature. That's right. It was a dimensional creature, not a companion beast. The truly powerful thing about the Dugu family was that they could tame dimensional creatures. Companion beasts were secondary. Magical hair goo was a dimensional creature that Worm Dugu had tamed himself. He had spent a lot of effort and nearly lost his life to subdue and tame it. This magical hair goo was a mythical dimensional creature. Its abilities were very special. As long as it came into contact with the enemy's body, it could parasitize their hair and use the power of their hair. It could control the growth of hair in reverse, causing the hair to grow inside the brain and body, taking root in the brain and flesh. It was terrifying. The hair absorbed the nutrients of the body, and in the end, all the flesh and blood in the body would be sucked dry. The interior would be filled with hair, leaving only a layer of human skin on the outside. This way of dying was extremely painful. When Worm Dugu caught the magical hair goo, he had almost died. It was only by chance that he had managed to subdue it. A black thread thinner than a strand of hair appeared in front of Worm Dugu. As though it was a strand of hair that was blown by the wind, it swept into the building through the crack in the door. Punk, when you know how powerful my magical hair goo is, won't you end up following me back to the South District and be my disciple? Dugu Goo felt that he could definitely deal with Zhou Wen by releasing such a powerful weapon. He didn't really want to do anything to Zhou Wen. All he wanted was to take him in as a disciple of the Dugu family and raise worms with him. The main reason was that Zhou Wen's method of extracting the blood thread brain eating goo was so shocking. 
Worm Duga felt that such talent made him gifted at rearing two worms. It would be a pity if he didn't do so. The Dugu family was a true presence in the South District. However, the Dugu family didn't just rear worms. In fact, they raised too many things. As the drop rate of companion beasts was too low, especially mythical companion eggs, which were also difficult to find, the Dugu family did the opposite. Killing a mythical creature only gave one a certain chance of obtaining a companion egg. But the chances weren't high. However, if they could tame a mythical creature, it was equivalent to having a 100% chance of obtaining a pet. Coupled with the research of ancient spells and generations of people, the Dugu family was unmatched in the Federation when it came to rearing strange dimensional creatures. However, taming dimensional creatures was very dangerous. Furthermore, the dimensional creatures that the Dugu family domesticated were strange, making them even more dangerous. Many members of the Dugu family were killed by the dimensional creatures they domesticated. In the eyes of Worm Dugu, Zhou Wen was born to nurture goo worms. Therefore, he wanted to recruit him into the Dugu family. Of course, if he was recruited into the Dugu family to learn the art of taming dimensional creatures, he had to first implant a goo in Zhou Wen to prevent him from learning the Dugu family's abilities only to end up dealing with the Dugu family. However, Worm Dugu never expected that all the companion beasts he had sent in would die for no apparent reason. This was why he released his most precious magical hair goo. When it comes to worms, I, Worm Dugu, am an expert. Worm Dugu was thinking about what he would do when Joe when came crying to him with black hair overgrowing everywhere. The moment the magical hair goo entered the building, it was discovered by the chick. However, this time, it didn't immediately fly over. It stood on the table and watched as the magical hair goo rolled towards the stairs on the second floor. It seemed to be hesitating. Just as the magical hair goo was about to roll to the side of the stairs, the chick finally moved. Like a golden bolt of lightning, it landed in front of the bedroom door and pecked at the magical hair goo, hoisting it up. It raised its neck and swallowed the magical hair goo. The magical hair goo twisted in the chick's stomach, but a golden flame burned in its stomach, gradually melting the magical hair goo. On the grass outside, Worm Dugu suddenly spat out a mouthful of blood. He returned to his original form, dispelling his mosquito-like form. His face was terrifyingly pale and filled with disbelief. Impossible. The magical hair goo is almost invulnerable. It grows once it enters the flesh. How can this be? Worm Dugu's face was pale as he broke out into a cold sweat. He had been raising worms for so many years, but this was the first time he had encountered such a terrifying opponent, one who could even easily kill a magical hair goo. Could this show and really be my nemesis? He can even easily kill a magical hair goo. It's probably easy for him to take my life. If I had known this would happen, I shouldn't have come. The more Worm Dugu thought about it, the more terrified he became. He gritted his teeth and got up from the ground to knock on Zhou Wen's door. Zhou Wen was grinding dungeons when he heard the doorbell ring. He thought it was a classmate, but when he opened the door, he saw an old man standing at the door. It was none other than Worm Dugu. Zhou Wen was secretly wary. Could it be as Sheng said? Worm Dugu is here to settle scores? Just as Zhou Wen was thinking about how to deal with Worm Dugu, the latter suddenly bowed at him. Young Master One, it's all my fault. I was blind. I shouldn't have offended you. According to the rules of our Dugu family, I've lost this match. Feel free to punish me, even if it takes my life. I'll do whatever you want. Zhou Wen was puzzled when he heard that. He had indeed been wary of Worm Dugu, but he didn't discover anything entering his room. What was this Worm Dugu talking about? Chapter 716 Master Do you know how you lost? Zhou Wen asked Worm Dugu. He had no idea what had happened, so he wanted to figure it out. Worm Dugu ended up misunderstanding Zhou Wen. He said bitterly, Young Master One, you are indeed brilliant. I used the blood-sucking spider, black blood goo, and seven other types of miniature companion beasts. Each one was smaller than the last, but none of them escaped your notice. All the companion beasts were killed by you. In the end, I had no choice but to use the magical hair goo. I originally thought I could use the magical hair goo to teach you a lesson, but I never expected that I would be the one being taught a lesson. Why did you attack me? Zhou Wen asked again. Worm Dugu blushed and stammered. When I saw your technique at the hospital, I felt that you were more suited to learning my techniques of raising insects and worms, so I wanted to take you to the South District to learn how to raise insects and worms from me. You mean that you want to take me in as your disciple? Zhou Wen asked Worm Dugu in a daze. Worm Dugu's face flushed red. Young Master One, I'm really sorry. I've really embarrassed myself. Only today did I realize that there's always someone better out there. What a joke about you being my disciple. I'm not even qualified to be your disciple. If you wish to kill me, just give the word. I won't dirty your hands. Did the dimensional creature in Governor Chin's brain have anything to do with you? 
Zhou Wen asked directly. Worm Dugu immediately said with a serious expression. Definitely not. Although our Dugu family does need a batch of essence gold, we wouldn't go to such an extent, much less harm Deputy Governor Qin who defends against a dimensional zone. In that case, leave, Zhou Wen said after some thought. However, Worm Dugu had no intention of leaving. He gritted his teeth and said to Zhou Wen, Young Master One, I've raised worms my entire life. This is the first time I've suffered such a terrible defeat. I don't even know how I failed. Can you tell me how you killed the magical hair goo? I don't know, Zhou Wen said casually. He really didn't know how the magical hair goo died. He didn't even see it. On second thought, the chick had been flying around without him knowing why. He could roughly guess that the chick had resolved the miniature companion beasts and the magical hair goo. However, it wasn't appropriate for him to tell Worm Dugu. You don't know how the magical hair goo died? Worm Dugu naturally didn't believe such an answer. It was dead before I even saw it. How would I know how it died? As Zhou Wen spoke, he prepared to close the door. He wasn't in the mood to say anything more to Worm Dugu. If it wasn't for the fact that he didn't wish for Worm Dugu to die in school thus causing a conflict between the Dugu family and Luoyang, he would have taken action. Although he didn't plan on taking action now, Zhou Wen had no intention of letting Worm Dugu off the hook. He planned on using the invisibility cloak to tail Worm Dugu and see if he had any accomplices before deciding what to do. Zhou Wen was only making a passing remark, hoping to send Worm Dugu on his way. It also gave him an opportunity to test the effects of the invisibility cloak. However, when Worm Dugu heard that, he was alarmed. You killed the magical hair goo without seeing it? Yes. If there's nothing else, leave. Don't disturb me again, Zhou Wen said as he closed the door. To his surprise, Worm Dugu rushed over and held the door open. Young Master One, can you let me see your companion beast? A companion beast that can easily kill a magical hair goo must be extraordinary. Just as he was about to say something, Worm Dugu suddenly saw the chick standing on the table. He immediately widened his eyes in shock. What's wrong with you? Do you really think I don't dare kill you? Zhou Wen said with a cold expression. If Worm Dugu continued pestering him, he would have no choice but to attack. That, that can't be. Worm Dugu didn't seem to hear Zhou Wen's reprimand as he stared intently at the chick and stammered. Could that be the legendary Phoenix Fledging? You recognize it? Zhou Wen looked at Worm Dugu in surprise. The chick had been with him for quite some time, but not many people recognized its origins. Now, the chick looked like a tiny golden eagle. It didn't look anything like a phoenix. I recognize it, of course I recognize it. How can a person who plays with worms and insects not recognize a phoenix? A phoenix is the nemesis of insects and worms. No matter how powerful a goo worm is, they are powerless against it. No wonder. No wonder. As Worm Dugu spoke, he tore off its clothes, revealing his dry chest muscles. What are you trying to do? Zhou Wen took two steps back and looked at Worm Dugu in surprise. However, Worm Dugu turned around, allowing Zhou Wen to see his back. On his back was a huge blood-colored phoenix tattoo. It looked extremely realistic, as though it could flap its wings and fly out at any moment. You have a phoenix companion beast? Zhou Wen was alarmed. Worm Dugu said in embarrassment. How can I have a phoenix companion beast? The teacher who taught me how to raise worms tattooed this on me. It's called a phoenix hooking evil painting. This is a rule passed down from my ancestors. It uses a mixture of special avian blood and medicinal herbs for the tattooing. It can be used to ward off insects and evil. It's to prevent me from being injured when catching insects and raising goo. In my lineage, there are also ancient books regarding phoenixes. The phoenix fledging described in them is very similar to yours. It's just slightly different. Young Master One. Is this really a phoenix fledgling? I see. Zhou Wen didn't answer as he nodded and said. If there's nothing else, go back. I won't let you off so easily the next time I see you. However, Worm Dugu didn't move. He said to Zhou Wen in a fawning manner. Young Master One, do you lack any errand boys? Do you want me to be your assistant? I don't need an assistant. Zhou Wen said with a frown. That's right. Men usually find young ladies to be their assistants. Then, what do you think about you becoming my master? Worm Dugu's eyes darted around as he suddenly said something unexpected. How old are you? Why are you still taking me as your master? I... Before Zhou Wen could finish his sentence, Worm Dugu had already plopped to the ground. Master, please accept a bow from your disciple, Worm Dugu. Worm Dugu didn't hesitate at all. He was about to pay his respects to his master by kowtowing. Zhou Wen was dumbfounded. He had no idea what was happening. Before he could react, Worm Dugu had already finished kowtowing. What are you trying to do? Zhou Wen stared at Worm Dugu and frowned. Worm Dugu crawled up and said, From now on, you are my master. Master, 
When are you going to teach me how to raise a phoenix? Chapter 717 Worm Duke's Plan Zhou Wen took out his saber and prepared to slash at him. After all this back and forth, Worm Dugu was actually targeting the chick. Worm Dugu hurriedly retreated out of the yard when he saw Zhou Wen take out his saber. As he retreated, he shouted, Master, I'll visit you another day. Call me if there's anything you need. I'll be there anytime. Zhou Wen closed the door and immediately summoned the invisibility cloak. Then, he jumped out of the window at the back of his residence and tailed Worm Dugu from afar to see what he was up to. Zhou Wen saw Worm Dugu secretly arrive at an uninhabited spot before turning into a mosquito. He then flew out of the school. Zhou Wen wore the invisibility cloak and had Truth Listener on his ear. He kept monitoring the movements of Worm Dugu and soon followed him to a dilapidated warehouse. There's indeed an accomplice. Zhou Wen used Truth Listener to listen and realized that there was another person in the warehouse besides Worm Dugu. Zhou Wen listened attentively, hoping to gather some useful information. With Truth Listener around, he didn't need to risk entering the warehouse. Second Grandpa, what took you so long? How did the matter regarding Essence Gold go? The person who spoke to Worm Dugu was a girl. She appeared rather young. She had a round face and huge eyes. She looked to be about 16 or 17 years old at most. I screwed up. The blood thread brain eating goo in Qin Wufu's body was extracted by someone else, said Worm Dugu. Apart from our Dugu family, there's actually someone who can extract a blood thread brain eating goo that has entrenched a brain? The girl said in disbelief. I didn't believe it either, but it was indeed extracted. Furthermore, Qin Wufu was completely unharmed said Worm Dugu helplessly. What about the essence gold? Is the Yin family willing to sell so much refined essence gold to us? The girl asked worriedly. Probably not. Dugu smiled and said. But don't worry. Even if we don't use essence gold, I've already thought of a way to capture the myriad poison goo king. Second Grandpa, didn't you try that the last time? Even the magical hair goo is helpless against the myriad poison goo king. It was almost destroyed. Do you have any more powerful goo? The girl looked at Worm Dugu in disbelief. Dugu chuckled and said, I don't have one, but I've just become a disciple to a master. If I can get his help, I'll definitely be able to capture that myriad poison goo king. Second Grandpa, didn't you say that the master you had is already dead? Where did this master come from? The girl's face looked puzzled. Didn't I just say that I just became a disciple of this master? He has a phoenix fledging. With the help of the Phoenix Fledgling, we don't need to forge an Essence Gold Worm Nurturing Furnace to still capture the Myriad Poison Goo King, said Worm Dugu. Then, Second Grandpa, quickly get your new master to help, the girl said. Cough, cough. There's no rush. Worm Dugu knew very well that it wasn't that easy to get Joe when to use the Phoenix Fledgling to help him capture the Myriad Poison Goo King. The girl sighed and said, I originally thought that our luck was good, and we happened to encounter the situation of Qin Wufu having his brain invaded by a blood thread brain eating goo. I thought we could exchange for enough essence gold, but I never expected that we wouldn't even get a single bit of essence gold. I wonder when we will be able to capture the myriad poison king. Mir, don't worry. With second grandpa around, I guarantee that I'll help you obtain the goo king of myriad poison valley. Furthermore, other than me, no one else has the ability to take the goo king away. Just relax. Worm Dugu changed the topic and said, Stay in Luoyang and have some fun for a few days. When we are to return to the South District, I'll naturally seek you out. Don't run around. You can't leave Luoyang City, understand? Got it, Second Grandpa. Mir agreed seriously. After some thought, Mir asked again, Second Grandpa, should I visit your master? Second Grandpa, how should I address your master? No need, no need. You don't have to worry about this matter. After Worm Dugu sent Mir away, he muttered to himself, I don't know if there's a second Phoenix fledgling. I reckon the possibility of there being a second one is very low. Even if there is one, I'm afraid it won't be easy to obtain it. I should think of a way to invite Master to follow me to Myriad Poison Valley, but how can I move him? From the looks of it, I have to think of a way. Zhou Wen listened outside all this time. He heard them talking about Gu, but he didn't hear any plans. From Mir's tone, Qin Wufu's injuries didn't seem to have anything to do with them. Although I don't know if the chick is a real phoenix, it does seem to be able to restrain dimensional creatures like goo worms. In the future, I have to bring it along if I have to go to the South District, Zhou Wen thought to himself. After Worm Dugu left the dilapidated warehouse, he returned to the hotel and didn't come out again. Zhou Wen eavesdropped for a long time, but he didn't gather any useful information. Finally, he gave up on monitoring Worm Dugu and returned to the school dorm. The ability of the invisibility cloak is really useful. Even if I walk on the streets during the day, I don't need to worry about being seen by others. Even if I don't use the Wheel of Destiny, 
It's enough to remain invisible under normal circumstances. Zhou Wen thought about how he could use the invisibility cloak to do something big. Before the dimensional zones are fully unlocked, I should download some game dungeons. I'll download the famous dimensional zones first. I wonder what dimensional zones Primordial Immortal Sword, Origin Realm King, and Death of the Underworld Companion Beasts come from. After some thought, Zhou Wen decided to start with the nearest dimensional zones. The famous dimensional zones closer to Luoyang should be the Xia family's dimensional zones, right? Zhou Wen looked up the information and quickly made up his mind. He planned on heading to the Xia family's territory. The Xia family controlled many mysterious dimensional zones. Zhou Wen had always wanted to go to a few of them. One of the most famous dimensional zones was named Ancient Sword Tomb. It was said that there were many legendary swords there. The Xia family's old hero had once obtained a mythical sword-type companion egg from Ancient Sword Tomb and used it to reign supreme. However, that was decades ago. The Xia family had controlled the Ancient Sword Tomb for so long, so they definitely had more than one mythical companion beast sword. Zhou Wen suspected that the demonic sword that demonic neonate snatched from Xia Xianyu was from the Ancient Sword Tomb. After I'm done with the Xia family, I'll tour the six families' territories and download the dimensional zones they control. When that happens, I can grind for any companion beast I want. There's no need for me to risk my life. Zhou Wen did as he said. He planned on informing and Sheng before setting off for the Xia family. This time, Zhou Wen didn't dare leave the chick and antelope behind. He was mainly afraid that the Dugu family would target the chick. Although the possibility of the antelope being stolen was very low, Zhou Wen still planned on taking them with him to prevent any accidents. Chapter 718 Teacher Square The chick stood on Zhou Wen's shoulder and looked around curiously. However, the antelope looked listless. It didn't seem to like walking. Zhou Wen wasn't in a rush. This trip was also a form of training. He planned on taking a look at all the dimensional zones along the way. He planned on taking a picture of all the dimensional zones with a tiny palm symbol to prepare for a full-scale breakout of dimensional zones in the future. Ancient Sword Tomb was an imperial capital. Zhou Wen could also take this chance to visit Wang Lu and repay his debt. Imperial capital was also known as capital. Unlike the holy city, that was jointly controlled by the six families, Imperial Capital was basically controlled by the Xia family. However, to everyone's surprise, the Special Inspector Bureau's headquarters was also an Imperial Capital, not Holy City. Zhou Wen had plans of making a trip to the Bureau's headquarters on his visit to the Imperial Capital. As many roads were blocked by dimensional zones, all he could do was circle around them. He had to travel further. Even with Zhou Wen's present strength, he didn't dare barge into unexplored dimensional zones to prevent any accidents. The route Zhou Wen chose was the one and Sheng had planned for him. Although it was a little further, it was safe and reliable. After carefully studying the information, the first relatively famous dimensional zone he encountered was called Five Dragons Mouth. It was originally a scenic spot. After the dimensional storms, the Five Dragons Mouth turned into a complicated, stacked dimensional zone that had multiple dimensional zones within. One of the most famous dimensional zones of the Five Dragons Mouth was called Mount Confucius. There was a teacher square in the western Mount Confucius, and Mount Lao Jun was in the east. Legend had it that the Confucian and Daoist families had competed here, leaving behind many moving tales. After the dimensional storms, Mount Confucius became even stranger. One could often hear the sound of reading from teacher square, but when one really looked over, there wasn't a single soul. There was also Arrow atop. It was the highest peak of Five Dragons Mouth. It had many legends related to Ho Yi. There were also other dimensional zones that had their own specialties. Zhou Wen planned on heading to the Five Dragons Mouth to take a look. If he could download the dimensional zones, it wouldn't be bad to keep them for future research. Worm Duga didn't know that Zhou Wen had left Luoyang, so he went to look for him early in the morning. Master, are you awake? I'm here to pay my respects to you. When are you free? Teach me, your disciple, how to raise a phoenix. In order to learn the way to raise a phoenix, Worm Duga didn't care about his reputation at all. He kept using the words, master, and, disciple, without any hesitation. Why are you making such a din so early in the morning? Li Xian walked out of Zhou Wen's dorm. Before Zhou Wen left, he got Li Xian to take all the food in the fridge to prevent it from spoiling. Who are you? Where's my master? Worm Dugu glared at Li Xian. How would I know who your master is? Li Xian sized up Worm Dugu and saw that the old man was already in his 70s or 80s. To think he still had a master. You walked out of my master's dorm, and you still say that you don't know who my master is? said Worm Dugu. Show what is your master? Li Xian widened his mouth as he sized up Worm Dugu in disbelief. Zhou Wen was only 17 or 18 years old. How could he have such an old disciple? That's right. Zhou Wen is my master. Has he woken up? 
Worm Dugu said matter-of-factly. If Zhou Wen is your master, then wouldn't I, Zhou Wen's classmate, be your martial uncle? Disciple nephew, there's no need to continue shouting. Zhou Wen has gone out and isn't on campus. Li Xian joked. Worm Dugu narrowed his eyes. He recognized Zhou Wen as his master because he wanted to learn how to rear a phoenix from Zhou Wen. It didn't mean that others could use him as a joke. Sure. That depends on whether you have the fortune to be my martial uncle. Worm Dugu remained unperturbed as he secretly released a black blood goo, hoping to teach Li Xian a lesson. However, when the black blood goo crawled to Li Xian's side, it suddenly stopped moving. It sprawled on the ground and trembled. No matter how the Worm Dugu urged it, the black blood goo didn't dare approach Li Xian. Oh? Worm Dugu was slightly taken aback. He had never encountered such a situation. He summoned a few more goo, but the moment they approached Li Xian, they immediately curled up in horror, not daring to touch him. Worm Dugu wore a look of surprise. What's going on? Why are my goo worms afraid of him? Does he have a phoenix too? Zhou Wen continued forward and didn't encounter any danger. Along the way, he saw a companion beast caravan that transported goods. As motor transportation became increasingly difficult, many transportation companies had chosen to use companion beasts to transport goods. He successfully arrived at Five Dragons' mouth. Zhou Wen walked along the mountain path, hoping to find the tiny palm symbol. After searching for a long time, he didn't find it. Instead, he saw many people fighting a monkey-type dimensional creature. The monkey was muscular and had a short tail. It looked rather ferocious. Zhou Wen took a look at the information and knew that this dimensional creature was called a macaque. It was a relatively common dimensional creature at Five Dragon's Mouth. There were many of them, and they were typically at the mortal stage. Occasionally, one could see a legendary monkey king. Legend had it that the macaque here had the bloodline of the handsome monkey king. He didn't know if it was true. The macaque king's combat strength was considered quite powerful among legendaries. Furthermore, the macaque king companion beast's companion form was very special, giving it a rather high value. The nearby legendaries would often come here to hunt the macaque king, hoping to gain something. Zhou Wen wasn't interested in hunting the macaque king. He just searched for the tiny palm symbol. Suddenly, Zhou Wen heard a strange sound coming from a nearby mountain. It sounded like children reading textbooks. The sound was drawn out, making it sound odd. However, those voices were clearly not children's voices. They were the voices of adults. Zhou Wen looked at the source of the sound, and then at the map. He immediately knew that it was the legendary teacher square. The legends are true. There's actually the sound of reading in broad daylight at teacher square. Zhou Wen's interest was piqued as he walked towards teacher square to see what was so magical about it. However, Zhou Wen couldn't help but be taken aback when he reached teacher square and saw the scene in front of him. There were many people sitting on teacher square. They were all twirling their heads as they read. The voice Zhou Wen had heard wasn't a phenomenon, but a result of actual people reading. These people were engrossed in their reading. They twirled their heads and read loudly, as though they were primary school students who were seriously reciting their textbooks. They also resembled scholars from ancient times. Their voices were especially charming as they dragged out their last words. Could this be a reading activity that's hosted here? Zhou Wen thought as he climbed onto Teacher Square. However, just as he stepped onto Teacher Square, he couldn't help but open his mouth and emit the same voices as the others. He began reading with them, but he had never heard the content that he was reading. There's something odd about this place. Zhou Wen was alarmed. Chapter 719 Injured Zhou Wen couldn't help but sit down and become one of them. He began reciting with them. Zhou Wen recited in a rhythmic manner as though he was very familiar with it, but he had no idea what he was reciting. Thankfully, the mysterious power of Teacher Square wasn't harmful. All he did was sit there and read. There was no further development. Zhou Wen wasn't in a rush to escape the mysterious power's control. He wanted to figure out what the mysterious power was up to. There were more than a hundred people sitting on the huge teacher square. They looked like people who cultivated. Zhou Wen felt that it wasn't a coincidence that they were here. Why isn't there any mention of such a strange power on Mount Confucius? Zhou Wen recited while studying the content he was reciting. The content was very esoteric. The language and words were very different from what modern people were used to. It was clearly an ancient article. Zhou Wen's level of literacy was very ordinary. He could still understand some simple ancient texts, but he really couldn't understand such obscure ancient texts. Previously, Zhou Wen had studied the ancient texts of Taoism and Buddhism, but this ancient text was clearly different from the two. He had never heard of many terms, so he couldn't figure out what it meant, even after listening for a while. Zhou Wen originally wanted to memorize the article he was reciting and slowly study it later, but he soon realized that no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't remember a single word. After reciting a sentence, it was as if it had vanished from his memory. He couldn't memorize it at all. 
From the looks of it, I can only try recording it. Joe and wanted to take out his phone to record his voice. However, he realized that his body wasn't listening to him. All he could do was sit there and chant. He couldn't do anything else. With a thought, Joe Wen switched his essence energy art to the Tao Sutra. He wanted to use the power of God's retreat to break the rules of Teacher Square and take out his phone to record the recital. Bam! Just as Zhou Wen switched to the Tao Sutra, he suddenly felt a terrifying force strike him like lightning. The Jade Infant nearly cracked. Zhou Wen's body tumbled down Teacher Square like a balloon. Thankfully, after leaving Teacher Square, Zhou Wen regained control of his body and quickly found his footing. He spat out a mouthful of blood as his organs were severely injured. Some of his bones had even fractured. Zhou Wen was alarmed. Is the taboo power of Teacher Square that domineering? However, on second thought, he felt that something was amiss. The taboo power in Netherworld City was already extremely terrifying, but it wasn't as potent as this. The taboo power in Teacher Square was no longer something that could be explained by the word. Potent! Zhou Wen felt that the taboo power of Teacher Square was targeting him. Wait, I think I understand. Zhou Wen immediately recalled. Legend had it that Mount Confucius was the place where the Confucian and Taoist practitioners fought for supremacy, and Teacher Square was the territory of Confucianism. It was highly likely that he had been targeted when he used the Tao Sutra on Teacher Square. In that case, I should head to Mount Laojun to take a look. That's Taoist territory. Zhou Wen wanted to stand up, but his injuries were too severe. The moment he moved, he grimaced in pain. I should heal my injuries first. Zhou Wen switched to the inverse ancient sovereign life soul and used its powerful life force to heal his injured organs and bones. However, the inverse ancient sovereign only had a powerful life force. Its self-healing speed was far inferior to Li Xian's life soul. The antelope looked at Zhou Wen gloatingly, as though it already knew the mystery of Teacher Square. The chick skipped about on the rocks beside him. It was filled with curiosity about everything. Are you alright? A woman in her thirties walked over and squatted down to ask Zhou Wen. I'm fine. It's just a small injury. Zhou Wen shook his head. The woman smiled and said, You aren't from around here. It's your first time at Mount Confucius's Teacher Square, right? How did you know? Zhou Wen asked. The locals know that you can't use Taoist Essence Energy Arts on Teacher Square. You must have used the Taoist Essence Energy Art just now to be struck out. The woman explained. The recital had ended, and the people sitting on Teacher Square had returned to normal. They were walking down in twos and threes. They looked at Zhou Wen with a smile. Clearly, they, like the woman, knew why Zhou Wen had been expelled. Teacher Square is a holy land for cultivating Confucian Essence Energy Arts like righteousness. If you cultivate in Taoist Essence Energy Arts, you should head to Mount Laojun. The woman thought for a moment and reminded him. Teacher Square has an hour of recital daily. If you want to tour the area, you can go up after that hour. Thank you for your advice. I wonder if Mount Laojun has any taboos. Zhou Wen hurriedly asked. Not really. There's a Tao book on the top of Mount Laojun, but it requires self-enlightenment. There's no force that can force you. The woman sized up Zhou Wen and said, Your injuries don't seem light. Do you want me to take you to the hospital? There's no need. I'll be fine after resting for a while. Zhou Wen hurriedly thanked the woman for her kindness. After the woman left, Zhou Wen sat there to recuperate. However, his injuries were too serious. On the second day, the woman and many people who cultivated in Confucian Essence Energy Art came to Teacher Square again. Yet, Zhou Wen hadn't completely recovered from his injuries. Why are you still here? Are you really fine? The woman asked Zhou Wen in surprise. Typically, even if someone was expelled, they wouldn't be too heavily injured. It's fine, it's fine. I just like the scenery here. I want to take a break here, Zhou Wen said with a smile. The average person's injuries wouldn't be that serious. But not only did Zhou Wen use the Tao Sutra, but he had also used God's retreat, hoping to nullify the taboo power of Teacher Square. That was why he was so heavily injured. Seeing that Zhou Wen's expression was much better than yesterday, the woman didn't say anything else. Like the others, she got onto Teacher Square and sat down. Soon, Zhou Wen heard the familiar recital. Those people basically came to Teacher Square to read every day. Zhou Wen chatted with the woman a few times and knew that everyone called her Sister Gui. According to Sister Gui, Reading on Teacher Square accelerated one's cultivation efficiency of Confucian Essence Energy Arts. However, there were very few people cultivating the Confucian Essence Energy Arts now. Therefore, the people who came to Teacher Square for the daily recital were basically acquaintances. They had known each other long ago. After a few days, Zhou Wen finally recovered from his injuries. However, his injuries were secondary. The primary reason was that it took until now for the Jade Infant to recover from its injuries. After recovering, 
The Jade Infant gave Joe one a strange feeling as though it was about to break through. Could it be that being injured helped the Jade Infant break through? Joe Wen had a thought. Chapter 720 Comfort Only When Thrown Out Joe Wen decided to give it another try. God's retreat had already reached its peak. It couldn't continue improving even in Netherworld City. If the power of Teacher Square could really allow God's retreat to advance to a perfect body, it would be Zhou Wen's first perfect body life soul. When it was the recital session at Teacher Square, Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and walked towards it. When Sister Gui saw that Zhou Wen had mostly recovered from his injuries, she said with a smile, This time, make sure not to circulate a Taoist essence energy art when you step into Teacher Square. Zhou Wen didn't know what to say. The others laughed. After recuperating here for a few days, they had basically recognized Zhou Wen and knew about his embarrassing use of a Taoist essence energy art on Teacher Square. Just as she was about to say something, the recital session began. A mysterious force enveloped Teacher Square. Everyone suddenly sat down and began to recite an article in all seriousness, one that they didn't understand. Zhou Wen was one of them, but just as he started reciting, he switched his essence energy art to Tao Sutra. Boom! As though he was struck in the soul, Zhou Wen felt his soul tremble as his body involuntarily flew out. He slammed onto the stone steps and rolled a distance before he managed to control his body. His injuries were worse than before, but Zhou Wen was pleased to discover that the Jade Infant's injuries were much lighter than the previous time. After the previous injury, his resistance seemed to have improved significantly. Could it be that this method really works? Zhou Wen was pleasantly surprised. An hour later, Sister Gui and company came down from Teacher Square and passed by Zhou Wen, who was recuperating. Sister Gui said in a speechless manner, Little Zhou, didn't I tell you that you can't use Daoist Essence Energy Arts on Teacher Square? Why didn't you listen to me? I won't harm you. Zhou Wen hurriedly said, Sister Gui, I know that I can't use Daoist Essence Energy Arts on Teacher Square, but I have a bad temper. The more I'm not allowed to do it, the more I have to do it. Child. Sister Gui was instantly rendered speechless. Sister Gui, don't bother about him. There's something wrong with this kid's brain. That's right. Who cares what he's doing? He's just looking for trouble. I think it's because life in the Federation is too good that there are so many young people out there looking for trouble. Young people have never endured suffering. It's understandable why they want to seek out excitement. I was the same when I was young. My mom said that girls will have children when they sleep with men. I didn't listen to her, and I ended up giving birth. From then on, there was an additional young man, with an antelope and chick on Mount Confucius's teacher square. In the beginning, he was sent flying every two to three days. Later on, it became worse. He was sent flying daily during the recital session on Teacher Square because of his circulation of a Taoist essence energy art as though he would feel uncomfortable if he didn't get thrown out. Sister Gui tried persuading him at first, but Zhou Wen didn't listen. She got used to it over time. After the recital, a young girl left with Sister Gui. When they passed by Zhou Wen who was lying by the roadside, the girl looked at him and said to her, Sister Gui, do you think that little Zhou is silly? Why does he have to go against Teacher Square for no reason? Isn't he just looking for trouble? He really has nothing better to do. Sister Gui smiled and said, How is Little Zhou silly? He's such a good lad. I think he has his reasons for doing so. What reason could there be? I think he's just bored. The young girl paused before continuing. Why is there such a senseless person? If everyone was like Su Tong, the Federation's land wouldn't be constantly devoured by dimensional zones. As she spoke, the young girl couldn't help but look at the youth in front of her. The young man had an imposing appearance. He had sword-like eyebrows and bright eyes. He was indeed a very handsome young man. Su Tom was very famous at Five Dragons Mouth. He cultivated righteous energy and had advanced to the epic stage at the age of 27. In this region, no one was better than Su Tong. It was understandable that Su Tong could win the girl's admiration. Sister Gui said with a smile, Su Tong is not bad, but there are many outstanding girls around outstanding men. Why don't you consider little Joe? I think that young lad is pretty good. He looks quite handsome and is about the same age as you. No one is vying with you for him yet. TCH, I don't fancy such a senseless man. If I want to find a boyfriend, I have to find an outstanding man like Su Tong. The girl curled her lips and turned her head to look at Zhou when who was lying on the mountain path. No matter how she looked at him, he was far inferior to the dignified and refined Su Tong. Sister Gui said with a faint smile, it's understandable that little girls, like men like Su Tong. When you reach my age, you might feel that some special men might be more interesting. Perhaps. However, I won't find such a man interesting at any time. The girl didn't find Zhou Wen interesting when she saw him sleeping on the mountain path. His clothes were disheveled, 
and there was a chick skipping around him. He resembled a wandering performer. Days passed. Every time the jade infant was struck, Sho Wen would have the illusion that he was about to break through. Although this feeling was very real, no matter how realistic it was, it was still an illusion. He couldn't advance to a perfect body. Strange. I clearly feel that I can advance to a perfect body, so why haven't I advanced? What's the difference? Zhou Wen kept pondering over this question. After some thought, Zhou Wen thought of a possibility. Back then, Zero Taboo was a crystalline body. After the crystal exploded, the God's Retreat Jade Infant was born. Zhou Wen was wondering if it was possible that the Jade Infant needed to be destroyed before it could advance to a perfect body. This explained the reason why he felt that he was about to break through every time the Jade Infant was injured. However, as the Jade Infant's body healed, the feeling of a breakthrough vanished. After some thought, Zhou Wen realized that there was only one possibility. However, it was too risky to shatter the Jade Infant. If his guess was wrong and the Jade Infant was really destroyed, he would be doomed. He would have to condense the Life Soul again. Therefore, Zhou Wen was still hesitant about giving the Jade Infant a try. It was time for the recital session again. When Sister Gui and company arrived at Teacher Square, many people greeted Zhou Wen. As Zhou Wen had been here for more than two weeks, the people who often came to Teacher Square were already familiar with him. However, most people felt that Zhou Wen was a little silly and only wanted to joke with him. They didn't have any ill intentions. Sister Gui got Zhou Wen to head to Teacher Square with her as she asked. Little Zhou, are you still circulating the Taoist Essence Energy Art today? Yes. Zhou Wen nodded. Everyone waited on Teacher Square for the recital session to begin. Zhou Wen wasn't in the mood to chat, so Sister Gui and the girl beside her chatted. Chapter 721 Reconstitution After Collapsing When it was time for the recital, everyone involuntarily sat down and began reciting. Although everyone was conscious, they couldn't control their bodies or mouths. They could only move freely after the recital session ended. During this period of time, they could do nothing but recite. Zhou Wen was considering if he should use the power of Teacher Square to shatter the Jade Infant and reconstitute it when he suddenly saw a figure rushing across the mountain path at an astonishing speed. Upon closer inspection, it was actually a macaque. However, this macaque seemed to be a little different from ordinary macaque. The average macaque was only about 1.5 meters tall. Even a legendary macaque king maxed out at 1.9 meters. That would make it look majestic. However, this macaque was nearly 3 meters tall. It looked even more ferocious than a macaque. Its eyes were glowing red, and its fur appeared metallic black. It looked like a ferocious wrath from afar. Sister Gui and the others also noticed the blood-eyed black macaque. They were somewhat surprised, but no one was worried. Even if this blood-eyed black macaque was an epic dimensional creature, as long as it entered Teacher Square, it would be affected by Teacher Square's power. Like all humans, it would sit on the ground and recite ancient texts. Something similar had happened in the past. A macaque that accidentally entered Teacher Square ended up sitting down and reading like the humans. It wouldn't threaten the scholars here. However, the moment the blood-eyed black macaque entered Teacher Square, everyone's expression changed drastically, revealing shock. The blood-eyed black macaque actually didn't sit down to recite. Its eyes were glowing with blood-red light as it walked step by step towards the human sitting on Teacher Square. It exposed its fangs and looked like it was going to devour someone. The color drained from everyone's faces, but they couldn't move. All they could do was watch as the blood-eyed black macaque walked over as they recited. Everyone wore odd expressions. Their faces looked prim and proper as they swirled their heads while reciting. However, their eyes and voices were filled with fear. There was even the sound of sobbing in their voices. If they could move now, they would have run as far away as they could. It was especially so for the three people who were closest to the blood-eyed black macaque. Their expressions were as if they had been tied up and fed feces. It was as uncomfortable as it could be. The blood-eyed black macaque walked over step by step. From its heavy footsteps, Zhou Wen knew that it was still affected by the power of Teacher Square. However, it didn't suffer as significant an effect as them. Just as the blood-eyed black macaque was about to reach the crowd, a man suddenly stood up and shouted at the macaque. How can we allow you to taint the holy land of Teacher Square? Leave! Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. He never expected someone to be able to stand up while reciting. On careful look, he saw that it was Su Tong. At that moment, Su Tong's entire body was emitting a kind of aura. That aura was formless and intangible. It wasn't as resplendent as divine light, nor was it as grand as Buddhistic light. It was an indescribable aura. Everyone was overjoyed. They had thought that they were doomed for sure, but they didn't expect Su Tong to stand up to resist the blood-eyed black macaque. They felt that there was hope. Su Tong was already an epic expert, so he should be able to kill the blood-eyed black macaque. After all, 
No high-level dimensional creature had ever appeared near Mount Confucius. The blood-eyed black macaque didn't retreat because of Su Tong's berating and imposing manner. Instead, it became even more ferocious. A bloody light flashed in its eyes as its majestic body broke through the sound barrier. With a sonic boom, it threw a violent punch at Su Tong. Pervading heaven and earth is the aura of righteousness. A righteous heart empowers. Su Tong's words seemed to be augmented by a magical power. As he spoke, the righteous aura in his body became even stronger. It was as if his entire being was enveloped by the righteousness that pervaded the world. At the instant the blood-eyed black macaque rushed in front of him, Su Tong's palm also struck it with a terrifying force that was akin to the sea or dragon. What a powerful essence energy skill. Boom! Su Tong's palm collided with the blood-eyed black macaque's claw, producing a terrifying shockwave that sent the people beside him staggering. Meanwhile, Su Tong flew out like a runaway kite and slammed into the mountain rocks, causing him to vomit blood. After struggling a few times, he got up and sat there. As he vomited blood, he chanted ancient texts. Everyone felt a chill in their hearts. In their eyes, Su Tong was already an invincible existence, since he was able to forcefully resist the power of Teacher Square. However, such a powerful Su Tong was severely injured by the blood-eyed black macaque's attack. He even lost the ability to resist the mysterious power of Teacher Square. No matter how serious his injuries were, he had to sit there and recite. Everyone was horrified, but they could only sit there and recite. No words to describe their feelings any longer. The blood-eyed black macaque roared and extended its claws to grab a person in front of it. Its nails were as sharp as daggers. If one were to be swiped by them, five bloody holes would probably appear on their head. Joe and frowned slightly. He couldn't use any companion beasts on Teacher Square. Even his essence energy art and body were suppressed, preventing him from summoning any companion beasts. What are those two fellows doing outside? Why aren't they coming over to help? Joe Wen realized that the antelope and chick were standing on a distant mountain path. They were looking over, but they had no intention of coming over to help. It was as though they were watching a show. Joe Wen couldn't help but curse inwardly. I raised you all this while for nothing. To think you are there watching this with relish. Don't you know that people will die? It's fine if others die, but I'm here. Wouldn't I end up dying with them later? That's not right. They cultivate in Confucian essence energy arts, but I'm different. I can switch to the Tao Sutra and be sent out by the power of Teacher Square. With a thought, Zhou Wen didn't hesitate to switch to Tao Sutra. Zhou Wen originally wanted to think of a way to save them after he left, but he realized that Sister Gui and company were too close to the blood-eyed black macaque. It would probably be too late by the time he returned. Forget it. I was planning on trying to see if the Jade Infant can be reconstituted after collapsing anyway. I'll give it a try now. At the instant Zhou Wen switched to the Tao body, he unleashed the power of the Jade Infant. Boom! The terrifying power on Teacher Square struck Zhou, one like divine lightning from the Nine Heavens. The Jade Infant suffered an extremely terrifying taboo attack. Zhou Wen sat motionless on the ground, as he forcefully endured the terrifying taboo force. Taking advantage of the instant his body could move, he drew his saber and slashed at the blood-eyed black macaque. Everyone was already in despair. The people who were going to bear the brunt of the attack in the first wave had already closed their eyes in resignation. However, a blood-colored saber beam suddenly flashed. The blood-eyed black macaque's body was split into two as both pieces fell to the sides. Chapter 722 Heaven Opening Scripture of the Highest Elder As they watched the blood-eyed black macaque die, everyone felt as though they had escaped death. They were still in disbelief. Even Su Tong wasn't a match for the blood-eyed black macaque. Who had had it? Their heads couldn't move, but their eyeballs could. Everyone looked in the direction of the saber beam, and saw Zhou when sitting on the ground with a saber in hand. The blade had already returned to its scabbard. It's him. The girl sitting beside Sister Gui was taken aback. She couldn't believe that Zhou Wen was the one who had killed the blood-eyed black macaque. Zhou Wen had returned the saber to its scabbard, but he sat there motionless with his eyes closed. He wasn't sent flying by the power of Teacher Square, nor did he continue reciting. As Zhou Wen forcefully resisted the rules of Teacher Square, the Jade Infant suffered the brunt of the terrifying taboo power. It didn't last long before shattering. With the Jade Infant shattered, Zhou Wen originally imagined that he would be severely injured. At best, he would vomit blood, but the worst situation would be having his Tao Sutra crippled. However, that wasn't the case. After the Jade Infant shattered, the power that formed the Life Soul didn't dissipate. Instead, it reformed again and completed the restructuring in an instant. The reassembled Life Soul looked extremely strange. Its appearance was completely different from the Jade Infant's. It had turned into something extremely strange. Now, his life soul looked like a book, but he couldn't open it. There were no words on the cover. 
Zhou Wen couldn't sense any powerful force from the ancient book like Life Soul, but he knew that the Dao Sutra Life Soul had successfully advanced. This was because he was currently in Teacher Square. The Dao Sutra in his body was still circulating, but the taboo power in Teacher Sutra seemed to have vanished. It was completely useless against him. When he opened his eyes and looked around, he saw that Sister Gui and company were still reciting under the power of Teacher Square. Zhou Wen knew that he had really succeeded. With his life soul complete, Zhou Wen wasn't in the mood to continue listening to their recital. He got up and said to Sister Gui, Sister Gui, thank you for taking care of me these past few days. I'm leaving. Zhou Wen didn't really like farewells. Coincidentally, Sister Gui was still reciting, so she couldn't speak to him. Zhou Wen waved at her before turning around and walking out of Teacher Square. He quickly left Mount Confucius with the antelope and chick. When everyone saw that Zhou Wen could move freely on Teacher Square without being affected by its power, they were convinced that he was the person who had killed the blood-eyed black macaque. When the recital ended, everyone regained their freedom. I could tell long ago that little Zhou is extraordinary. I was right. Bullsh asterisk T. You always like to call him silly. What do you know? I was just joking with him. How can an ordinary person have such great perseverance? He's clearly not an ordinary person. I've long seen how different he is. I don't think he's even 20 years old. To have such a cultivation level, he probably comes from the families of the six heroes, right? I think it's very likely. Apart from the families of the six heroes, which family can nurture such a young talent? Sister Goy couldn't take it anymore. She rolled her eyes at them and said, Which of the six hero families have the surname Zhou? Apparently none. Everyone looked at each other, momentarily unable to guess Zhou Wen's origins. The girl looked in the direction Zhou Wen had left with mixed feelings. Zhou Wen left five dragons' mouth. His identity had definitely been exposed this time, so he didn't head to the other dimensional zones. The main reason was that he hadn't found the tiny palm symbol at five dragons' mouth. If he were to stay here to study it, it would probably take him more than a year to figure out the entire five dragons' mouth dimensional zone. When he arrived at an uninhabited spot, he summoned the great Mai Vidra bull. As Zhou Wen rode the bull, he checked the game's information. The Dao body's life soul was no longer God's retreat. It had changed again. Heaven opening scripture of the highest elder, perfect body before the chaos was separated, there was no heaven or earth, no yin or yang, no sun or moon, no crystal or light, no east or west, no south or north, no front or back, no source or sink. Infinite changes, grand and majestic, formless and intangible, natural and mysterious destitution to the limits, boundless and immeasurable, only the highest elder. Zhou Wen didn't understand what the introduction meant, but it sounded very impressive even though he didn't know what it was for. In the past, Zero Taboo and God's retreat could only exist in his consciousness and not be summoned. Now that it had transformed into the heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder, Zhou Wen's mind stirred. The life soul that resembled an ancient jade scripture appeared in front of him. Despite it clearly being named heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder, there wasn't a single word on it. Zhou Wen couldn't open it either. After studying it for a while, he realized that its use was only to resist taboo powers. He didn't discover any other effects. Zhou Wen tried in Netherworld City again, and realized that the taboo power in Netherworld City was useless against the heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder. Only now could Zhou Wen be said to be truly a person of zero taboos. The Jade Infant from God's Retreat couldn't last long in Netherworld City. Zhou Wen wasn't willing to be tortured, so he hadn't been able to reach the Netherworld Divine Throne in-game. Now that he had the heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder, none of the taboos were effective against Zhou Wen and the blood-colored avatar. Zhou Wen controlled the blood-colored avatar to walk along the stone path that didn't even reveal the numbers. However, when he stepped onto the stone slab, punishment ghosts would still appear. Zhou Wen casually killed them and quickly reached the netherworld divine throne. Yet, he didn't see City Lord Netherworld in game. After Zhou Wen sounded the golden bell, the golden divine throne automatically separated, revealing the door to leave. After leaving the door, the blood-colored avatar came out of the Netherworld City Dungeon. Is this all there is to the Netherworld City Dungeon? There isn't even a mythical boss? Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss. Thinking back to what City Lord Netherworld had said to him, Zhou Wen's heart stirred. Could it be that I really have to pay a visit to all the torture chambers, as City Lord Netherworld said, and endure all the punishments before I can see the real Netherworld City? What is the real Netherworld City? Zhou Wen was very interested in the secrets of Netherworld City, but he gave up when he thought of the punishments. When I have the chance in the future, I'll take Li Xian to Netherworld City in real life and let him suffer the punishments. Then, I'll know what the real Netherworld City is like. Zhou Wen placed his sights on Li Xian. After Zhou Wen left Five Dragons' mouth, his deeds spread around the area. Everyone nearby knew of this young man, 
but they didn't know his name. All they knew was that his surname was Sho. Even so, this matter was still detected by the Bureau. Chapter 723 The Antelope Leads the Way Minister Chiao, are you sure the person who appeared at Five Dragon's Mouth is Shou Wen? Shen Yuchi asked with a frown as he looked at the report delivered by Chiao Siyuan. I've confirmed his age and appearance. It matches Zhou Wen in many areas. Chiao Siyuan answered respectfully. It's normal for young people at this age to have similar looks. Shen Yuchi said. Director General, you're right. However, I still think that the young man who appeared at Five Dragons' Mouth is Zhou Wen. Chiao Siyuan said. What evidence do you have? Shen Yuchi asked. We're still investigating, but there's nothing new for the time being. However, my intuition tells me that it's Zhou Wen. Chiao Siyuan said with certainty. Shen Yuchi wasn't angered by Chiao Siyuan's seemingly irresponsible words. In fact, in their line of work, their intuition was sometimes very accurate. Intuition wasn't just a blind guess. It was a sharp sense of an event's systematic development that they had honed after experiencing countless incidents. If that young man is Zhou Wen, why do you think he went to Five Dragons' Mouth? What's his next destination? Shen Yuchi said after some thought. According to intelligence, someone has been seeing Zhou Wen in the vicinity of Woyang recently. However, I feel that this may be a ruse from the Yin family. Their goal is to cover Zhou Wen. According to this inference, Zhou Wen's goal isn't as simple as staying at Five Dragons' Mouth for a period of time. Chiao Si Yuan paused before continuing. I'm guessing that Zhou Wen won't be returning to Luoyang next. According to his current trajectory, he should be heading north. I think he might come to the Imperial Capital. There are so many cities in the north. Why do you think that he will definitely come to the Imperial Capital? Shin Yuchi frowned. I don't have any evidence yet, but it's best to make some preparations. Chiao Si Yuan said. That's right. However, Zhou Wen has already reached a certain level of attainment. Even without the family's protection, it won't be easy to touch him. Shin Yuchi said after some thought. Director General, why don't you discuss it with the Xiao family? Perhaps they are also interested in Zhou Wen. Chiao Si Yuan said. Shin Yuchi naturally understood what Chiao Si Yuan was referring to. He glanced at Chiao Si Yuan and said meaningfully, Then help me make a trip to the Xiao family and inform them of this matter. Yes, sir. Chiao Si Yuan received the order. After Chiao Si Yuan left, the woman Shin Yuchi called Button walked out. Shin Yuchi looked at the documents and said, What's your take? Chiao Si Yuan's attention on Zhou Wen seems to have exceeded the attention he places on Wang Ming Yuan's other disciples, said Button. Are you saying that he has ulterior motives for Zhou Wen? Shin Yuchi looked up at Button. I don't know. I've investigated him. Just as you said, Director General, this person is too simple. His life seems to revolve around nothing but work. He doesn't have any obvious personal hobbies, no wife, children, family, or friends. He doesn't even have a lover. He doesn't eat, drink, prostitute, or gamble. It's hard to imagine how he does it given his age and status, said Button. Perhaps he's a workaholic, Shin Yuchi said. Button's red lips curled up slightly as she continued. You can say that, but as a workaholic, he doesn't seem to be so focused on other parts of his work. Then why do you think Chiao Si Yuan mentioned the Xiao family? Shin Yuchi continued. There's no way to deduce it for the time being. However, from what I know, in the past few decades, there have been many young geniuses who died young, and all of them have something to do with the Xiao family. If the Xiao family learns of Zhou Wen's arrival in the Imperial Capital, perhaps there's really no need for you to think about it, Director General. Then let's take a wait and see approach for now. Shin Yuchi lowered his head and continued working. Zhou Wen traversed mountains and forests. Although the dimensional storms had brought a huge calamity to humanity, Earth was brimming with vitality. It was unlike the past where everywhere was filled with buildings made of concrete and steel. What are you doing? It's not over there. We're going this way. When they reached a fork in the road, Zhou Wen was supposed to take the left fork, but the antelope actually walked to the right. The antelope ignored him and bid Zhou Wen's sleeve as it walked to the right, forcing him to follow. What's here? Why do you have to walk this way? Zhou Wen found it odd. Although the antelope had been very willful and aloof in the past, it had never interfered with Zhou Wen's actions. This time, the antelope had taken the initiative to alter his path. This left Zhou Wen somewhat puzzled. The antelope didn't answer as it walked ahead, as though it hadn't heard Zhou Wen. If Zhou Wen stopped and didn't leave, it would come over to pull him back. Zhou Wen studied the map. The right fork was originally a road, but because there were too many dimensional zones there, as well as the appearance of many breakout creatures, it was abandoned due to the danger. Zhou Wen felt that there was definitely something going on, and he was somewhat intrigued. He wanted to know what the antelope was up to, so he followed it. However, Zhou Wen summoned Six Wing to prevent any accidents. He hadn't managed to successfully create a substitute talisman yet. 
He had drawn quite a number of them whenever he was free, but unfortunately, he hadn't succeeded. The success rate of producing a substitute talisman was just too low. Due to the encroachment of the plants on both sides of the originally spacious road, many branches and roots were strewn across the road. Green vines crawled everywhere. The trees on both sides of the road were extremely tall. The tree crowns were squeezed together, blocking out the sunlight. Jowen felt that walking on the road was no different from walking in a forest. As he walked, Jowen suddenly felt that something was amiss. There were trees everywhere, but there wasn't a single bird or insect in the huge forest. The entire forest was terrifyingly quiet. Jowen had already expanded Truth Listener's range to its limits, but he still didn't discover any animals. There wasn't even an ant. How can this be? Jowen couldn't help but frown as he secretly became wary. The antelope remained oblivious as it continued walking ahead. The chick stood on Joe Wynn's shoulder and looked around curiously. Where are you going? Joe Wynn asked the antelope in front of him. The antelope didn't know how to speak at all. Even if it could speak, it had no intention of answering Joe Wynn. Just as Joe Wynn was hesitating about following it down, it suddenly left the road and burrowed into the grass beside it. It was a dense grass patch and many vines coiled together. After the antelope entered, it immediately vanished. Thankfully, Joe Wynn had truth listener and could see the situation in the grass. After the antelope burrowed into the grass, it continued walking in. Soon, it arrived at an empty spot. The empty spot was rather strange. There were dense plants all around, but there was not a single blade of grass growing in that small area. It was as if a strong weak killer had been used. Chapter 7 24 100% Head Turner 1. The antelope walked to the clearing and began digging with its hooves. Could there be some treasure buried there? Joan was curious as he burrowed into the grass and quickly arrived beside the clearing. The antelope dug very quickly. By the time Joe Wynn arrived, it had already dug more than a meter deep. The soil dugout was piled up beside it. When Joe Wynn saw the soil, he immediately knew why there weren't any plants growing here. The antelope wasn't digging out soil, but grayish black ash. It looked like it was mixed with some form of metallic powder. He looked into the pit and saw that there was indeed metallic powder underneath. Oh, well, Auntie, what are you digging? Joe Wynn asked curiously. The antelope ignored him and continued digging. Joe Wynn thought to himself, this antelope usually acts like a big shot. It sees everything beneath it and is the laziest. It's like a lord that enjoys life and doesn't do anything. Now that it's digging a hole by itself, there must be something good down there. With this in mind, Joe Wynn said with a smile, Oh well, Annie, it's not convenient for you to dig with your hooves. Why don't I help you dig? If there's anything good down there, why don't you share half with me? The antelope glanced at him, and after some thought, it raised its front hooves and gestured at Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen was puzzled as he thought to himself, You only have a hoof. There aren't any fingers. What does your gesturing mean? Seeing that he didn't understand, the antelope wrote, 20% on the ground. Only then did Zhou Wen understand what the antelope meant by its hoof gesture. There was a groove in front of its hooves, making it look like AV. It could also represent two. 20% is too little. How about 4060? The antelope ignored him and continued digging. So be it. 20%. I'll help you dig. Joe Wynn felt that he had nothing better to do. He could help dig and save time. Furthermore, he could split the benefits. Why not? The antelope jumped out of the hole and pointed down, indicating for him to dig. Why would Joe Wynn dig it himself? He summoned Tyrant Behemoth. The two horns on Tyrant Behemoth's head were like spinning electric drills as it dug at a fast speed. What surprised Joe Wynn was that the metallic powder below was indeed extraordinary. Despite Tyrant Behemoth's immense strength, it failed to easily penetrate the metallic powder. After drilling for a while, it had dug a hole more than 10 meters deep. The metallic powder it dug out turned darker and darker like coal. Furthermore, the metallic powder had a smell. It wasn't pungent, but it resembled the smell of ink on a newspaper. Oh well, Auntie, what's down there? How deep do we have to dig? Wen knew that the antelope was very intelligent and could definitely answer him. It depended on its willingness to speak. The antelope extended its hoof and drew two words on the ground. Eight meters. There are still eight meters to go? It looks like this digging will go on for a little while longer. Joe Wynn did some calculations. The metallic powder was getting harder to dig the deeper it went. He estimated that it would have to dig for another 40 to 50 minutes. After some thought, he decided to take out his phone to grind dungeons for a while. He would wait until Tyrant Behemoth dug out the item. After grinding dungeons for a while, he didn't get anything good. The antelope suddenly nudged him with its hooves. Joe knew that something had been dug out. He walked to the side of the deep pit and looked down. He saw that Tyrant Behemoth had dug a 20 to 30 meter deep pit. However, Tyrant Behemoth's body was too huge. 
It nearly blocked the entire mouth of the pit. Zhou had no choice but to let it out before looking down. This time, he saw something in the deep pit. It looked like a wooden stake with a diameter of about 50 to 60 centimeters. It was completely black, but there were tree lines on the surface. It was probably wood. The antelope pointed at the log and nudged Zhou Wen. Clearly, it wanted Zhou Wen to bring the log up. Although the log looked huge, Zhou Wen had plenty of strength too. Even if it weighed several tons, it wouldn't be a problem for him. However, Zhou Wen didn't wish to take the risk. He got Tyrant Behemoth to go down and pull out the wooden stake. Tyrant Behemoth hugged the wooden stake with its claws and pulled with all its might. The wooden stake wasn't pulled straight out. It only moved a little and rose by 10 to 20 centimeters. Tyrant Behemoth pulled it out bit by bit, revealing more and more of the wooden stake. When the wooden stake was completely out, it was about 3 meters long. Tyrant Behemoth placed the wooden stake on the ground. Zhou Wen carefully sized it up and realized that it was indeed a log. It was likely a segment of a certain tree, and the bark was rather pristine. Zhou Wen didn't know what kind of log it was. The bark and tree core were black, about the blackness of charcoal, but it wasn't dirty at all when touched. It was a little cold. Oh well, Auntie, is this the treasure? Zhou Wen asked the antelope. The antelope nodded and circled the log a few times, as though it was examining something. What's the use of this log? Zhou Wen didn't discover anything special about it. Apart from being a little black and heavy, it didn't seem to be anything special. The antelope pointed at the log and then at Zhou Wen's shoulder, indicating for him to carry it. If you don't have a place to put it, I'll help you store it. Ask me when you need it. Zhou Wen hurriedly said. The antelope glanced at Zhou Wen, making him feel a little uncertain. However, he never expected the antelope to nod in agreement. Zhou Wen was overjoyed as he reached out to lift the log. He realized that it wasn't as heavy as he imagined. He could still lift it. Zhou Wen originally imagined that he wouldn't be able to lift it since Tyrant Behemoth had exerted so much strength to pull it out. After opening the chaos space, Zhou Wen placed the large log piece inside. Oh well, Auntie, what's the use of that log? Tell me. Zhou Wen wanted to obtain some information from the antelope. Otherwise, it would be useless even if the entire log was his. The antelope ignored him and crawled out of the grass before returning along the path. Clearly, it was here to dig up the log and didn't plan on disturbing Zhou Wen's advance. After returning to the fork, Zhou Wen took the correct path and continued heading for Imperial Capital. After walking for a while, Zhou Wen suddenly felt something amiss. He felt uncomfortable, but he couldn't tell what was wrong. Am I reading too much into it? Zhou Wen carefully checked his surroundings with Truth Listener, but he didn't discover any problems. After a long journey, he entered a city. That's when Zhou Wen realized that something was amiss. This was because the people walking towards him, be they men or women, were looking at him with strange eyes. Some women were even giggling at his face. What's going on? Zhou Wen was puzzled. Although he felt that he was good looking, his handsomeness wasn't to the point of being loved by everyone. To be such a head turner, with a 100% rate creeped him out a little. Chapter 725 Riding a Bull and Carrying Wood Zhou Wen hurriedly found an empty spot and took out a mirror from his chaos space to take a look at his face. Zhou Wen was immediately stunned. There was a pitch black word. Slave! On his originally smooth forehead. It looked as if it had been written in ink and was written beautifully. Oh, well, Andy, what's going on? Are you up to no good? Zhou Wen hurriedly rubbed it with his hand, but no matter how he rubbed it, the word slave seemed to be embedded into his flesh. Despite abrading his skin, the word slave was still clearly visible. The antelope wore an innocent expression like a human. Then, it wrote a line on the ground with its hooves. I told you to carry it, but you didn't. You can't blame me. You mean that piece of wood? Zhou Wen was slightly taken aback. The antelope nodded with a faint smile as it looked at the word, slave, on Zhou Wen's head with an admiring gaze. Zhou Wen hurriedly took out the wooden log from the chaos space and placed it on the ground. He asked the antelope in an extremely distrustful tone. Tell me honestly, what is this? The antelope looked at Zhou Wen with an innocent look as though it was saying, I'm just an antelope. I can't speak. Zhou Wen had no choice but to grit his teeth and ask, Will the word on my forehead disappear if I carry it? The antelope quickly nodded, as though it was waiting for Zhou Wen to say that. Zhou Wen had tried all sorts of methods to remove the mark on his forehead to no avail. All he could do was give it a try. He raised one end of the log with both hands and lifted it with his shoulder. The log was really heavy. Even with Zhou Wen's strength, he found it difficult to lift it up. However, when Zhou Wen looked into the mirror, he realized that the slave word on his forehead had really vanished. Zhou Wen placed the log on the ground and the word slave appeared again. When he lifted it up, it vanished. Oh well, Auntie, what the hell is this? Are you expecting me to carry it all the time? 
Zhou Wen felt like killing the antelope, but he was no match against it. Antelope didn't give excuses. It drew another line of words on the ground with its hooves. Go to the Imperial Capital and terminate the contract. You mean that as long as we get it to the Imperial Capital, we can terminate this contract? Zhou Wen asked. Seeing the antelope nod, Zhou Wen asked. Then can I put it away and take it to the Imperial Capital? Zhou Wen planned on wearing a hat to cover the word, slave, on his forehead. The log was just too heavy. He could forget about doing anything while carrying it. If you aren't afraid of death, sure. The antelope wrote a few succinct words. Zhou Wen immediately felt his balls ache as he thought to himself, if I had known this would happen, I wouldn't have shot my mouth and tried to share the benefits with the antelope. Suddenly, Zhou Wen realized that something was amiss. With the antelope's usual lazy personality, it wouldn't have dug itself. It would definitely have gotten Zhou Wen to help it. However, it had started the digging itself, and at an extremely slow pace. Zhou Wen realized from recalling the sequence of events that the antelope was clearly trying to entice him into offering his help. What kind of society is this? Even an antelope will lie? Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed. It was too late to say anything now. If he were to question the antelope now, not only would it not help matters, but he would also be making a fool of himself. Isn't it just carrying a log to the imperial capital? What's the big deal? I, Zhou Wen, have nothing else but strength. Zhou Wen said as he lifted the piece of wood. How freaking heavy. Zhou Wen took a few steps and felt his body break out in sweat. The log was about 3 meters long and was about 50 to 60 centimeters in diameter. Its density and weight were about the same as steel. Zhou Wen found it taxing. After walking half a street, Zhou Wen felt that he couldn't let things continue. He would probably die of exhaustion on the way before he reached the imperial capital. After some thought, Zhou Wen summoned the great might to draw bull. He carried the wooden log and got the bull to carry him. This way, he could save some strength. This isn't against the rules, right? Zhou Wen looked at the antelope. The antelope nodded and didn't object. Zhou Wen heaved a sigh of relief and ordered the great might to draw bull to continue traveling. He was in no mood to carry such a piece of wood. All he wanted to do now was rush to the imperial capital and get rid of the slave word on his forehead. Is that person a fool? He's riding a bull and carrying a piece of wood? Doesn't he know that he can place the piece of wood on the bull's back? You don't understand. He's just showing off. In what sense? He's showing off his great strength that he's able to carry such a huge log. He's showing off his ferocious mount that's capable of lifting him and the log together. Ha ha, that makes sense, but no matter how I look at it, I find him a little foolish. Wherever Zhou Wen passed, people wagged their tongues at him as though they were looking at a fool. The number of heads turning became even higher than before. Zhou Wen ignored them and urged the great Mai Bidra Bull to speed up. He hoped to leave the city as soon as possible. Once he entered the wilderness, there wouldn't be so many people gawking at him. Interesting. On the second floor of a cafe, three men were sitting by the window and drinking coffee. One of the men saw Zhou Wen riding the great Mai Bidra Bull. The other two men looked towards the street and immediately discovered Zhou Wen. One of the men's eyes suddenly lit up as he said to the other two men, Dugugu Zhang Chuenqiu, why don't we use that person as a bet and decide the ownership of that thing? Tell me about it. Dugugu said expressionlessly. Zhang Chuenqiu also smiled and nodded. As long as it's fair, I have no objections. It's definitely fair. Let's guess when that person will put down the log on his shoulder. Whoever guesses the closest time will get the thing. What do you think? Xiao Luchuan said. Sure. Dugugu said directly. I have no objections, said John Chuenqiu. Eh, you guys actually didn't suspect that I arranged this person? Could it be that you guys know him? Xiao Luchuan asked, a little surprised. Wang Mingyuan's disciple, adopted son of Madame Lan of the Yin family. It's quite difficult to not know him these days, John Chuenqiu said. So he's Zhou Wen. Xiao Luchuan thought for a moment before smiling again. That's good. None of us will be at a disadvantage by using a third party as a bet. It'll be fair and square. No one will complain even if they lose. After a pause, Xiao Luchuan continued. If it were an ordinary person, after hearing so much from wagging tongues, he would probably put down the log very quickly. Since he's not an ordinary person, it depends on when he plans to put down the log to rest. I guess it won't take long. It should be around 7 in the evening. What do you think? Chapter 726 Sister Return Lightning Pool With the bull's gate, it should arrive at the nearest city around 7 or 8 in the evening. If Zhou Wen doesn't wish to sleep in the wilderness, the chances of him spending the night there is very high. It makes sense to guess seven, Zhang Chuenqiu said with a smile. I can't compare to Brother Zhang's clairvoyance. It's just a random guess, Xiao Luchuan said with a smile. Then I'll make a random guess too. 701. 
Zhang Chunqiu said in all seriousness. Since you are guessing 701, then I'll guess 659, Dugugu added. Hey hey, aren't you guys going overboard? Xiao Luchuan said unhappily. Zhang Chunqiu replied with a smile. Actually, it's too easy to guess the time. Why don't we change what we are betting on? What else can we guess other than time? Xiao Luchuan couldn't think of anything else. Let's guess which city he's taking that piece of wood to. What do you think? Zhang Chunqiu said. All right, let's bet on that. I'll let you guys guess first this time. Xiao Luchuan said. There's no need. Let's write it on paper and open them together. Zhang Chunqiu handed paper and pen to Xiao Luchuan and Dugugu. The three of them gave their answers and opened them together. After looking at each other's answers, the three of them looked at each other in dismay. Among the three of them, two of them wrote the imperial capital, while Xiao Luchuan wrote the capital. However, the imperial capital and the capital were basically the same. It was just that the locals of the imperial capital were more used to calling it the capital. It looks like we can't bet on this either. Xiao Luchuan smiled. Why don't we make it simpler? We'll bet on whether he can reach the imperial capital alive. Dugugu said. There are only two answers, yes or no. How are the three of us going to bet? Xiao Luchuan said. That's simple. Reaching the imperial capital alive, reaching the imperial capital after he's dead, and not being able to reach the imperial capital. Isn't that three options? The time limit is a month. What do you think? Dugugu said. That makes sense. Who will choose first? Xiao Luchuan looked at Dugugu. Since I was the one who suggested the rules, I'll make the final choice. Dugugu said. Zhang Chunqiu wore a heavy expression as he did some calculations. After a while he said, If no one wants to snatch the option from me, I'll choose the option that he reaches the imperial capital after he's dead. I won't buy with you for that choice. I'll choose the option that he reaches the capital alive. Xiao Luchuan said. Then the remaining choice is mine. I guess he won't be able to reach the imperial capital. Dugugu said. In that case, let's travel together and follow him. Let's see the outcome. Zhang Chunqiu suggested. Fine with me. Dugugu stood up. The three of them left the cafe and chased after Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen carried the wooden log and left the city. Although he was riding the great might to draw bull, he still needed to expend a lot of stamina to carry the wooden log. When he left the city, Zhou Wen's forehead was already beating with sweat, and his clothes were drenched. Helpless, Zhou Wen could only switch to the ancient sovereign sutra and fuse with the defy ancient sovereign life soul. With the augmentation of the powerful life force, he could continue while carrying the log. The great Mike the draw bull wasn't having an easy time either. It slowed down significantly, and its speed was nothing like usual. It ran like an old bull dragging a cart. Not long after leaving the city and entering the mountains, the sky suddenly darkened. Dark clouds covered the sky as lightning bolts flashed like divine dragons. Occasionally, ferocious shadows would appear in the dark clouds. Is it going to rain? Zhou Wen couldn't help but frown when he heard the thunder. He stared at the thick, dark clouds. Dugugu, Zhang Chuanqiu, and Xiao Luchuan followed behind Zhou Wen from afar. They didn't chase too closely. With Zhang Chuanqiu, who was clairvoyant, there was no need to be afraid of losing him, nor did they need to get too close. At that moment, they also saw the dark clouds and lightning that filled the sky. However, they weren't as optimistic as Zhou Wen. Chuanqiu, what do you think? Xiao Luchuan stared at the dark clouds in the sky with a serious expression. Zhang Chuanqiu did a simple divination and said, An ominous omen. Don't try to fool me with those charlatan methods. I want to hear the truth. Xiao Luchuan interrupted Zhang Chuanqiu. To be honest, a breakout creature is about to appear. Furthermore, it doesn't look too weak. From the looks of it, you will be busy. Zhang Chuanqiu said with a smile. Among the three of them, only Xiao Luchuan needed Zhou Wen to reach the capital alive to win the bet. He naturally wouldn't let Zhou Wen die here. As long as he could win, Xiao Luchuan didn't mind helping Zhou Wen. As they spoke, Zhou Wen sped up hoping to reach the city earlier. Unfortunately, the log was too heavy. Even if the great might Vidra bull ran with all its might, it couldn't run fast. Zhang Chuanqiu pinched his fingers, divining as he walked. He looked around and suddenly, his expression changed as he shouted. That's not right. What's wrong? Xiao Luchuan asked curiously. Before Zhang Chuanqiu could answer, he heard an explosion in the sky. A bolt of lightning descended from the sky and struck a nearby forest. Strangely, when the lightning struck the forest, there were visible electric arcs. The forest that was enveloped by the lightning only flashed with lightning, but there was no fire. And this was only the beginning. Large swaths of lightning kept striking the forest, covering all the plants with a layer of lightning. However, the plants didn't die. Instead, they became more spirited. Thunder trigram above, 
Lake Trigram below. Its sister returned lightning pool. It looks like things aren't looking good, Zhang Chuanqiu said, as he did the calculations. After spending some time with Zhang Chuanqiu, Xiao Luchuan had a basic understanding of divination. Upon hearing that, he said, I don't think it's a dangerous divination, right? I remember hearing you say that sister return lightning pool means that in order to obtain greater benefits, one needs to pay a certain price in exchange. It's just like marrying off one's sister. Although what you said isn't entirely correct, it's not too far off. However, before Zhang Chuanqiu could finish his sentence, he suddenly saw the plants that were covered in lightning seem to come alive. Their leaves and branches trembled as they shot out bolts of lightning. Instantly, the crisscrossing lightning enveloped Xiao Luchuan and company. This level of lightning naturally didn't affect them much. Xiao Luchuan shattered the lightning with a wave of his hand. Thunder boomed in the sky again. This time, the thunder was especially loud, causing the entire mountain range to tremble. And in the dark clouds in the sky, a ball of green lightning fell like a meteor. Boom! A large area of the forest was destroyed as a figure emitting lightning appeared in the ruins. Chapter 727 Hotel Xiao Luchuan looked over and saw that it was a tiger with wings on its back. Azure lightning danced on its body, as though every cell was flashing with lightning. The tiger immediately saw Xiao Luchuan and the other two. It flapped its wings and instantly transformed into lightning. Not good! Xiao Luchuan's expression changed as he summoned an ancient sword. The ancient sword split into two at every turn until there were eight. It transformed into a sword formation that resembled a metallic wall of copper and iron that defended Xiao Luchuan. Dugugu rapidly retreated like a ghost. He was unbelievably fast. Zhou Wen's all-out use of transcendent flying immortal was not much better. Zhang Chuanqiu flicked his sleeve and talismans appeared in front of him, turning into a talisman formation that protected his body. At that instant, an azure bolt of lightning tore through the sky and transformed into a lightning net. Instantly, it enveloped the sword formation and the talisman formation. No matter how fast Dugu Ji's movement technique was, he wasn't as fast as the lightning. He was also enveloped. Rumble. The sword formation shattered, and the talismans were burned. The might of the lightning was like heavenly punishment that could destroy everything. Ah! The three of them cried out tragically as their bodies convulsed from the lightning. Their hair was smoking. Zhou Wen, who was riding with the wooden log on his shoulder, looked in the direction behind him in puzzlement. He saw lightning striking in the distant mountain, producing incessant rumbling sounds. He couldn't help but mutter to himself. Why is this lightning so terrifying? Could it be that the lightning and rain have mutated? From the looks of it, I should rush to the city ahead and find a place to stay. Zhou would urge the great might to draw bull, hoping that it could run faster. However, the big guy was panting in exhaustion. It had no way of running any faster. Zhou Wen was somewhat worried. The dimensionalization was still limited to Earth itself and didn't involve the satellites outside. Therefore, the Federation could still guarantee basic communication with artificial satellites. If the artificial satellites were affected in the future, the means of communication would be even weaker. Thunder rumbled in the distance as bolts of lightning descended from the sky. The sound of thunder was terrifying. Thankfully, Zhou Wen wasn't struck by lightning. He rushed all the way and finally arrived at a nearby city at 6 p.m. The lightning in the mountains rumbled, but it wasn't that terrifying in the city. It was just a little cloudy. There was a drizzle that didn't feel cold. It felt refreshing when the rain landed on his skin. This city was relatively small. After the dimensional storms, it had suffered a serious loss of population. Now, very few shops opened on both sides of the streets. There were very few pedestrians. Most of them had probably moved to a large city. This was a good thing for Zhou Wen. At the very least, there weren't many onlookers wagging their tongues at him as he rode on a bull and carried a log. Occasionally, pedestrians would pass by and look at him in surprise. Not long after Zhou Wen entered the city, he saw a small hotel. The door of the hotel was open, but there was no one inside. The tables and couches were in a mess, and there was quite a bit of dust on them. From the looks of it, the owner had already left. Zhou Wen went in and found a room. He realized that there was a bed with a blanket in there, so he chose to stay. In any case, he only needed to rest for a while before continuing on his journey. He didn't have too high a requirement for a place to stay. All he needed to do was shield himself from the elements. Shortly after Zhou Wen entered the hotel, it began pouring heavily outside. The rain seemed to be water from an overturned basin. In just a short period of time, rainwater began to pool on the roads. The sewers were unable to keep up with the quantity of rainwater. From the looks of it, I can only continue on my journey after the rain stops. Just as Zhou Wen was about to put down the log on his shoulder, the antelope suddenly tugged at him, indicating for him to look at the ground. Zhou Wen looked down 
and saw a few words on the ground. It was obvious that the antelope had written them with its hooves. Body must remain inseparable from the log. Separation means certain death. What do you want? This place is still far from the imperial capital. I can't keep carrying it, right? Zhou Wen said gloomily. Can't you read? Do you not know what it means for your body to remain inseparable from the log? The antelope gave Zhou Wen a disdainful look before writing a line on the ground. So that's how it is. Is it fine as long as my body doesn't leave the log? Zhou Wen placed the log on the ground and sat on it. With his body greatly innervated, Zhou Wen could finally heave a sigh of relief. This piece of wood was heavy. Even after using the power of the Defy Ancient Sovereign Life Soul, he still felt that his body couldn't take it. Since he couldn't leave the log, he didn't even need to sleep on the bed. Zhou Wen pulled a blanket over himself and slept on the log. The antelope slept comfortably on the bed. So did the chick. It even covered itself with a blanket by pecking a rug over. With the heavy rain outside, Zhou Wen didn't dare rashly set off. He planned on leaving after the rain stopped. That's not how you kick a ball. Zhou Wen was sleeping soundly when a voice suddenly sounded. It nearly made him jump up in fright. Thankfully, Zhou Wen still remembered the words that the body must remain inseparable from the log. He forcefully stopped himself from leaping off the log. When he opened his eyes and took a closer look, he realized that the television in the room had turned on and it was playing an old movie. I was nearly scared to death. How did this crappy television switch on by itself? Zhou Wen turned his head and saw that the chick had woken up at some point in time. It was fiddling with a remote control with its claws. I'm sleeping. Stop fooling around. Zhou Wen reached out and sucked the remote control over. Then, he used the remote control to turn off the television. Seeing that it was still early and that the rain was still pouring outside, Zhou Wen laid down and continued sleeping. He had just fallen asleep when he was suddenly woken up by a sound. This move is clearly called an old man pushing a cart. Don't write me off as ignorant. Zhou Wen was woken up again and saw the television turn on again. It was playing the old movie. Little Fei Fei, stop fooling around, all right. Let me rest for a while. I'm really tired. Zhou Wen was just about to take the chick's remote when he realized that the chick wasn't holding the remote at all. The remote was still beside him. The chick crawled out of the blanket and looked at him blankly. What's going on? Did I touch the remote control myself? That's not right. That's not right. This hotel has been abandoned for some time. There's no electricity. How can the television be switched on? Zhou Wen finally snapped out of his daze and sat up to carefully watch the television. At this glance, Zhou Wen couldn't help but change his expression. This was because the television's power cable was hanging down. It wasn't plugged in at all. Even if there was electricity in the hotel, it was impossible for the television to be switched on. Watch and see. The old movie on the television was still playing. Zhou Wen frowned as he stared at the television and used Truth Listener to inspect it. Chapter 728 Concerned Person Truth Listener's ability allowed Zhou Wen to hear the internal structure of the television. However, Zhou Wen didn't know much about circuit boards, nor did he notice anything amiss. He didn't discover any companion beasts or dimensional creatures inside, but he realized that there was an electric current flowing inside. It's impossible for there to be no problems. Zhou Wen checked several times, but he failed to find anything wrong. He tried turning the television off with the remote control, and it was switched off again. It looked no different from a normal television. What the hell? Could it be that the electric current produced by the thunderstorm has run into the television, giving it electricity? Zhou Wen studied it for a long time, but he still couldn't figure out why there was electricity in the television. However, even he couldn't come to terms with his guess. I want to see what's messing around. Zhou Wen used Truth Listener to monitor the entire hotel and the nearby area. Nothing could escape his ears even in the heavy rain. Zhou Wen sat on the log and stared at the television. Boom! After a while, thunder sounded in the sky again. It felt like the lightning was very close, as though it had exploded outside the building. Suddenly, the television lit up and the movie started playing. Cut the crap! Take off! Ah, take off your clothes! Hey, what are you doing? Are you trying to kill me? You're really amazing! I don't even mind you beating me to death! Zhou Wen kept staring at the television, while Truth Listener kept monitoring all its components. However, for some reason, there was suddenly electricity in the television. There were no suspicious signs inside or outside the inn. There was no one, nor were there any dimensional creatures. Strange. Could it be that the lighting outside has entered the television? Zhou Wen felt that this matter was odd. Ignoring the fact that the lighting couldn't be transmitted in, even if it could, it would only damage the components. It was impossible for the television to work normally. This time, Zhou Wen didn't switch off the television. He sat there watching. The television had plenty of power. 
It continued playing even after quite some time. Who can be more miserable than me? A person on the television tragically cried out at the sky before collapsing to the ground. Zhou Wen couldn't help but laugh when he saw this. Although he found it odd, this old movie was still quite funny. Even if there's really someone causing trouble, I might only end up falling for someone's scheme if I were to leave this place and enter the heavy rain. I'll just take a wait and see approach for now. Zhou Wen decided to turn off the television and sleep on the log. He kept Truth Listener's ability active the entire time. Zhou Wen would immediately know of any movement. He also switched his essence energy art to Tao Sutra. With the heaven opening scripture of the highest elder life soul, he could be somewhat safe. The television kept playing old movies, one after another, but other than that, nothing else happened. After sleeping deep into the night, Zhou Wen suddenly heard footsteps coming from the entrance of the hotel. He immediately woke up. With Truth Listener's ability, he immediately saw a strange person run in. The person's clothes were tattered, and his hair was charred black. He looked like he had just been struck by lightning. He finally can't hold back? Zhou Wen sat up and monitored the person's every move. After the person entered, he sniffed around before walking towards Zhou Wen's room. He's indeed coming for me, Zhou Wen thought. When the person arrived at the door, Zhou Wen was waiting for him. He wanted to see what tricks he had up his sleeve, but he never expected the person to knock on the door a few times. Who is it? Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised as he asked after some thought. The person outside said, Zhou Wen, I'm here to snitch. You have to be careful along the way. Someone wants you dead, and it's not just one. Who wants me dead? Zhou Wen asked. You should know the Duga family, and the Zhang family of the Federation Six families, right? The Duga family's Duga Gu, and the Zhang family's Zhang Chuanqiu both want your life. The person outside the door answered. I have no grudge with them. Why do they want me dead? Zhou Wen asked again. This time, the person outside didn't answer. Instead, he asked, You're going to the Imperial Capital, right? What has my whereabouts got to do with them wanting to kill me? Zhou Wen didn't quite believe the person in front of him. This person looked problematic. They don't want you to enter the Imperial Capital alive. The person outside said, Why? Zhou Wen frowned. Don't worry about the reason. Just be careful. The person prepared to leave. Who are you? Why are you telling me this? Zhou Wen hurriedly asked. Just call me concerned person. The person said firmly and turned to go downstairs. If it wasn't for the fact that his clothes were tattered and his hair was charred black, he would have looked rather cool. Zhou Wen found the name concerned person familiar. After being stunned for a while, he recalled that wasn't the name used frequently in primary school composition. Who is this person? Zhou Wen frowned. He naturally wouldn't completely believe this person's words, but from the looks of it, he really didn't have any ill intentions. Is he behind the television? Zhou Wen was somewhat unsure. The television was still playing, so Zhou Wen didn't think too much about it. He decided to sleep first and wait for the rain to stop. After all, he was determined to make this trip to the Imperial Capital. He would deal with whatever came his way. There was no use worrying. Not long after he fell asleep, Zhou Wen heard someone enter the hotel again. Tap. 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 After the person entered the hotel, he didn't even take a sniff before heading to the second floor and running towards Zhou Wen's room. His appearance was similar to the person from before. He was also wearing tattered clothes and his hair was charred black. However, it was obvious that he wasn't the same person. This person was taller. Could it be that the person in question is here? Just as Zhou Wen was thinking, the person had already arrived at the door. He had actually raised his hand to knock. Who is it? Zhou Wen asked patiently. Are you Zhou Wen? The person at the door asked. I'm Zhou Wen. Who are you? Zhou Wen asked. I'm just a nobody. If you're happy, call me nameless. I'm here to tell you that someone wants to harm you on your way to the Imperial Capital. You have to be careful. The person outside said. Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss as he asked calmly. Who wants to harm me? It's the Duga family's Duga Gu and the Zhang family's Zhang Chuanqiu. You have to be careful of them. The person outside said the exact same thing as the person who had just come. Who are you? Zhou Wen asked. There's no need for us to know each other. Let's meet again if fate allows for it. With that said, the person went downstairs. Chapter 729 Messy Information What the hell is up with these people? They were all struck by lightning, but they still came running to tell me to be careful of a sneak attack? In this day and age, has the human mind reached such a sublime level? Zhou Wen doubted such good things existed. The two of them shouldn't be from the same faction. Otherwise, they would only need to come once. There's no need for the two of them to run over. However, from the lightning wounds on their bodies, they seem to have experienced similar injuries. What's going on? Zhou Wen thought about it and couldn't figure it out. If it were anyone else, 
They definitely wouldn't be able to sleep after suffering such a disturbance. Thankfully, Zhou Wen wasn't someone who was afraid of trouble. He lay down before falling asleep again. After concerned person and nameless came, the thunderstorm became much smaller and gradually dissipated. When Zhou Wen woke up in the morning, the rain had already stopped. The television had also switched off by itself. Could it be that it's really because of the thunderstorm that the television was running on its own? Although Zhou Wen didn't believe it, there was no better explanation. The phone suddenly rang. Zhou Wen took out his phone and saw that it was in Sheng. Young Master One, are you in Wei Wei now? And Sheng asked directly. Yes, how did you know? Zhou Wen asked in puzzlement. The Bureau has already found your whereabouts. It might not be the best choice to make this trip. And Sheng said, I have to make a trip to the Imperial Capital. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Zhou Wen had no choice. If it was any other time, he would definitely have turned around and returned to Luoyang. At most, he wouldn't go to the Imperial Capital. But now that he had the log on him, if he didn't go to the Imperial Capital and couldn't separate from the log at all, how was he going to pass his days? What was worse was that being inseparable from the log was only when he was resting. If Zhou Wen wanted to move, he had to carry it. Who could stand that? Young Master One, if you insist on going, it's best you change your route and progress speed. I've revised the routes for you. And Sheng sent a document to Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen chatted with Sheng for a while before opening the document and Sheng had sent him. He wanted to know what to do next, but when he opened the document, his eyes widened. The content of the document wasn't a map at all, but a dynamic emoji. It was a picture of two tall and muscular men wearing only briefs. One of them had his arms around the other's neck, while the other was hugging his waist as they danced together. Zhou Wen was immediately dumbfounded as his expression turned odd. It should have been said wrongly. However, why would Sheng have such a picture? Could it be? Zhou Wen shivered and hurriedly shook his head to deny his thoughts. He sent a message to Sheng and asked, Ah Sheng, did you send the wrong document? Wasn't it a map of the roots? And Sheng quickly replied, No, it's an animated picture. Zhou Wen sent the picture along with the message. After a while, and Sheng sent another message. There's something wrong with the message. I didn't make a mistake, but the message you received isn't right. The reason isn't clear. It's no longer safe to use my route. I'll send you a few routes later. You shall choose the route yourself. Don't tell anyone, including me. All right. Zhou Wen nodded. And Sheng sent a simple sketch over. It was obvious that it was hand-drawn. It showed the routes from where he was to the imperial capital. He could choose one of them. As the communication line could be compromised, and Sheng didn't say much. He exhorted Zhou Wen to be careful before ending the call. Zhou Wen studied the map before choosing a path to continue his journey. In a cave on Chess Mountain, a seductive woman chained up was fiddling with some experimental equipment as though she was doing some research. The phone beside her rang. The woman glanced at the phone screen and realized that the message was from Zhou Wen. With a thought, an invisible force immediately controlled the phone to tap open the message. The phone automatically flew to the woman, allowing her to see the message. The woman frowned. Baby, I want you to be my slave tonight. Zhou Wen, you sure are gutsy. You want me to be your slave? I'll satisfy you immediately. The woman narrowed her eyes as a strange glint flashed in them. With a thought, the woman automatically sent a message to Zhou Wen. I'll fulfill your wish tonight. Zhou Wen was walking when he heard his phone ring. He took it out and saw that it was from the Darch. He immediately clicked it open and was momentarily at a loss. He sent a message over. What do you mean? Did you send the wrong message? Wrong message? Then who did you plan on sending your message to? The Darch quickly replied. How would I know who your message was meant for? Zhou Wen felt even more puzzled. The Darch didn't reply. Zhou Wen muttered to himself. Crazy. After putting away his phone, he continued his journey. Zhou Wen changed his previous route and took another detour. He didn't take the same old route. Although taking the original path might have an unexpected effect, the probability of Zhou when changing his route and not changing his route was 1 in 2. However, the chances of accurately determining which one of the new routes that Zhou Wen would take were much lower. Therefore, Zhou Wen decided to change his route. An hour after Zhou Wen set off, Xiao Luchuan and company set off from another hotel in Weihui and continued following Zhou Wen. They looked much better now. The day before, they had encountered the mysterious dimensional creature that nearly killed them. Although they had managed to escape in the end, they had suffered minor injuries. With Zhang Chuanqiu's deduction, they slowly followed behind. They weren't afraid of losing Zhou Wen. We were really unlucky yesterday to encounter such a terrifying dimensional creature. Thankfully, I'm smart enough and ran fast enough. Xiao Luchuan said gloomily. Zhang Chuanqiu pondered and said, I did some divinations when I came out today. 
What do they say? Xiao Luchuan asked. Today's divination is still sister return lightning pool. Zhang Chunqiu said. No way. Something similar will happen today. Xiao Luchuan frowned. I hope not. Logically speaking, this sister return lightning pool isn't a bad divination, but this matter seems a little odd. It's best to be careful, Zhang Chunqiu said. The trio left the city and followed Zhou Wen's path for less than two hours before feeling that something was amiss. In the wilderness, there seemed to be pairs of eyes peeping at them, but upon careful inspection, they didn't discover any dimensional creatures or humans. Don't tell me something is up again! Xiao Luchuan felt uneasy. Chapter 730 Loving You for 10,000 Years I'm afraid it's already happened! Zhang Chuanqiu said as he sized up the dark forest. Dugu Gu didn't say a word, but many tiny worms flew into the forest. Although the Gu worms weren't at the mythical stage, they had hidden techniques. Furthermore, they were small in size, making it difficult for ordinary creatures to discover them. However, after the Gu worms entered the forest, they simultaneously lost contact with Dugu Gu. No matter how Dugu Gu summoned them, he couldn't obtain their memories. This made Dugu Ji's expression turn ugly. Quick, let's go! As Dugu Gu spoke, he spread open a pair of insect wings, wanting to retreat along his original path. Xiao Luchuan also summoned his ancient sword to use sword kinesis flight. His straight line speed wasn't slower than Dugu Ji's. Zhang Chuanqiu wasn't slow either. He took out a talisman and was about to escape underground. However, just as the trio was halfway through their actions, they saw a pair of ghostly eyes open in the pitch black forest. The eyes stared at them, and they felt their minds blur. They were so tired that they couldn't even open their eyes. Bam! The three of them fell to the ground in a daze. No matter how they struggled, their eyelids slowly closed. As Zhou Wen walked in front, all he felt was that the surrounding forest was especially quiet. However, it was different from the path the antelope had taken him. Although this path was quiet, there were many animals. However, they seemed especially lazy and were still sleeping. Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss. He walked carefully, but he didn't encounter any problems along the way. By the time he arrived at the next city, the sky had already darkened. After a day of carrying the log, Zhou Wen felt exhausted. He found a hotel in the small city and settled down. This small city was similar to the previous city. Almost everyone had left. Zhou Wen randomly found an empty hotel, and no one asked him for money. That night, Zhou Wen slept very soundly. When he woke up, he stretched his back and was filled with energy. Nothing strange happened at night, unlike the hotel the night before. The television didn't automatically switch on. However, Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss. His chest seemed especially heavy. He looked down and immediately screamed. For some reason, the clothes in front of his chest were lifted up, as though there were two huge papayas stuffed inside. Zhou Wen hurriedly pulled open his clothes and immediately discovered two things that shouldn't have appeared on him. How did this happen? Zhou Wen realized that his voice had become extremely feminine. He hurriedly took out a mirror and looked at himself. He immediately realized that he had become a woman. Zhou Wen immediately thought of the message that the arch had sent him. He hurriedly took out his phone and sent the Tharch a message. The Tharch, did you turn me into a woman? Yes. The Tharch quickly replied and admitted it readily. Why? I haven't offended you recently, right? Zhou Wen held back his anger and asked. Don't you know why? The Tharch asked. I really don't know. Tell me clearly, what's the reason? Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss. From the Thiarka's tone, it seemed like he had provoked her first, but he hadn't contacted the Tharch recently. The Tharch hadn't contacted him either. Have you forgotten a message you sent so quickly? Do you still need me to remind you? The Darch replied. I really don't know what's going on. I'm begging you, all right? Tell me. What message did I send you? Zhou Wen increasingly felt that there was definitely something wrong. When the Darch heard Zhou Wen's words, she seemed to realize that something was amiss. With Zhou Wen's character being so afraid of death, how could he tempt fate by sending such a teasing message? The Darch thought for a moment before sending a screenshot of the message to Zhou Wen. Baby, I want you to be my slave tonight. Zhou Wen's head turned livid when he saw the screenshot. He originally wanted to say that it wasn't posted by himself, but looking at the chat history on the screenshot, it was indeed sent from his account. It's no wonder that the arch is so angry. So that's how it is. However, I've never sent such a message. If the arch wants to mess with me, there's no need to go through so much trouble to send me a fake message. Could it be that my account has been hacked? Did someone send a message to the arch using my account? Zhou Wen was suspicious. The Darch, I really didn't send that message. How could I send you that message? Someone must have hacked my account and sent you that message. Zhou Wen wanted to explain the matter clearly and get the Darch to quickly transform his body back. 
he really had no way of going out to meet anyone. What do you mean it's impossible for you to send me such a message? The Darch replied. You are a flower. How can I have any thoughts about a flower? The Darch, just believe me. Even if I were to tease a sow, I wouldn't dare tease you. Quickly change me back. Zhou Wen explained. It was fine if Zhou Wen didn't give his explanations. But his explanations only served to make the Darch even angrier. She replied coldly. Just wait. You will recover on your own. Then, the Darch didn't reply to any more of Zhou Wen's messages. Despite thinking hard, Zhou Wen couldn't figure out what had gone wrong. She was fine just moments ago, so why was she suddenly unhappy? Thankfully, recovery was still possible. It was probably similar to the last time he transformed into a cat. He would recover after some time. Zhou Wen didn't leave. He planned on staying in the hotel and waiting for his transformation to end. During this period of time, Zhou Wen restored his phone to its factory settings. Then, he redownloaded the apps and changed the password. He used all the available methods to prevent his account from being hacked again. Feng Qiuyan was practicing his saber techniques as usual. Suddenly, his phone rang. Feng Qiuyan usually didn't pick up his phone or read messages when he was practicing with his saber. However, when he heard that the message was a ringtone that he had specially set, he guessed that it was from Zhou Wen. Feng Qiuyan stopped practicing with his saber and picked up his phone to take a look. Indeed, the message was from Zhou Wen. Feng Qiuyan opened the message and his expression immediately turned odd. There was once a sincere love that was placed in front of me, but I didn't cherish it. I only regretted it when I lost it. This is the most painful thing in the world. If the heavens can give me another chance, I will say three words to you. I love you. If you must add a deadline to this love, I hope it will be 10,000 years. Feng Qiuyan stared blankly at the message as he looked extremely confused. How did this happen? Why would coach treat me? How can I reject coach without hurting his pride? Feng Qiuyan was conflicted. Chapter 731 Coach, you're a nice guy. Beep. Zhou Wen was grinding while sitting on the log when he suddenly heard his phone ring. He picked it up and realized that it was from Feng Qiuyan. Coach, you're a nice guy. I believe you'll meet the best person in the future. I just want to focus on practicing my saber. I don't plan on considering personal problems. It's not you, it's me. Zhou Wen was confused, unsure of what was going on. Feng Qiuyan was usually cool. Apart from practicing his saber techniques, he seldom spoke to others. Why would he suddenly send such a strange message to him? It didn't seem like his style at all. Could it be that he was hacked like me? As Zhou Wen thought about it, he sent Feng Qiuyan a message. Little Yin Yin, have you been hacked? When Feng Qiuyan received Zhou Wen's message and saw the way he addressed him as Little Yin Yin, he suddenly shivered for some reason. This nickname was given to him by Li Xian. He was used to being called that, so he didn't feel anything. He didn't mind it either. However, for some reason, when he saw this nickname today, he found it a little strange. It weirded him out in an indescribable manner. I wasn't hacked. Coach, we are still students. We should prioritize our studies. Besides, the Federation is in a dire situation now. Everyone has a responsibility for the Federation's rise and fall. Feng Qiuyan thought about how to reason with Zhou when without making him lose his dignity and not be sad about being rejected. He also hoped that it could be an impetus for him to work even harder. Zhou Wen felt that something was amiss as he suddenly realized something. He immediately sent a message to Feng Qiuyan. Before this message, did I send you a message? If there's one, send me a screenshot. Zhou Wen took a screenshot of the first message Feng Qiuyan had sent him and sent it over. He felt that something was amiss. Indeed, it didn't take long for Feng Qiuyan to send a screenshot over. He even added, Coach, it's really not that you aren't good enough but that I really just want to focus on practicing my saber. When Zhou Wen saw the screenshot, he wished he could immediately find a hole to burrow in. F asterisk asterisk K your sister. Who the hell is behind this? Zhou Wen felt like killing someone. If this continued, he would definitely go crazy. Left with no choice, Zhou Wen sent a message to Feng Qiuyan to explain the theft of his account. Yes, yes. I understand, coach. I won't tell anyone about this. Feng Qiuyan replied. F asterisk asterisk K that, what are you thinking? My account has really been hacked. Zhou Wen felt like crying, but Feng Qiuyan's words reminded him of something. Zhou Wen hurriedly sent a message to all his friends, telling them that his account had been hacked. If there were any abnormal messages from him, they mustn't believe it. Not long after, people replied to him with all sorts of messages. Some said that he had cheated them of their money and wanted them to return it. Others said that they had confessed to her and wanted him to take responsibility. However, they were all joking. Zhou Wen heaved a sigh of relief when he learned that the rest hadn't received any special messages. 
Zhou Wen switched off his phone before considering the matter. He felt that something was amiss, as though it wasn't as simple as being hacked. This seems to have happened after I entered the hotel which had the television automatically switched on. Could it be that something has happened to my phone? Zhou Wen felt that the two matters were related. He checked his phone and didn't find any problems. Everything inside was normal. For this, Zhou Wen even especially found the internal structure of the phone and compared it to his own. However, there was nothing abnormal. No special components were installed inside. After switching on the phone again, Zhou Wen wiped his phone again and restored its factory settings. He did it again, but he didn't know if it was of any use. That's not right. Zhou Wen looked at the screen and suddenly discovered a problem. The phone was normal, but the only abnormal thing was the battery. In the past two days, Zhou Wen hadn't charged his phone at all. Although he didn't usually use the phone, it had been on standby for a few days. Furthermore, he had been using it for quite some time, yet, the battery was still at 100% charge. This was clearly abnormal. Zhou Wen discovered this anomaly, and immediately thought of the television that had automatically switched on in the hotel. I don't know why there was an electric current in the television previously that allowed it to automatically switch on. Now, the battery in my phone doesn't run out of charge. Could it be caused by the same thing? Zhou Wen used Truth Listener to check the phone's battery, but he didn't find any problems. He just found plenty of charge in the battery. Although smashing the phone might resolve the problem, it was only a possibility. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and didn't smash the phone. He switched it off. Not long after, his body finally returned to normal. Zhou Wen continued on his journey with his phone. On the way, Zhou Wen paid close attention to the phone. Truth Listener's ability was constantly paying attention to the interior of the phone, especially the battery. However, he didn't discover anything amiss. When he arrived at the next city, Zhou Wen stopped to rest again. His phone remained silent. However, in the middle of the night, something abnormal happened. The phone that had been switched off, automatically switched on. When the phone was switched on, an app automatically started playing the old movie. Zhou Wen had already seen this old movie in the hotel. The problem is indeed there. Zhou Wen was now certain that something had happened at the hotel in the thunderstorm. Zhou Wen switched off his phone again, but not long after, the phone automatically switched on again. It was still playing the old movies. Furthermore, no matter how long it played them, the phone's battery didn't decrease. Zhou Wen switched it off a few times, but his phone would automatically switch on. Therefore, he decided not to turn it off. Nothing happened to the phone until the morning. Zhou Wen observed the battery in his phone the entire night. He could sense that there was a fluctuation in the battery, and it was extremely abnormal. Could it be that the electric current is a special dimensional creature? Zhou Wen felt that the possibility was very high. If the electric current inside was a companion beast, no one would use a companion beast like this. Although it created some trouble for him, it wasn't fatal. If his enemy had such a companion beast, they wouldn't have used it in such a manner. It could definitely deal him a lethal blow and throw him into eternal damnation. How can I get the electric current out? Zhou Wen looked at his phone and thought about how to confirm if there was a dimensional creature inside. Chapter 732 disappeared. Smash my phone? It's probably not of much use. It could silently run from the television into my phone, so it should be able to move elsewhere. That would make it even harder to find it. Now that it's in my phone, at least I know where it is, Zhou Wen thought to himself. What kind of dimensional creature is this? A pure electric creature? Zhou Wen used Truth Listener to monitor it, and could only sense electric waves. He couldn't tell anything else. Zhou Wen thought about it carefully. The electric elemental creatures he had heard of in the past had powerful destructive powers. They were especially ferocious when it came to roasting meat. However, this was the first time Zhou Wen had seen an electric type creature that could enter electronic products, control electronic products, and use his software to send messages. He had never even heard of it before, much less seen it. If it was a traditional electric type creature, Zhou Wen could blast it apart even if it was at the mythical stage. However, such a sneaky fellow was not easy to deal with. Zhou Wen was momentarily at a loss for a good solution. He wanted to use his phone to contact the Darch to ask if she knew the origins of this strange electric tie creature, but he was afraid that the information would be tampered with. He didn't know what trouble it would cause. After daybreak, Zhou Wen carried the wooden log to the phone shop. There were very few people in the small city. After circling the city for some time, he finally found a phone shop and bought a few new phones and a new SIM card. After returning to the hotel, Zhou Wen placed the new phones in front of him and used Truth Listener to monitor the internal electric current in them. Only his first phone had a strange electric current fluctuation. Zhou Wen left it on the table and took out a new phone. He went to the yard outside and called the Darch. Thankfully, the Darch didn't reject the call because it was an unknown number. 
Zhou Wen heaved a sigh of relief and recounted what he had encountered in detail. To think I've never seen such a dimensional creature before. The Darch actually didn't know the origins of this dimensional creature. After pausing for a moment, the Darch continued. However, from your description, it should have an electromagnetic attribute. It might even have a magnetic field ability. It's probably impossible to destroy it by simply destroying the phone. It can easily transfer elsewhere. That's what I think too. I just can't think of a good way to deal with it. Jowen said. The Darch curled her lips and said, Were your studies for nothing? Waves need to be transmitted through matter, and particles will be affected by a force field. Even if it's formed from pure electric energy, it can't break these laws. Why don't you try using the power similar to a black hole created by Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength? Jowen was immediately taken aback. He had been considering how to restrain the electric type creatures that existed in myths and legends. He never expected that a dimensional creature like the Darch would take to him using human scientific knowledge. How do you know that Tyrant Behemoth is mine? Jowen suddenly reacted. He hadn't told the Darch that Tyrant Behemoth belonged to him. What do I not know? The Darch said disdainfully. After hanging up, Jowen returned to his room. Just as he was about to test if Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength was effective, he suddenly realized that the special electric current in his phone had vanished. Jowen carefully checked the other phones and checked everything in the hotel that could be connected to electricity. He didn't discover any abnormal electric waves. Why is it gone now? Jowen pondered for a moment and thought of a possibility. It was very likely that the strange electric creature had overheard his conversation with the Darch and had escaped. Unwilling to give up, he searched the entire night without discovering any problems. In the day, Jowen had no choice but to set off. After this, nothing abnormal happened on the phone. Everything returned to normal. Has that electric type creature really escaped? Joe Wen found it unbelievable that such a strange and cunning dimensional creature would be frightened away by a few words. Not long after Joe Wen left, three men entered the small city where he had stayed. The three of them looked haggard, and they had dark eye circles. They looked like they had stayed up all night for a week and were about to die. These three people were naturally Xiao Luchuan, Zhang Chuanqiu, and Du Gu. Don't you think that there's something wrong with this matter? The first time we encountered that terrifying electric beast, we were nearly electrocuted to death. The second time, we encountered a nightmare and almost lost ourselves in a dreamland forever. Why did we encounter such powerful mythical creatures? Xiao Luchuan said. Dugugu said with certainty. It's definitely not a coincidence. Zhang Chuanqiu pondered for a moment and said. I think this matter might have something to do with Zhou Wen. Wherever he goes, nothing happens. But he leaves a wake of problems behind him. Are you saying that Zhou Wen is secretly up to no good and wants to harm us? Xiao Luchuan frowned. That's not it. He probably doesn't know that we are here. After all, it was a coincidence that we met him previously, Zhang Chuanqiu said. Then what do you mean? Xiao Luchuan looked at Zhang Chuanqiu in confusion. Zhang Chuanqiu pondered for a moment and said, Did you notice that there's something wrong with the piece of wood Zhou Wen has been carrying? Of course there's a problem. I've never seen such a block of wood before. It looks a little like a gloomy wood, but it looks even more solid than the gloomy wood, Xiao Luchuan said. No, I'm not talking about that. Zhang Chuanqiu reorganized his thoughts before saying, Do you feel that the log is a little sinister? Sinister? Xiao Luchuan and Dugugu exchanged looks puzzled. Seeing that they were silent, Zhang Chuanqiu guessed that they had not noticed it before. He continued, I think there's something wrong with that piece of wood. It seems a little sinister. It doesn't feel like a simple log. If it doesn't look like a log, what does it look like? Xiao Luchuan asked in confusion. How should I put it? Nowadays, we carry out cremation or permission. In ancient times, land burials were popular. It used a wooden coffin to store a person's corpse before burying it in the ground. Although that piece of wood looks different from a coffin, the sinister aura emitted from it makes me think of a coffin. Zhang Chuanqiu shared his feelings. A coffin? Are you saying that there might be a dead person's corpse in that piece of wood? Show what is traveling with a dead person's corpse on his back? Why is he carrying that thing? Xiao Luchuan widened his eyes. Chapter 733 Sister Return Lightning Pool Again I'm only saying that the piece of wood gives me the feeling of a coffin, but I didn't say that it's definitely it. Perhaps it's not. Even if it's real, there might not be a corpse inside. Even if there's a corpse, it might not be a human corpse. Zhang Chuanqiu said, as he be around the bush. Then isn't it as good as not saying anything? Are we still following? Xiao Luchuan asked. Yes, of course. This concerns the Guardian's ownership. It doesn't matter if you follow or not, but I have to see the outcome with my own eyes, Zhang Chuanqiu said. In that case, what are we waiting for? Let's go, Xiao Luchuan said. 
The three of them set off again, but this time, they deliberately lag far behind, trying to keep a greater distance from Zhou Wen. However, after walking for a while, they felt that something was amiss. The surrounding fields seemed to be filled with a cold wind that made their hearts tremble. Old Zhang, why do I feel that something is amiss? Try dividing again, Xiao Luchuan said. As he said, Zhang Chuanqiu did another divination before his expression turned odd. Seeing his expression, Xiao Luchuan and Dugu Gu knew that the situation wasn't good. They hurriedly asked, What's going on? The divination is still sister return lightning pool, Zhang Chuanqiu said with a bitter smile. Xiao Luchuan and Dugu Ji's expressions changed as well. During the first sister return lightning pool, they had encountered an electric beast. They met a nightmare the second time. Now, they were encountering it again. Is this sister never getting married? Xiao Luchuan said gloomily. Xiao Liuchuan's words suddenly gave Zhang Chuanqiu a flash of inspiration. He said in surprise, Do you think that the divination of Sister Return Lightning Pool refers to that piece of wood? What do you mean? Xiao Luchuan and Dugu Gu didn't understand. If my previous guess wasn't wrong, that piece of wood is really something like a coffin. Do you think there's a woman inside? Zhang Chuanqiu said in a bold and unconstrained manner. What woman? If it's really a coffin, there should be a female corpse inside. Xiao Luchuan corrected. It doesn't matter if it's a woman or a female corpse. Over the past few days, no matter how I divine, the results are always sister return lightning pool. I think this matter definitely has something to do with that piece of wood. The more Zhang Chuanqiu spoke, the more convinced he was. Xiao Luchuan was about to say something when he suddenly heard a roar. The fields beside them split open and a huge earth dragon crawled out. Zhou Wen walked ahead. Although he felt that the atmosphere was somewhat odd his entire journey, he didn't encounter any other strange things other than the electric-type dimensional creature. Zhou Wen was in no mood to visit other dimensional zones. He walked whenever he could and rested when exhausted. He kept rushing towards the imperial capital, hoping to rid the crappy piece of wood from him as soon as possible. Zhou Wen himself was fine, but Xia Luchuan and company, who were following behind him, suffered. They experienced all sorts of difficulties along the way, almost losing their lives several times. Xia Luchuan ultimately couldn't take it anymore, and decided to take a detour back to the Xia family in the imperial capital. Zhang Chuanqiu decided to continue, but Brother Dugu didn't plan on following. Young master, everyone is here. When are we going to take action? The members of the Dugu family came in front of Dugu Gu and bowed. Abort the plan for now, Dugu Gu said. Everyone was taken aback. One of them asked in puzzlement. Young master, why are you aborting it? This concerns your contractual with a guardian. It's a long story. I'll explain this matter to the elders in the clan. Just do as I say, Dugugu said. Yes. The group had just arrived and didn't even get to rest. All they could do was turn back. Xiao Luchuan rushed back to the Xia family. He wasn't really afraid that he would encounter danger if he followed behind, but he had already received the news that the Xia family was prepared to attack Zhou when before he entered the capital. Xia Luchuan wanted to rush back and convince Xia Dongyu to give up on this operation. The wooden log Zhou Wen was carrying was indeed odd. Xia Luchuan was afraid that the Xia family would end up dying as a result. Xia Luchuan embarked on his journey with light gear. He chose the shortest path and returned to the capital much earlier than Zhou Wen. Luchuan, why are you back? Didn't I tell you to follow Zhou Wen? Xia Dong Yu couldn't help but frown when he saw Xia Luchuan. Uncle Yu, can we abort this operation? Xia Luchuan was in a hurry to rush back because he might not be able to convince Xia Dong Yu over the phone. Why should we abort it? Xia Dong Yu asked Xiao Luchuan. Zhou Wen is carrying a strange piece of wood to the imperial capital. That piece of wood has a strange background and is very sinister. I'm afraid something will happen if we touch him now. Xia Luchuan said. A piece of wood? Xia Dong Yu was a little puzzled. Xia Luchuan had always been fearless. So how could a piece of wood make him so cautious? This was completely different from the Xia Luchuan that Xia Dong Yu knew. Xia Luchuan recounted what had happened when the three of them followed Zhou Wen. Zhang Chuanqiu guessed that the terrifying mythical creatures we encountered along the way are related to that piece of wood. I think it's very likely, Xia Luchuan said. It sounds reasonable, but even so, it doesn't mean that we can't touch Zhou Wen. We can choose to carry out the operation near the capital. The dimensional zones there are under our control. We don't have to worry about any breakout creatures causing trouble, Xia Dongyu said after some thought. Uncle Yu, why take such a risk? The grudge between Zhou Wen and the Bureau is known by the entire Federation. It's highly likely that he came to the capital this time for the Bureau. Why should we be used by the Bureau? Xia Luchuan continued with his persuasion. Xia Dongyu shook his head and said, This is old master's idea. You know his temper. No one can change what he has decided. 
When Xiao Luchuan heard the words, Old Master, his heart sank. He knew that this operation was already a foregone conclusion and could not be changed. Luchuan, you don't have to worry too much. Although that piece of wood might be a little strange, with our Xia family's heritage, there's no need to worry about it. It's just Zhou Wen. Taking him down isn't difficult. Xia Dongyu patted Xia Luchuan on the shoulder and said, Since you're back, stay home and get some rest. I'll get someone from the East Courtyard to handle this matter. I hope so. Xia Luchuan felt that this matter wouldn't succeed so easily, but there was nothing he could do. The old master of the Xia family was the supreme existence in the Xia family. Even Xia Dongyu, who had become a member of the Senate, didn't dare disobey his words. No one could change his mind. Chapter 734 erected on the peak of the Forbidden City. Although Xia Luchuan was a little worried, he had no choice but to leave Xia Dongyu's office. Brother, you seem to have something on your mind. Is it because you didn't obtain the Guardian Cocoon? Xia Xianyu asked with concern when she saw Xia Luchuan frowning. Zhou Wen is on his way to the Imperial Capital. Old Master has already ordered the people from the East Courtyard to bring him back before he enters the Imperial Capital. Xia Luchuan said. Why is Old Master taking Zhou Wen into custody? Having not heard of this, Xia Xuanyu's expression changed slightly when she learned of it. Xia Luchuan hurriedly stopped Xia Xianyu from continuing. He looked around and seeing that no one was passing by, he said softly, You should be the only person to know about this. Don't mention it again, and don't tell anyone. Also, don't ask too much about the old master. Do you understand? Why? Xia Xianyu was still confused. In fact, Xia Xuanyue's impression of the old master was very vague. Although the old master was the true head of the Xia family, Xia Xianyu had only seen him a handful of times despite having grown up in the Xia family. In her impression, the old master was a stern old man in a white robe. He occasionally appeared at important Xia family ceremonies. He usually lived in the East Courtyard. The East Courtyard was also a restricted area in the Xia family. Without the old master summoning, even Xia Dongyu couldn't enter and leave the East Courtyard freely. Only those who were in charge of taking care of the old master's daily needs could enter the East Courtyard. Most of the people who were in charge of taking care of the old master's daily needs were not from the Xia family. However, they were all loyal to the old master and wouldn't hesitate or doubt his orders. When Xia Xianyu was young, she had seen an elder of the Xia family, who was seized by the people from the East Courtyard for some unknown crime. After entering the East Courtyard, he never came out again. Don't ask why. Trust me. I'm your brother. I won't harm you. Xia Luchuan said, as he looked into Xia Xuanyu's eyes. I understand. Xia Xianyu nodded slightly. Get some rest. Since this matter has already been handed over to the East Courtyard, we don't have to bother about it anymore. Xiao Luchuan seemed to have something on his mind. After saying that, he returned to his residence. However, before he could open the door, someone sent a message saying that the old master wanted to see him. Xia Luchuan's heart quaked. He had already guessed why the old master was looking for him. Xia Luchuan took a deep breath and followed the butler to the east courtyard. If it wasn't necessary, Xia Luchuan would rather not enter the east district ever again. When he was young, he had actually liked visiting the East Courtyard. The old master doted on him very much. The other members of the Xia family were not allowed to enter the East Courtyard, but he was specially permitted by the old master to enter freely. At that time, Xia Luchuan could be said to be able to get whatever he wanted. Even if he plucked the flowers personally planted by the old master, the old master would only laugh and never punish him. However, after he turned 15, Xia Luchuan seldom went to the East Courtyard. Although he still had the privilege of doing so, he was unwilling to go again. As he stepped into the familiar garden and saw the familiar decorations and flowers, Xia Luchuan had mixed feelings. Little Chuan, Dong Yu has already told me about your matters. Don't worry, I'll let Zhou Wen enter the Imperial Capital alive. I'll let you win the bet and obtain the chance to contract the Guardian. A white-robed elder sat in a stone pavilion with a pond by its side, feeding the carp in it. Sorry to trouble you. Xia Luchuan bowed slightly. He was a fearless person who dared to do anything. But in front of this old master, he didn't dare to do anything rash. As the elder fed the fish, he continued, It's nothing much. It's just a matter of time. After you contract the guardian, I want you to personally bring Zhou Wen back to me. Can you do it? Old master, everyone around you is stronger than me. Why must I go? Xiao Luchuan said. If you aren't willing, let Xian Yu go. The elder said indifferently. Xiao Luchuan gapped his mouth as though he wanted to say something, but he didn't say anything in the end. He only nodded. Got it. I'll bring Zhou Wen back. Remember, you are the future master of the Xia family. No matter how strong the people under you are, 
They are ultimately servants, the elder said. I understand. Xiao Luchuan lowered his head and said, Zhou Wen rushed all the way to the imperial capital and didn't encounter anything strange. Apart from the fact that the log was especially heavy and making it difficult for him to go any faster, there wasn't much trouble. When Zhou Wen saw the two words, imperial capital, from afar, he couldn't help but heave a sigh of relief. Oh well, auntie, where should I place this log when I reach the imperial capital? Zhou Wen asked the antelope. The antelope rode on the ground with its hooves. Erected on the peak of the forbidden city. Zhou Wen saw the words written by the antelope and immediately widened his eyes. The imperial capital's forbidden city was now a very special dimensional zone. It was also one of the dimensional zones that the Xia family valued the most. Its importance was no less than that of the ancient sword tomb. According to what Zhou Wen knew, ever since the dimensional storms, the Xia family had sealed off the forbidden city dimensional zone, preventing anyone from approaching. If he wanted to enter, it shouldn't be difficult for him to do so with the invisibility cloak's ability. However, it was impossible for him to enter the city without anyone noticing while carrying such a huge object. He had to clash with the Xia family. Oh well, auntie, are you deliberately setting me up? Zhou Wen seriously suspected that the antelope had deliberately set him up because he had forcefully dragged it out to come with him on this trip. The antelope ignored him and stepped across the imperial capital's boundary stone. Zhou Wen had to follow. He had no other choice at this point in time. Zhou Wen seldom went out, so he had never seen a city as big as the imperial capital. Compared to it, Woyan appeared rather small in scale and numbers. As there were too many people, Zhou Wen didn't ride the great Maivadra bull. He walked forward while carrying the wooden log. Although this was the imperial capital, people still gawked when they saw Zhou Wen walking on the streets with such a huge block of wood. Zhou Wen originally planned on contacting Wang Lu when he arrived in the imperial capital. However, it wasn't appropriate for him to treat her to a meal while carrying a huge log. Therefore, he decided not to contact her. It wouldn't be too late to contact her after resolving the matter with the log. He found a hotel and checked in. The room was rather expensive, but Zhou Wen still paid for it without any hesitation. Furthermore, he booked the room for a week. This place was relatively close to Forbidden City. Through the floor to ceiling windows in the room, one could see the distant Forbidden City. This was also why Zhou Wen chose to stay here. How can I sneak this log in? Zhou Wen stood in front of the window and stared at the ancient Forbidden City in the distance as many thoughts flashed through his mind. Chapter 735 Creditor Comes Knocking Ever since he entered the Imperial Capital, Zhou Wen felt all sorts of gazes staring at him. Furthermore, there were definitely more than one or two people staring at him. It was almost impossible to enter the Forbidden City without anyone noticing. Do I have to barge my way in? Zhou Wen was somewhat hesitant. Although his present strength could be considered top-notch in the Federation, and he had many mythical companion beasts, he probably wouldn't be able to gain an advantage against a hero family. After all, they had been operating for decades. Even if they didn't have a phone to grind for resources, they definitely had a lot of resources in real life. What puzzled Zhou Wen was that despite a large number of spies staring at him, no one attacked him despite him being in the capital for so long. When did the Bureau become so good-tempered? They actually haven't come looking for trouble? Zhou Wen felt that there was something amiss. Zhou Wen was right. Something had happened on the way. However, due to an accident, the Duga family, who had originally planned to attack him, aborted the operation. The Bureau was waiting for the Xia family to take action, and because the Xia family wanted Xia Luchuan to win the bet, they allowed him to arrive at the Imperial Capital safely. Now that the Xia family was waiting for Xia Luchuan to sign a contract with the Guardian, everything was calm. As he was thinking, he felt a fluctuation from a companion beast. Explosive Fiend Man that had evolved again had finally completed its evolution. Zhou Wen checked Explosive Fiend Man's stats in-game. Explosive Fiend Man, Epic Evolvable. Life Providence, Unlawful. Life Soul, Destroyer. Strength, 41. Speed, 41. Constitution, 41. Essence Energy, 41. Talent Skill, Death List Time Blast. Companion Form, Self-Detonation Device. His stats had risen in a normal fashion. His skills hadn't changed, but he had gained a life soul. Zhou Wen summoned Explosive Fiend Man in game. It didn't look much different from when it was at the legendary stage. It looked like a very modern armored soldier. Let me see what use your life soul has. Zhou Wen got Explosive Fiend Man to use the Destroyer Life Soul. With a thought, the red liquid in the glass tubes on Explosive Fiend Man's back injected into his body through the pipes. Then, Zhou Wen saw Explosive Fiend Man's armor emitting strange red flames. Its body was filled with a dangerous aura. Explosive Fiend Man seemed to have been injected with stimulants. His speed and strength had greatly increased, and his skills had also been strengthened. 
Previously, he needed at least 30 seconds to complete a time blast. However, with the augmentation of the Destroyer Life Soul, he only used less than 3 seconds to complete a time blast. His efficiency had increased by 10 times. This Destroyer Life Soul is quite strong. Zhou Wen was overjoyed. In the past, Explosive Fiend Man's skill cast time was too slow, so it wasn't convenient to use it. Although the speed of a skill at 3 seconds was still a little slow, much slower than an instantaneous skill, considering Explosive Fiend Man's special skill, 3 seconds was considered rather powerful. I can consider using Explosive Fiend Man to set up some time bombs nearby. If anyone tries to sneak up on me, I'll make sure they have no chance of returning. Zhou Wen only had this thought. After all, this was a hotel. It wouldn't be good if he injured the workers who were cleaning up the room. If Explosive Fiend Man advances to the mythical stage, I might be able to instantly release a time bomb. That would be awesome. Zhou Wen looked forward to Explosive Fiend Man's growth. The doorbell rang. Zhou Wen used Truth Listener to take a look and was immediately stunned. The person standing outside the door was Wang Lu. Zhou Wen hurriedly opened the door. When Wang Lu saw him, she said unhappily, You didn't inform me, your debtor, despite coming to the Imperial Capital? Are you trying to renege on your debt? Sorry, I encountered some trouble. I originally planned on contacting you after resolving it, but I never expected you to come here yourself. By the way, how did you know that I was in the Imperial Capital? Zhou Wen asked. What's so strange about that? After all, our Wang family has some influence in the Imperial Capital. For a famous person like you to come to the Imperial Capital, I have no choice but to know. This news keeps buzzing around my ears. It's so irritating that I can't sleep. Wang Lu said. As you know, I'm in a lot of trouble now. I don't have the time to eat with you for the time being. Go back now, and I'll look for you when I'm done with my matters. Zhou Wen said. Zhou Wen mainly didn't want his matter to implicate Wang Lu. But when Wang Lu heard that, she curled her lips and said, If you want to renege on your debt, just say so. Why do you have to come up with so many excuses? Since I came looking for you, I'm naturally not afraid of trouble. Why are you being so wishy-washy? Don't tell me you don't even have time to go downstairs to eat. It's not that I don't have time, but it's really inconvenient. Zhou Wen pointed at the wooden log under his buttocks and said, I have to carry this with me at all times. Where do you think I can eat conveniently when I have to take it with me? What's this? Why are you carrying it? Just leave it in the room. If you find it unsafe, I'll get someone to look after it for you. Wang Lu said. It's not about safety. I can't leave it. I have to carry it with me. It's a long story. Zhou Wen said helplessly. Wang Lu thought for a moment and said. It doesn't matter. Just take it with you and follow me. I'll find a place. It's very quiet there. That place can easily accommodate a few more logs of the same size. That's not very nice, right? You know that my relationship with the Bureau isn't good. This is where the headquarters of the Bureau is. Zhou Wen really didn't wish for Wang Lu to be embroiled in his matters. Cut the crap. I don't like hearing that. Just follow me. Having known him for so long, Wang Lu knew Zhou Wen's temper quite well. There was no need to waste her breath on him. All she needed to do was drag him away. I'm afraid it will affect your family. Zhou Wen had no choice but to make things clear. I've already said it. Since I dared to come, I'm naturally not afraid. Although the Bureau is very powerful, they can't do anything to me. Don't worry. Quickly follow me. I didn't eat anything the entire morning just to eat this meal of yours. I'm starving, Wang Lu said. The chick smartly flew onto Wang Lu's shoulder. Even the antelope took the initiative to approach her and fawn over her. Zhou Wen had no choice but to carry the wooden log and follow Wang Lu. Looking at Wang Lu teasing the chick in front of him, Zhou Wen's mood improved significantly. Under such circumstances, it was indeed rare for Wang Lu to be willing to seek him out. Typical schoolmates would probably keep their distance from him. Zhou Wen originally imagined that Wang Lu was taking him to a restaurant, but to his surprise, Wang Lu brought him all the way to a traditionally styled ancient building complex. After circling the alley for a while, he entered one of the ancient building's courtyard. Chapter 736 The Genius's Accidents After entering the yard, Wang Lu's expression turned solemn. Do you know that you are in grave danger now? Zhou Wen nodded. I know. Why are you still here when you know? Do you feel uncomfortable if you don't get beaten up for a day? Wang Lu rolled her eyes at him. I didn't plan on coming here like this. Zhou Wen originally planned on using the invisibility cloak to enter the imperial capital, preventing others from knowing that he had been here. But now, he was carrying a huge log. It was useless even if he was invisible. The invisibility cloak couldn't cover such a huge log. Anyone would know that something was amiss when they saw a log floating in midair. I'm afraid you still don't know the current situation. If it was just the Bureau finding trouble with you, that would be fine. 
With your abilities and the acting as your informant, it shouldn't be difficult to deal with it. However, the person who wants to touch you isn't just the Bureau. There's also the real master of the capital, the Xia family. It's easy for you to come to the Imperial capital, but I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to leave. Wang Lu said. Why does the Xia family want to deal with me? Zhou Wen asked in puzzlement. He didn't have any deep feud with the Xia family, so there was no reason for them to kill him, right? The intricacies are very complicated. I'll get my grandmother to tell you later. As Wang Lu spoke, she walked towards the main room. Grandma, I've brought a friend. Wang Lu shouted into the hall as she walked. Crazy girl, just come. What are you shouting for? A voice came from the backyard and an old woman walked over. The woman looked quite old. Her hair was already white, but for some reason, there weren't any wrinkles on her face. She looked very elegant, and it was easy to guess that she must have been a beauty when she was young. This lad is the show when you often mention, right? The old woman said as she sized him up. When did I? It's just that he owes me so much and hasn't paid me back that I occasionally mention him. I'm afraid that I'll forget the debt. Wang Lu said as she tugged the old woman's arm. I see. The old woman smiled at Zhou Wen and said, Lad, you look so young. Why did you get yourself in debt? Furthermore, your debtor is a female student. Don't tell me you want to be a freeloader. Grandma Wang, it's not like that. Zhou Wen wanted to explain. However, before he could finish his sentence, he was interrupted by the old woman. But it doesn't matter. Our Wang family doesn't have much of anything else, but we have plenty of money. There's no way to spend it all eating. Just treat it as doing a good deed and come often to have a bite. It doesn't matter if you stay here. Our Wang family happens to be lacking a live-in son-in-law. Grandma, what are you talking about? Wang Lu's face flushed red. Zhou Wen is only my classmate. It's not what you think. After a pause, Wang Lu added, Grandma, you must already know about Zhou Wen's situation. Tell him how dangerous his current situation is. Upon hearing Wang Lu's words, Grandma Wang retracted her smile. Let's talk inside. Zhou Wen followed them into the hall. Wang Lu gestured for him to sit down before she brewed tea for them all. Grandma Wang, I heard from Wang Lu that the Xia family wants to find trouble with me, but I don't have much of a grudge with the Xia family. Why are they targeting me? Zhou Wen couldn't help but ask. Grandma Wang nodded and said, The crazy girl is right. The Xia family might really attack you. You shouldn't have come to the Imperial capital. After a moment of silence, Grandma Wang continued, The crazy girl is willing to bring you here because she doesn't treat you as an outsider. So I won't say things meant for outsiders. What I'm about to say next is just speculation. It's not necessarily the truth. So don't take it too seriously. Grandma Wang, don't worry. I'm not a talkative person. Zhou Wen said. It's fine even if you are talkative. Anyway, I won't admit to what I said today, nor will the Wang family. Grandma Wang said with a smile. According to my guess, the reason the Xia family is targeting you isn't because your teacher was Wang Mingyuan, nor is it because you crippled the Xia family's junior's essence energy C in the Holy Land. Then what's the reason? Apart from these two reasons, Zhou Wen really couldn't figure out what connection he had with the Xia family. Although demonic neonate's demonic sword was snatched from Xia Xianyu, Xia Xianyu herself didn't know that it was done by demonic neonate. The Xia family shouldn't pin the blame on him. Grandma Wang said with a strange expression. If there's a reason, there's only one. You are too talented. Zhou Wen was slightly taken aback. He found it difficult to believe that the Xia family wanted to kill him just for this reason. There were many talented youths nowadays, and he wasn't the only one. Even if the Xia family were to suppress the other wealthy families, it shouldn't have to resort to such means. After all, the dimensional zone seals weren't stable. The six families alone probably wouldn't be able to withstand the dimensional army. To suppress the local factions would only make them appear short-sighted. As if she had seen through Zhou Wen's thoughts, Grandma Wang continued. In the past, there were precedents of geniuses disappearing or encountering accidents in the Federation. Furthermore, there has been more than one incident. Similar incidents happened every once in a while. It's fine if it's just ordinary geniuses, but most of these geniuses are targets that the various families focus on grooming. With the protection of the various families, it's almost impossible for them to take such a huge risk. Yet, something happened to them. In Luoyang, you should know that there's a Li family in Luoyang. The Li family once had a talented youth. His talent wasn't inferior to the current overseer and, but before he truly grew in strength, he died because of some problem, said Grandma Wang with a sigh. You mean that the disappearance of these geniuses has something to do with the Xia family? Zhou Wen had already heard Li Xian mention the matter regarding his elder brother's demise. However, Li Xian had learned about it from Li Mabai. He never expected Grandma Wang to know about it. Grandma Wang declined to comment and continued. In the past, 
our Wang family also had such a genius. Similarly, he died because of some matters. That matter looked like an accident, but I didn't think it was that simple. Therefore, I secretly did investigations, but I didn't manage to find anything. However, during this period of time, I discovered something. The accidents of those young geniuses seem to have something to do with the Xiao family. Is the Xiao family resorting to every means possible, to the point of attacking their competitors, just to consolidate their forces? Zhou Wen frowned. This is also what I found strange back then. The Xiao family didn't target their opponents, who had conflicts of interest with them. They seemed to be only interested in those outstanding geniuses, and didn't differentiate between friend and foe. Therefore, when I investigated in the beginning, I was also confused and didn't think about the Xia family. Later, after investigating for a long time, I realized that it appeared to be the Xia family behind this matter. Grandma Wan said. Chapter 737 Where is the highest spot? After Zhou Wen left the yard, he kept thinking about what Grandma Wang had said. Although there was no evidence that the Xia family was related to the genius's demise, Zhou Wen also felt that there was something amiss. It didn't seem right to explain it away, as the Xia family deliberately suppressing ordinary families, as a way to strengthen their status. According to Grandma Wang's investigations, some of the young geniuses who had gotten into trouble didn't belong to the East District, much less the Xia family's circle of influence. The situation in the other regions was chaotic. It was a happy outcome for the Xia family, but they clearly didn't think so. Regardless, I have to think of a way to get this crappy piece of wood into the Forbidden City. Otherwise, it won't be convenient for me to do anything. When Zhou Wen was with the Wang family, he had also asked some questions regarding Forbidden City. Wang Lu and Grandma Wang didn't know much about Forbidden City. This was because the Xia family had occupied it from the beginning of the Dimensional Storms. They never allowed outsiders to enter, so no one knew what had happened inside after the Dimensional Storms. However, Grandma Wang told Zhou Wen something very interesting. She had lived through the Dimensional Storms, so she had entered Forbidden City quite often before they occurred. She said that she had once visited the Forbidden City when she was young. Back then, the weather suddenly turned bad and thunder rumbled in the sky. She originally wanted to return home quickly, but when she passed a certain spot in the city, she suddenly saw some strange shadows. The shadows wore ancient clothes as they walked in the alley of Forbidden City. They looked like ancient consorts and palace maids. What was even stranger was that their figures were transparent like spirit bodies. Spirit bodies weren't rare now, but before the dimensional storms, they were terrifying. At that time, Grandma Wang was still very young. She was quite frightened and immediately ran away. However, her youth made her curious. Later on, she went to the same place a few times, but she didn't see those shadows again. Grandma Wang checked the information on the internet. It said that the magical phenomenon might be a result of lightning during a rainy day. It was like a camera that recorded past scenes. Under identical weather conditions, the footage would be played. Of course, this was only a guess. No one could verify its authenticity. However, this wasn't strange. What was strange was that after the dimensional storms, every time there was a thunderstorm, strange sounds would come from the Forbidden City. Although outsiders couldn't enter Forbidden City, one could still hear some sounds from it during a thunderstorm if they lived close. After Grandma Wang heard about this matter, she waited for a thunderstorm. Indeed, she heard some strange sounds coming from inside. Some of the sounds reminded her of the palace maids and concubines she had seen back then. This had all been personally experienced by Grandma Wang, so it was naturally true. Zhou Wen had previously searched for information about the Forbidden City on the internet. In fact, compared to the other ancient cities, the history of Forbidden City wasn't too long. From its establishment, it had only experienced two feudal dynasties. However, its scale was incomparable to the other ancient cities. Forbidden City also had the title of Eight-Armed Neza Demonic City. If one were to mention the tallest building in the city, it would be the Hall of Supreme Harmony. It was nearly 40 meters tall. Zhou Wen looked up the information mainly to confirm the location of the so-called peak of Forbidden City. It was to prevent him from having to seek it out after entering. That would be troublesome. However, when Zhou Wen looked over from the hotel's top floor, he discovered a strange place. The tallest building he saw from the hotel wasn't the Hall of Supreme Harmony, but a corner tower in the corner of the city. Zhou Wen didn't know if it was because he was too far away or if it was because of the angle, he could only see the corner tower and not the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Despite this, Zhou Wen still searched for information on corner towers. This search left him alarmed. Although corner towers were inconspicuous, the meaning it represented was extraordinary. These corner towers were not meant for mortals to live. It was similar to Deer Terrace Pavilion. Their purpose was to guide immortals down to the mortal world and protect the safety of the imperial city. The reason they were named Quarter Towers was that the immortals 
which were meant to be received were the corner mansions of the 28 lunar mansions. The corner mansion wasn't unfamiliar to Zhou Wen. He even had it as a skill. So when he saw the information, Zhou Wen felt that this place was extraordinary. It might really be the peak of Forbidden City. Furthermore, the architectural standards of the corner tower were extremely high. It had three eaves, nine beams, 18 pillars, and 72 spines. Such an architectural style was unique in the Forbidden City. Zhou Wen originally imagined that the famous Hall of Supreme Harmony was at the peak of Forbidden City, but the more he looked at it, the more he felt that a corner tower was the true peak of the Forbidden City. Corner towers are built on the city walls of Forbidden City, so it might indeed be taller than the Hall of Supreme Harmony, but there are four of them. Which corner tower should I erect the log on? Zhou Wen thought to himself. Without any accurate information, Zhou Wen could only wait until he entered Forbidden City before comparing them to the Hall of Supreme Harmony Hall. Zhou Wen also asked the antelope, but the antelope only said to erect it on the peak of Forbidden City. It didn't know the exact location of the erection. Could it be that I can just randomly erect it on a higher spot? Zhou Wen thought. What Zhou Wen was most worried about was how to enter Forbidden City. If he barged in, it would only give the Xia family an excuse to attack him. However, on the other hand, he would be free once he rushed into the city and erected the log. With the invisibility cloak, who could stop him from escaping? This plan looked perfect, but the premise was that he could really abandon the log. If he still couldn't abandon it when the time came, he would be in trouble. Just as Zhou Wen was hesitating, he heard someone walking towards his room. Through the door, Zhou Wen could sense that the person's bearing was extraordinary. He was in his 20s, and probably not much older than in Tianzhua. Zhou Wen found the person somewhat familiar, but he couldn't recall where he had seen him. Is Zhou Wen around? Xiao Luchuan knocked on the door and asked. When Zhou Wen heard the voice, he immediately recalled where he had seen him. This fellow was the concerned person who had tipped him off on that stormy night. Zhou Wen opened the door and asked Xiao Luchuan. Concerned person, are you here to tip me off again? Xiao Luchuan said calmly. I don't understand what you're talking about. My name is Xiao Luchuan. I'm here to challenge you. This is my challenge letter. I hope you can give me an answer now. Why are you challenging me? Zhou Wen asked as he looked at Xiao Luchuan's challenge. Don't tell me you've forgotten that you once crippled the essence energy sea of my Xiao family members in the Holy Land? Xiao Luchuan said. I see. I accept your challenge. Zhou Wen actually agreed without any hesitation, surprising Xiao Luchuan. Chapter 738 Decisive Battle at the Peak of the Forbidden City 1. Did you read it carefully? This isn't an ordinary challenge. We have to fight until one person falls. Xiao Luchuan reminded him. I've read it carefully. I can agree to a life and death duel with you, but on one condition. The location of the duel has to be chosen by me. Zhou Wen said. Don't tell me you want to have the duel in Luoyang? Xiao Luchuan said with a smile. Xiao Luchuan would have done such a thing himself. If Zhou Wen also did the same, Xiao Luchuan could have agreed if he had any say. However, he had no choice in this duel. He couldn't agree to Zhou Wen's request. No, it's in the Imperial Capital, Zhou Wen said. Where do you want it to happen? Xiao Luchuan asked. To be able to fight an expert like you can be considered a boon in life. I probably won't have many opportunities like this in life, so I naturally have to choose a place that matches you and me. How about we fight at the peak of Forbidden City? Just as Zhou Wen was worrying about how he could enter the Forbidden City, Xiao Luchuan came knocking on his door. Zhou Wen didn't care about life and death duels at all. As long as he could settle the crappy piece of wood, he would immediately put on the invisibility cloak and leave. It didn't matter if he won. This, Xiao Luchuan was in a difficult position. It was fine to have the duel elsewhere, but Forbidden City was under the old master's control. Without the old master's orders, even the Xiao family members couldn't enter. What? Are you still worried when it's your Xia family's territory? Zhou Wen asked. All right, I promise you. Since you decided on the location, I'll decide on the time. Xia Luchuan said. Sure. When? Zhou Wen asked. Wait for my news. Xia Luchuan turned around and left. This fellow is really odd. He was clearly the concerned person that night. Why isn't he admitting to it? Zhou Wen was puzzled. However, as long as nothing unexpected happened, the matter of entering Forbidden City had been resolved by accident. With the opportunity of a duel with Xiao Luchuan, Zhou Wen could try erecting the log at higher spots. Dealing with Xiao Luchuan was better than dealing with the Xiao family's gank. While waiting for Xiao Luchuan's reply, Zhou Wen stayed in his room to grind. He didn't go anywhere. Since he had nothing to do, Zhou Wen planned on trying to kill the nine black dragons. He could use Dr. Darkness's darkness right hand to kill the three black dragons. After bringing all his mythical companion beasts, Zhou Wen arrived at the underground sea again. With Behemoth on the left, Truth Listener on the right, 
six wing on his back, he held a golden sword in his hand, along with the old bull under his crotch and a torch dragon coil behind him. Joe and had even summoned the extremely weak Medusa. Perhaps it would be of some use if she stood by the shore to provide support. Demonic Neonate naturally didn't need to be mentioned. She had already joined the battle. However, she found a cave beside the underground sea and hid there. She had no intention of participating in the battle head-on. Come, my Dr. Darkness! Joe Wen summoned his most important companion beast and made Dr. Darkness transform into a soul that fused with him. Joe Wen immediately felt his physique improve significantly. He was almost comparable to a mythical stage entity. This was the benefit of Dr. Darkness. Not only could his companion form bestow Zhou Wen with skills, but it could also raise Zhou Wen's basic stats, allowing him to have the ability to fight against mythical creatures. This was something no other companion beast could do. Unfortunately, Banana Fairy hasn't completed her evolution. Otherwise, I would have a greater chance. In a short while, he saw a huge wave stir above the surface of the sea. Nine black dragons tore through the waves and wiped out the horde of poisoned bats in the blink of an eye. Fight, my pets! After Zhou would issue the order, Torch Dragon, Behemoth, and Truth Listener rushed into the sea. As the Great Might Bedraw Bull was afraid of water, it didn't dare enter the water to fight. On the bank, it transformed into the thousand-armed, bull-headed state. Golden light shot out from its palm as it attacked the nine black dragons. Torch Dragon didn't use Bright Torch Vision World. Although using Bright Torch Vision World could instantly kill the black dragons, nothing would be left behind. That would make killing the black dragon useless. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, Torch Dragon was unable to gain the upper hand without using Bright Torch Vision World. It was obvious that the Black Dragons were top mythical creatures. The moment Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength was unleashed, the invisible chains between the nine Black Dragons produced effects. They condensed the power of the nine dragons and collided with Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength. Tyrant Behemoth immediately fell into a disadvantage. Truth Listener constantly harassed them from the side, but it didn't dare clash head-on with the Black Dragons. Joan had been waiting for an opportunity to use Darkness right hand. All he needed was for his hand to touch one black dragon. However, the black dragon's body was too huge. It was probably unrealistic to pull out its heart with a single palm. So Zhou Wen's target was their brains. He didn't expect to dig out their brains. All he needed to do was stir them up. Although the nine black dragons were independent mythical creatures, they were connected by invisible chains. In battle, they were like one. Their attack and defense were flawless. Zhou Wen watched for a while, but he failed to find an opportunity to attack. These nine black dragons are really difficult to deal with. Zhou Wen activated Dr. Darkness's eyes of penetration to see if there were any weaknesses in the black dragon's bodies. If Dr. Darkness hadn't advanced to the mythical stage, he wouldn't have been able to see so far with his eyes of penetration. His ability to see through things wasn't that strong either, so he definitely wouldn't be able to see through the black dragon's body. Now, all he needed to do was approach it a little, and he could clearly see the situation inside the black dragon's body. This glance left Zhou when slightly taken aback. In the black dragon's brain, there was a crystal-like bead with a faint dragon-shaped stream of light swirling inside. That thing can't be the legendary dragon pearl, right? Zhou Wen carefully sized up the pearl in the black dragon's brain and quickly made a new discovery. The black dragon's brain had the pearl as its core. Although there were parts similar to the brain, it looked like those parts were just supplementary. It was somewhat different from a human's brain. What was even more magical was that when the dragon-shaped stream of light in the dragon pearl circulated, it looked like a word. Zhou Wen carefully identified it as the word. Kansas! Could it be? Zhou Wen hurriedly looked at the other eight black dragons and indeed, he found a dragon pearl in their heads. However, the words in the dragon pearls were different. Qian, Kuan, Jin, Sun, Kan, Li, Jin, Dui, and Wu. The nine black dragons' dragon pearls each had these words. The first eight words were from the eight trigrams and the last word was Wu. Zhou Wen guessed that it represented Wuji, Limitless. Chapter 739 Killing the Nine Dragons Zhou Wen observed for a long period of time. By the time he was done, his luxurious lineup of mythical pets had been destroyed by the nine black dragons. Torch Dragon was heavily injured, and despite Tyrant Behemoth roaring repeatedly, it was unable to reverse the situation. Truth Listener showed signs of going berserk. The Great Might Bedraw Bull Onshore had been killed at some point in time. Demonic Neonate apparently failed to find a chance to attack. She had been hiding all this time. Zhou Wen directly unsummoned Truth Listener, preventing it from shattering another earring. Torch Dragon was also unsummoned. The heavily injured Torch Dragon basically didn't have any combat strength left. Torch Dragon, who couldn't use Bright Torch Vision World, could only be considered top-notch in combat, but being top-notch wasn't enough in such a battle. Only Tyrant Behemoth was at the front line. 
It was being tortured by the nine black dragons as it roared angrily, but it remained completely suppressed. Not only was Zhou Wen not discouraged, he even felt happy. This was because, after his long period of observation, he discovered a secret of the nine black dragons. If one looked at their appearance and abilities, the nine black dragons were no different. Their offensive methods were also similar, so they could be seen as non -uplets. Therefore, Zhou Wen's initial plan was to kill them one by one. However, when Zhou Wen used his eyes of penetration to see the dragon pearls in their bodies, he discovered a special phenomenon. Although the power in the nine dragons' bodies could be transferred freely without any problems during the transfer, Zhou Wen realized that the Wu dragon pearl would light up every time their powers were transferred. For example, when the Li dragon attacked by gathering the power of the nine dragons, the Li dragon pearl would light up, but the Wu dragon pearl would also light up. The other dragon pearls didn't light up. However, when the Qin dragon pearl attacked, the Qin dragon pearl would light up along with the Wu dragon pearl. In other words, no matter which dragon condensed the power of the nine dragons, the Wu dragon pearl would light up along with it. Only when the Wu dragon pearl's dragon attacked would only its dragon pearl light up. From this vantage, Zhou Wen suddenly realized that perhaps the Wu Dragon Pearl's dragon was the core of the nine black dragons, or rather, a transit station. Perhaps it was because of its existence that the nine black dragons could freely transfer their powers. If I kill the black dragon with the Wu Dragon Pearl first, will the ability to combine the nine dragons' strength as one be ineffective? Zhou Wen decided to give it a try. After quitting the game and respawning the dungeon, Zhou Wen entered the game again and summoned his luxurious lineup of mythical pets. However, this time, after getting Dr. Darkness to possess him, he switched his essence energy art to the God Fiend era. The Lost Country Life Soul Ring also appeared on his finger. Since I can't find an opportunity, I'll create one myself. Zhou Wen stared intently at the nine black dragons in the middle of the battle and locked onto the black dragon with the Wu Dragon Pearl. The six wings on his back flapped gently as Zhou Wen gradually approached the battlefield. When the nine black dragons noticed him and were about to attack, Zhou Wen suddenly vanished. The black dragon that was about to attack was slightly taken aback as Zhou Wen's figure appeared above another black dragon. He genuflected on the dragon's head. With his left hand pressing on the dragon's skull, his right hand stabbed into the dragon's head with a devil-like force. The hard dragon scales and dragon bones failed to block the ghostly palm. In an instant, Zhou Wen retracted his palm from the dragon's head. And between his slender fingers was a crystalline dragon pearl. After losing the dragon pearl, the black dragon was like an empty shell that had lost its brain. Its body lost its vitality and fell to the bottom of the sea. What surprised Zhou Wen even more was that after he crushed the dragon pearl, the invisible chain that connected the nine black dragons shattered. The nine black dragons were immediately in a state of disunity. Two black dragons roared as they charged at Zhou Wen. With transcendent flying immortal, Zhou Wen's speed wasn't any slower than the black dragons. Without the augmentation of the nine dragons' collective strength, the black dragons couldn't catch up to Zhou Wen. A blackish purple sword beam streaked across the sea and stabbed into the eye of a black dragon, piercing through the dragon pearl in its head. Demonic Neonate had finally taken action and dispatched one. Meanwhile, Tyrant Behemoth was even more excited. Without the suppression of the nine dragons collective strength, its absolute strength unleashed, snapping the dragon horn off a black dragon. Then, it threw punch after punch, shattering the black dragon's head. The nine black dragons that originally had the absolute advantage immediately became the ones being ravaged after losing the key black dragon with the Wu Dragon Pearl. There was no need for Zhou Wen to do anything else as the luxurious lineup of mythical pets killed the remaining black dragons. Indeed, it's difficult for those who aren't in the know, but it's not difficult for those who do. Knowledge is power. If I had known that these nine black dragons had such a relationship and weakness, I wouldn't have waited until today to kill them. The saying of the forefathers is right. Know yourself and your enemy and you will never be defeated. Zhou Wen sighed at the importance of knowledge. Killed a mythical creature, True Blood Demon Dragon. Discovered Dimensional Crystal. After the True Blood Demon Dragons were killed, notices kept coming in. Finally, a True Blood Demon Dragon dropped a Dimensional Crystal with 80 strength. It was very high level and valuable, but Zhou Wen couldn't use it now. There are only two Black Dragons left. Zhou Wen was still looking forward to having a Black Dragon Companion Egg drop. However, even when the last black dragon was penetrated by demonic neonate's sword, it failed to drop a companion egg. Instead, another dimensional crystal dropped, an essence energy skill crystal. Zhou Wen picked up the essence energy skill crystal and realized that the stat requirement was 41 strength and 21 fire stat. It was different from the true blood demon dragon crystal he had previously obtained. With his strength and fire stat lacking, Zhou Wen had no choice but to give it up. Zhou Wen was already used to it, so he didn't feel the pinch. Seeing that his companion beasts weren't injured, 
he led them towards the war wagon. Now that the nine black dragons weren't disturbing him, Zhou Wen wanted to give it a try to see if he could kill the guardian in the war wagon. This was the hope for Slaughterer Life Soul's advancement. After opening the door, Zhou Wen entered with his companion beasts and saw the cocoon floating in the void. He wasn't in a rush to approach it. Zhou Wen used his eyes of penetration to look at the cocoon, hoping to see what the creature inside looked like. Something strange happened. The white cocoon was clearly right in front of him, but the light of penetration seemed to be separated from the white cocoon by a massive distance. No matter how hard he tried, his vision couldn't reach the white cocoon. Zhou Wen immediately recalled that he had encountered the same situation when he first entered. Back then, he had wanted to pierce through the white cocoon to extract the blood, but he couldn't touch the white cocoon no matter what. It was only because of the characteristics of the Overlord Sword that he could tear through space and touch the white cocoon in the void. Light of penetration clearly didn't have such characteristics, so it was impossible to reach the white cocoon. Since we are going to fight, there's no point in watching. Zhou Wen summoned the Golden Overlord Sword and slashed out a sword beam that tore through the void and headed straight for the white cocoon. Chapter 746 Fingers With the augmentation of Ever Victorious and Unstoppable, the Golden Sword Beam tore through the white cocoon shell. As the cocoon cracked, Zhou Wen saw a palm extend out of the white cocoon. It was a man's palm with long and powerful fingers. Zhou Wen could clearly see that there were six fingers on the palm, but the layout of the six fingers didn't seem out of place. It was about the same as a normal palm. There was a different ring on each of the six fingers. The design and material seemed to be different. As he could only see the palm, he didn't know what the rings looked like from the front. Just as the golden sword aura was about to strike the palm, an invisible fluctuation seemed to ripple from one of the rings. Wherever the fluctuations passed, time and space seemed to freeze. Countless dust fragments froze, as the golden sword aura stopped in front of his palm. Although the golden sword aura was less than an inch away from the palm, it was unable to advance any further. It wasn't just the golden sword aura. Zhou Wen's pets were affected by the fluctuations. Although they tried to resist the fluctuations, it was to no avail. Apart from Tyrant Behemoth being able to move thanks to absolute strength, most of the companion beasts were in a frozen state. Companion beasts at Torch Dragon and Truth Listener's level found it difficult to move amidst the fluctuations. The blood-colored avatar was also immobilized. Zhou Wen felt that the blood-colored avatar's bodily functions had stopped circulating. Its essence energy seemed to freeze, as it was completely unable to move according to commands. Tyrant Behemoth roared as it charged at the white cocoon and threw a punch at the palm with six fingers. The frozen dust and golden sword aura were shattered by Tyrant Behemoth's fist. Just as Tyrant Behemoth was about to strike the palm, another ring on the palm flickered. Boom! Tyrant Behemoth punched Torch Dragon's body and immediately sent Torch Dragon's huge body flying. It caused blood to spray out of Torch Dragon's body. Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. Tyrant Behemoth had clearly struck the white cocoon, but for some reason, its fist struck Torch Dragon's body. It looked like a spatial dislocation skill. From the looks of it, the guardian in the white cocoon has spatial skills, Zhou Wen thought to himself. Tyrant Behemoth continued its violent attacks, but every time its fist struck the white cocoon, it would strangely strike a companion. After a few punches, the palm in the white cocoon didn't suffer any damage. Instead, Zhou Wen's companion beasts were beaten up by Tyrant Behemoth. After watching for a while, Zhou Wen was certain that the Guardian was definitely a spatial expert. Once Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength timer ran out, it was immobilized by the spatial fluctuations. At that moment, a void that resembled a black hole appeared in the palm of the palm. It sucked in the companion beasts and the blood-colored avatar before the game's screen went black. A Guardian with spatial attributes has abilities, like spatial solidification, spatial fold, and black hole. Tyrant Behemoth can fight it while using absolute strength. Zhou Wen organized the clues he knew, hoping to find a way to counter it. I wonder if Lost Country's spatial powers will be of some use. After some thought, Zhou Wen realized that unless Torch Dragon used Bright Torch Vision World from the beginning, it would be very difficult to kill the Guardian. Why are Guardians so strong? Are there no weak Guardians that can allow me to kill for the advancement of my life souls? Zhou Wen waited for some time. After all his cooldowns were over, he dripped his blood to respawn and enter the game again. The nine black dragons in the underground sea had yet to respawn. The war wagon was still parked at the bottom of the sea, but the door had been closed. Zhou Wen didn't summon any other pets other than Explosive Fiend Man. Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength couldn't be used yet. Therefore, Zhou Wen didn't think of killing the Guardian this time. He just wanted to see if his God Fiend era was useful when fighting the Guardian. Zhou Wen got Explosive Fiend Man to plant time bombs all over the war wagon one after another. After more than an hour, the war wagon was covered with time bombs. Under Zhou Wen's orders, the huge war wagon exploded like an atomic bomb. 
It formed a terrifying shockwave at the bottom of the sea, producing a huge jellyfish-like cavity. Zhou Wen had severely underestimated the might of the explosion. He had already retreated to a hundred meters away, but he still died from the blast. The game screen went black. Is the war wagon's energy so massive? Zhou Wen was somewhat surprised. When he arrived in front of the war wagon again, it had already recovered to its original state. Zhou Wen began getting explosive fiend man to plant time bombs around the entire wagon. This time, Zhou Wen had experience. He retreated far away and watched from a distant bank. With a command, explosive fiend man ignited all the time bombs. Zhou Wen, who was standing by the bank, saw the waves churning before they stirred up a tsunami-like wave. Ignoring the winds and shock waves, Zhou Wen immediately dived into the sea. However, when he saw the war wagon, he was slightly taken aback. Such a terrifying explosion had failed to blast through it. The war wagon's outer shell was damaged, but it was undergoing automatic self-repair. It didn't take long for it to recover to its original state. Seeing that it was impossible to blast the war wagon and the guardian inside to death, Zhou Wen had no choice but to open the door and rush in. This time, Zhou Wen used the God Fiend Era Essence Energy Art. The Lost Country ring appeared on his finger before he slashed at the White Cocoon. After the White Cocoon was sliced apart, the palm appeared again. The spatial fluctuations caused everything around it to fall silent again. The blood-colored avatar's body was no exception. However, it was somewhat different this time. Although the blood-colored avatar couldn't move, the God Fiend Era's Essence Energy Art continued flowing. This meant that Zhou Wen could still use Essence Energy skills and other abilities. Without any hesitation, Zhou Wen used Lost Country's spatial teleportation ability and teleported into the White Cocoon. He wanted to see what the Guardian inside the White Cocoon looked like. However, when Zhou Wen teleported, he realized that he wasn't able to teleport into the White Cocoon as he wished. Instead, he appeared in front of the palm. What awaited him was a black hole that had already opened in the palm. In the next second, the game screen went black again. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and understood what was going on. The other party was a spatial expert and his lost country was only a primordial life soul. The difference in level was too great. It was already pretty good that he hadn't been sent into the black hole when he used spatial teleportation. Chapter 741 Duel However, Zhou Wen wasn't discouraged. Instead, he felt that this might be an opportunity. With this guardian around, it was equivalent to having another spatial expert as a sparring partner. Perhaps there was a chance to improve lost country. Zhou Wen dripped his blood to revive and once again entered the game to challenge the guardian. He naturally suffered a crushing defeat, but Zhou Wen also sensed the influence the other party's spatial powers had on him. Through watching and personally experiencing the various spatial type skills of the Guardian, Zhou Wen gained a lot more insight into spatial type skills. No matter how much he had studied in the past, it was only theoretical knowledge. It was very rare to have such an opportunity to experience it. While Zhou Wen was repeatedly dying from gaming, Xiao Luchuan came to the East Courtyard again and mentioned the battle he had scheduled with Zhou when on the peak of Forbidden City. You should know that Forbidden City is a forbidden zone of our Xia family. Outsiders are not allowed to enter, said Old Master Xia. I know, but I also wish to fight him there. Xia Luchuan didn't explain much. In that case, so be it. However, defeat is not an option. No matter what, Zhou Wen can't leave Forbidden City again, said Old Master Xia indifferently. Xia Luchuan didn't say anything and just bowed slightly. Let's set it to be in four days. There are still problems in Forbidden City that need handling. You should head back and prepare for now, Old Master Xia said. Zhou Wen was grinding when he suddenly heard his phone ring. It was none other than Wang Lu. You really agreed to battle Xia Luchuan? Zhou Wen heard Wang Lu's voice the moment he picked up the phone. Yes, Zhou Wen replied. To battle a Xia family member in the Imperial Capital and in the Forbidden City which they control? Are you ignoring what Grandma said to you? Wang Lu said anxiously. Don't worry. I have my own plans. Nothing will go wrong. All right, let's just end it here. I have a call coming in. I'll answer it first. Zhou Wen picked up the other call as he spoke. It was from Ouyang Lan. Little one, did you really agree to a duel with Xiao Luchuan in Forbidden City? Don't be afraid. If you were forced by the Xiao family, I'll be able to help you. Ouyang Lan said. Sis Lan, the Xiao family didn't force me. I did it willingly. Don't worry. I can handle it. Zhou Wen felt touched when he heard Ouyang Lan. Although they were not related by blood, Ouyang Lan was indeed very concerned about him. Little one, your father only has you as a son. We won't be able to have children in the future. You need to think twice before doing everything. Don't risk your life. Tell me if there are any problems. I'll help you resolve them. Ouyang Lan didn't quite believe Zhou Wen. She remained very worried. 
Sislan, there's really no need for you to worry. It's not convenient to speak on the phone. However, I have the ability to protect myself. Nothing will go wrong. Zhou Wen was afraid that his phone was bugged, so he didn't dare inform Ouyang Luan about his possession of the invisibility cloak. Ouyang Luan pleaded with Zhou Wen a few more times before his phone rang, bringing an end to his phone call with Ouyang Luan. It was in Sheng. He was clearly aware that Zhou Wen was going to duel with Xiao Lu Chuan. However, he didn't persuade Zhou Wen not to fight. I'm already on my way to the Imperial Capital. Is there anything I need to do in advance? And Shun said simply, Don't come. I'm leaving the Imperial Capital soon. Zhou Wen hurriedly said, I'll wait for you outside the Imperial Capital. And Shun said, Don't do it near the Imperial Capital. Let's have it somewhere far away. Zhou Wen knew that he couldn't stop in Shun. All right, I'll think of a way to inform you when the time comes. And Shun hung up after saying that. This news quickly spread in the Imperial Capital. Anyone who was in the know felt that Zhou Wen was courting death. Ignoring the fact that Xiao Lu Chuan was a rare genius in the Xia family, just the fact that he was dueling someone from the Xia family in their territory made people place their bets against Zhou Wen. Du Gu and Zhang Chunqiu were in the imperial capital, so they naturally heard the news. This battle will give us a perfect opportunity to see how much strength that Guardian Ray's loser has, Zhang Chunqiu said with a smile. It looks like your divination wasn't accurate at all. You actually let Xiao Lu Chuan get the Guardian, said Du Gu. Zhang Chunqiu smiled and said, Destiny is unpredictable. Don't take my divination seriously. I'm just spouting nonsense. Then do some more divinations. Who will win in the duel between Zhou Wen and Loser? Dugugu said. Based on my divination, the Xia family will definitely not lose. Zhang Chunqiu said. Dugugu glanced at Zhang Chunqiu in contempt before returning to his room. Zhou Wen had already received Xia Liuquan's notice to fight in Forbidden City in four days. However, only Zhou Wen was allowed to enter. Zhou Wen had no choice but to contact Wang Lu, hoping to leave the antelope and chick with her. You hung up so quickly just now. Why am I in your sights again? Wang Lu said angrily. It was my stepmother. Do you think I could reject her call? Zhou Wen consoled. Zhou Wen, you know about the Xia family. You really shouldn't have agreed to the duel with Xia Lu Chuan. Xia Lu Chuan might not be famous, and his fame might not be comparable to the younger generations John and Lance, but this person is definitely much more terrifying than Lance. He's someone who has truly survived countless life and death situations. He's different from those elites who were brought up in safe environments. Wan Lu continued. Although Xia Lu Chuan is known as the most profligate scion of the Xia family, his talent and social connection aren't inferior to Antianzwa's. My grandmother met him when he was six. Back then, old master Xia took him to the ancient sword tomb to play. At that time, a mythical sword happened to appear. Xia Lu Chuan, who was only six years old, saw the battle between the mythical sword and humans, and actually comprehended a mythical sword technique. His talent in combat is terrifying. If he's not strong, it would be meaningless. Zhou Wen said with a smile. He just didn't want Wang Lu to be too worried. If it were anywhere else, it wouldn't be a problem for you to fight Xia Lu Chuan. However, that's Forbidden City. How can you fight Xia Lu Chuan there? Even if you defeat him, it will be difficult for you to walk out. Wang Lu sighed. Don't worry. If I, Zhou Wen, want to leave, no one in the Federation can stop me. Zhou Wen said with certainty. Wang Lu knew that it was too late to say anything now. Zhou Wen had already accepted the challenge, so it was too late for regrets. For days quickly passed. The Xia family took the initiative to send a car to pick Zhou Wen up, but Zhou Wen rejected them. He carried the wooden log and walked towards Forbidden City. It wasn't that he didn't want to take the car, but the car couldn't fit the log. Chapter 742 Pure Hook Evil Slaying Zhou Wen arrived in front of Forbidden City city gates and saw many people gathered outside. They were all here to watch the battle, but because the city gates were sealed, no one could enter. The Meridian Gate was tightly shut with people from the Xia family standing guard outside. Forbidden City had four city gates, but usually, only Meridian Gate could be opened. The other three city gates needed a certain opportunity for their opening, so the only way to enter and exit Forbidden City was through the Meridian Gate. Zhou Wen, young master Xia is already waiting for you in the city. Please enter. A Xia family guard said to Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen was about to walk in with a log when he was stopped by the guard. People can enter, but things have to be left outside. The guard said, as he pointed at the log on Zhou Wen's shoulder. Does your Xia family have to take away their opponent's weapons before a battle? Zhou Wen said indifferently. The moment Zhou Wen said that, the onlookers roared with laughter. Although they didn't believe that Zhou Wen really used such a huge club as a weapon, it didn't stop them from feeling contempt towards the Xia family's high-handedness. Let him in. 
a middle-aged man on top of the city gate said to the guard. Only then did the guard let Joe when enter the city with the log. Old master, is it really a good idea to let him in like this? If there's really something wrong with the log as Lu Chuan said, wouldn't it be very disadvantageous for him? The middle-aged man said to old master Xia, who was sitting at the top of the city gate to watch the battle. It's fine. This is Forbidden City. Even if Ling Zongjing is hidden in that log, he won't be able to escape and scathe today. Old Master Xia said calmly. On a tall building in the distance of Forbidden City, Shin Yuchi was looking at the situation around Meridian Gate with his binoculars. He couldn't enter Forbidden City. He probably wouldn't be able to see anything even if he went to the Meridian Gate. Si Yuan, what's your take regarding this battle's outcome? Shin Yuchi asked Xiao Si Yuan when he saw Zhou would enter the Meridian Gate. I believe regardless of the outcome today, it will be very difficult for Zhou when to walk out of Forbidden City. Xiao Si Yuan replied. Shen Yuchi didn't comment as he continued using his binoculars to observe the situation inside Forbidden City. However, there was a mysterious interference from Forbidden City. They could only see the area above the buildings, but not the actual situation inside. Zhou Wen walked through the Meridian Gate and saw five white compounds leading to the Gate of Supreme Harmony. Xiao Lu Chuan was standing in front of it. Passing through the Gate of Supreme Harmony was the Hall of Supreme Harmony. However, it was unknown if the layout of the city had changed after the dimensional storms. Zhou Wen looked around but didn't see any dimensional creatures. There's no need to look around. There are no dimensional creatures in Forbidden City. You can fight me with all your might without worry, Xiao Lu Chuan said. That's great. However, since it's the final battle at the peak of Forbidden City, let's fight at a higher spot. I think it's quite high there. Why don't we head there? Zhou Wen said as he pointed in the direction of a corner tower. There's no need to go through so much trouble, Xiao Lu Chuan said as a sword appeared in his hand. This sword's name is Ancient Pure Hook. It's a mythical companion beast. I believe you also have a mythical companion beast, so I won't hide it. With that said, Xiao Lu Chuan thrust his sword at Zhou Wen. He was a straightforward person who fought without any hesitation. The sword beam was like snow. His body and sword seemed to instantly appear in front of Zhou Wen at an unbelievable speed. Although Zhou Wen was proficient in movement techniques, it was impossible for him to dodge such a fast sword while carrying such a heavy log. Therefore, he could only draw his saber to fend off the attack. Clang. The saber and sword collided. Zhou Wen's body remained motionless, but Xiao Lu Chuan was forced to take a few steps back. It wasn't that Zhou Wen's strength was stronger than Xiao Lu Chuan's, but that the log he was carrying was too heavy. It pressed down on his body, stopping him from retreating. Although Xiao Lu Chuan retreated, he didn't lose his balance. He tapped the ground with his toe and thrust his sword forward again. His sword technique was swift and fierce like a ghost. Zhou Wen's saber techniques weren't slow either. He held the log with one hand and brandished his saber with the other. The saber and sword constantly clashed, and Zhou Wen advanced step by step, gradually approaching the gate of Supreme Harmony. Zhou Wen wanted to try his luck at the Hall of Supreme Harmony. After all, it was the most honorable place in the city. It was most likely the peak of Forbidden City. Furthermore, there was only one Hall of Supreme Harmony, but there were four corner towers. If the Hall of Supreme Harmony didn't work, it wouldn't be too late for him to consider trying the corner towers. To be able to master such a mature and steady saber technique at such a young age, this show what is indeed extraordinary. Old Master Xiao narrowed his eyes, as though he was admiring a treasure. Zhou Wen once defeated John who had a contract with the Guardian. His strength is indeed extraordinary. Furthermore, according to our investigations, he definitely has more than two mythical companion beasts. The middle-aged man said. The stronger he is, the better. Old Master Xiao smiled. Zhou Wen originally hoped to fight all the way to the front of the Hall of Supreme Harmony, but Xiao Luchuan clearly wouldn't be suppressed by him the entire time. Xiao Luchuan's figure suddenly changed as he appeared behind Zhou Wen like a phantom, stabbing at his back. Zhou Wen was just too slow while carrying the wooden log. He didn't have the time to turn around, but he didn't plan on doing so anyway. He swung his saber and blocked Xiao Luchuan's strike. The log on your body is too heavy. Why don't you put it down so that we can fight? Xiao Luchuan didn't continue attacking as he looked at Zhou Wen's back. I'll naturally put it down when it's time to put it down. Zhou Wen turned around and said to Xiao Luchuan. Xiao Luchuan didn't say anything else. However, the pure hook sword in his hand emitted a strange glow. It was like a holy sword that made people have the urge to prostrate themselves in worship. This time, Xiao Luchuan attacked again, but it wasn't that easy to deal with. When the bamboo blade and the pure hook sword met, Zhou Wen felt his palm shake as he involuntarily took a few steps back. The bamboo blade nearly flew out of his hand. The pure hook sword is known as the exalted peerless sword. 
It can bestow me with power at the mythical stage. Xiao Luchuan said, as he brandished his sword again. With a thought from Zhou Wen, Dr. Darkness transformed into a soul and attached to him. Zhou Wen brandished his saber to fend him off again. Although he was still set retreating by the pure hook sword, he wasn't as pathetic as before. Just show me what you've got. There's no need to hide it. Zhou Wen said, as he held his saber. As you wish. Xiao Luchuan waved his left hand, and another sword appeared in his hand. This sword was different from the pure hook sword. It was a small sword that was about 60 centimeters long. It wasn't as beautiful as the pure hook sword, as though it carried a sense of resentment. The sword's name is Evil Slang. It's also a mythical companion beast. I've cultivated for so many years, and most of my techniques are delivered through these two swords. Xiao Luchuan said, as he glanced at the sword in his hand with a glazed look. Chapter 743 Sword Warp Zhou Wen felt that Xiao Liuchuan's aura changed once he had two swords in hand. His expression couldn't help but turn solemn. The sword in Xiao Liuchuan's hand finally moved, but his body didn't move. The evil slaying sword flew over and stabbed at Zhou Wen in a flash, as though it was about to penetrate his right eye. Zhou Wen brandished his saber and slashed, sending the evil slaying sword flying. However, Xiao Luchuan and his pure hook sword arrived in front of Zhou Wen. The bamboo blade had just slashed out, preventing it from being retractable in time. Zhou Wen abruptly crouched and dodged the pure hook sword's thrust. At the same time, the log smashed down on Xiao Liuchuan's head. Suddenly, Xiao Liuchuan's figure flashed and vanished in front of Zhou Wen. As for the pure hook sword, it turned from a stab into a slash that was aimed at Zhou Wen's neck. Xiao Luchuan arrived beside the evil slaying sword through some unknown means. He grabbed it with one hand and stabbed it down at Zhou Wen's back. Zhou Wen brandished his saber to fend off the pure hook sword, but he no longer had the time to block the evil slaying sword behind him. Clang! A scalpel appeared behind Zhou Wen and blocked the evil slaying sword's attack as Dr. Darkness separated from Zhou Wen's body. As for Zhou Wen, he had also switched to the Ancient Sovereign Sutra and fused with the Defy Ancient Sovereign. His body became filled with energy as he used the Demon Dragon True body, allowing him to gain mythical combat strength for a short period of time. He forcefully sent the Pure Hook Sword flying. After sending the Pure Hook Sword flying, Zhou Wen turned around and slashed at Xiao Luchuan. Xiao Liuchuan's expression remained unchanged as the evil slaying sword in his hand continued stabbing at Zhou Wen. It was as though he hadn't seen Dr. Darkness's scalpel or Zhou Wen's bamboo blade. If the two of them continued the trajectories of their thrust, the scalpel and bamboo blade would hit Xiao Luchuan, while the evil slaying sword would pierce through Zhou Wen's chest. Zhou Wen used bamboo blade to block the evil slaying sword, but Xiao Liuchuan's figure vanished. He appeared beside the pure hook sword that had been sent flying and grabbed it for another Midair slash. Xiao Liuchuan's figure kept moving about as though he was performing a magic trick. He appeared beside the evil slaying sword one moment and appeared beside the pure hook sword the next moment. This teleportation wasn't as simple as being fast. It was similar to Lost Country's teleportation, but there were no restrictions on the teleportation. However, he didn't have as much freedom as teleportation. It could be seen that Xiao Luchuan could only move between the two swords. Although that was the case, it was already difficult for Zhou Wen to deal with him. Xiao Luchuan used two swords and constantly moved back and forth like a ghost. It made Zhou Wen feel that it was harder than fighting three mythical opponents at the same time. The most uncomfortable thing was that he couldn't fight Xiao Luchuan because Xiao Luchuan could move to the side of another sword at any time. If he attacked, he wouldn't be able to injure Xiao Luchuan and would only end up being injured by him. Zhou Wen and Dr. Darkness joined forces, but they were still suppressed by Xiao Luchuan. They had no chance of charging to the gate of supreme harmony. If I wasn't carrying such a huge object, I wouldn't be at such a disadvantage. Zhou Wen was best at movement techniques. However, the log prevented him from using the movement techniques he was good at. It was extremely uncomfortable fighting. Liu Chuan's sword warp technique has improved. The middle-aged man praised. Sword warp requires talent, and it's easy to learn but difficult to master. Liu Chuan likes such techniques, but there's actually not much need for it. The time spent would be better spent on guardians. Old Master Xia said calmly. Although Old Master Xia didn't approve of Xiao Lu Chuan spending all his time on the sword warp technique, Zhou Wen was now quite depressed from being suppressed by it. This sword warp technique was like an illusion. Under Xiao Liu Chuan's usage, it was unpredictable and dazzling. Zhou Wen thought to himself, letting this continue wouldn't work. Since I've already entered Forbidden City, there's no need to fight him. I should quickly place the log on the Hall of Supreme Harmony and give it a try. Without any hesitation, Zhou Wen summoned the Great Might Vidra Bull. The moment the Great Might Vidra Bull came out, it shook the bell on its neck. Once the soul suppression bell rang, Xiao Luchuan immediately felt dizzy. 
the two swords fell from the sky with him. Zhou Wen took this opportunity to get Dr. Darkness to possess him again as he charged in the direction of the Gate of Supreme Harmony. However, after running a few steps, a sword beam flashed. Zhou Wen tilted his head and saw the evil slaying sword fly past his ear. Xiao Lu Chuan instantly moved to the side of the evil slaying sword and slashed at Zhou Wen's face with it. Zhou Wen swiped up his saber and clashed with Xiao Liu Chuan's evil slaying sword several times. Xiao Liu Chuan's sword techniques were unpredictable, so Zhou Wen wasn't able to gain any advantage. The Great Might the Draw Bowl turned around to help Zhou Wen, but the moment it turned around, Xiao Liu Chuan appeared behind the Great Might the Draw Bowl like a phantom. He held the pure hook sword and stabbed the Great Might the Draw Bowl's buttocks. Moo! The Great Might the Draw Bowl's pupils constricted as it raised its hind legs and kicked Xiao Liu Chuan. In response, Xiao Liu Chuan waved his hand and threw the pure hook sword at Zhou Wen. At the same time, he warped to the side of the evil slaying sword and continued fighting Zhou Wen with it. The entire process was like a magic show. If not for the great might Bidra Bull's powerful physique, any ordinary person would have been killed by Xiao Lu Chuan. As Zhou Wen blocked the evil slaying sword, he summoned the golden overlord sword. However, he didn't have any spare hands to use it. All he could do was let the golden overlord sword attack autonomously in its original form. The great might Bidra Bull used its life soul and transformed into the thousand-handed, bull-headed state. Golden light shot out from its palm as it attempted to kill Xiao Lu Chuan. However, Xiao Lu Chuan was one with his two swords. He constantly teleported and fought, making it seem harder to fight him than simultaneously fighting three people. Zhou Wen, together with the Great Might Bidra Bull and the Golden Overlord Sword, failed to gain the upper hand. What swordplay do you practice? Why aren't you a magician? Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed. He originally didn't want to be too ostentatious, but now that he couldn't escape Xiao Lu Chuan, he had no choice but to think of other solutions. Should I let Tyrant Behemoth fight? Zhou Wen considered Tyrant Behemoth. It had already appeared on the rankings, so exposing it didn't matter much. Carrying such a heavy piece of wood, Zhou Wen really couldn't escape Xiao Lu Chuan. Without any hesitation, he summoned Tyrant Behemoth. Boom! Tyrant Behemoth landed on the ground out of thin air, causing the ground to tremble. Tyrant Behemoth? It's actually Zhou Wen's companion beast? Old Master Xiao and the middle-aged man revealed looks of surprise. Many people were investigating the identity of Tyrant Behemoth's owner. Most people believed that Tyrant Behemoth was a companion beast of an expert in the West District, but they never expected it to be in Zhou Wen's hands. Outside Forbidden City, there was someone who was even more surprised than Old Master Xiao and company. It was Zhang Chuanqiu. Zhang Chuanqiu had used his heavenly eye to see Tyrant Behemoth in Forbidden City. Furthermore, he knew very well that the Tyrant Behemoth Companion Egg had originally belonged to the Zhang family, but it had been smuggled out by a traitor. Chapter 744 Myriad Sword Formation After Tyrant Behemoth appeared, it directly activated absolute strength. Space distorted as the pure hook and evil slaying swords were attracted towards Tyrant Behemoth. Although Xiao Lu Chuan had tried his best to escape this situation, Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength was just too powerful. He couldn't escape the two mythical swords, as he flew towards Tyrant Behemoth with his sword. Zhou Wen didn't stop as he ran towards the Gate of Supreme Harmony without waiting for the outcome. Zhou Wen couldn't run fast while carrying the wooden log. Before he reached the Gate of Supreme Harmony, he suddenly heard a terrifying sound. The shock wave broke through the sound barrier and produced a terrifying sonic boom. Zhou Wen turned his head and saw Xiao Lu Chuan levitating in midair. He was wearing a strange black armor that resembled some kind of black jade. It also emitted a mysterious black light. Xiao Lu Chuan held pure hook and evil slang with both hands as he crossed them in front of him, blocking Tyrant Behemoth's punch. He wasn't sent flying. That's... Guardian. Zhou Wen could tell that the armor was somewhat odd. Its aura didn't seem like a companion beast, but resembled more of a guardian. Furthermore, Xiao Lu Chuan was able to withstand Tyrant Behemoth in its absolute strength state. This wasn't something an ordinary companion beast armor could do. Xiao Lu Chuan wasn't at a disadvantage when fighting Tyrant Behemoth. The two swords in his hands crisscrossed as he fought Tyrant Behemoth. When Zhou Wen saw that Xiao Lu Chuan didn't have the upper hand, he immediately continued running towards the Gate of Supreme Harmony. He had to first escape the log. Otherwise, even if the Guardian was in front of him, he wouldn't be able to kill the Guardian while carrying it. Zhou Wen rushed past the Gate of Supreme Harmony and couldn't help but stop. This was because after passing the gates, there were many people standing in the open space. There were probably more than 10,000 of them. The 10,000 people stood in a square formation on the empty ground. Each of them held a sword in their hands, but no one spoke. They were silent. Upon seeing Zhou Wen walk over, the eyes of the 10,000 people looked at him in unison. 
In front of the square formation stood a woman in black. She was none other than the Xia Xianyu whom Zhou Wen knew. Zhou Wen, why are you here instead of dueling Xia Luchuan? Xia Xianyu asked Zhou Wen. Ahem, I'm just taking a stroll. It's rare to come to the legendary Forbidden City. I want to see the legendary Hall of Supreme Harmony. Zhou Wen said with a light cough. It's best you go back and fight. Forbidden City isn't a place outsiders can enter as they wish. Xia Xianyu said. Since I'm already here, let me take a look. Zhou Wen naturally wasn't willing to retreat. Although the Xia family was already wary of him, he had to make an attempt on the Hall of Supreme Harmony regardless. Just as Zhou Wen took two steps forward, Xia Xianyu raised the ancient sword in her hand. The 10,000 people raised the sword in their hands at the same time. In an instant, countless sword beams surged into the sky and condensed towards the ancient sword in Xia Xuanyu's hand. With the augmentation of more than 10,000 ancient swords, the sword beam produced by the ancient sword in Xia Xuanyu's hand was already terrifying beyond imagination. Even the Golden Overlord sword paled in comparison. Zhou Wen could roughly tell that the ancient sword in Xia Xuanyu's hand was similar to the Golden Harp. They could gather some kind of power. The difference was that the Golden Harp allowed sound waves to resonate, while the ancient sword in Xia Xuanyu's hand could condense the sword beams of other sword-type companion beasts. Every sword in the sword formation of more than 10,000 people was probably an epic companion beast. With the augmentation of more than 10,000 sword beams, and the fact that the ancient sword might be at the mythical stage, the might of the sword was probably not inferior to a top-notch mythical creature. Zhou Wen, you should return to fight Xia Luchuan. Xia Xianyu said to Zhou Wen. What if I insist on touring Forbidden City? Zhou Wen walked towards the sword formation. Xia Xianyu slashed with her sword, as a terrifying sword beam slashed down like a heavenly river. It was difficult for Zhou Wen to dodge, so he could only use the Golden Overlord Sword's Golden Sword Aura to meet it. The Golden Sword Aura was indestructible. In the beginning, it had indeed sliced through the sword beam that resembled a heavenly river, but the sword beam seemed to pour down endlessly. Soon, it drowned the Golden Sword Aura. Xia Xianyu didn't really slash down. She retracted the ancient sword in her hand, and the sword beam circled back like a dragon before returning to the sword formation. Please return, Xia Xianyu said expressionlessly. With a thought, Zhou Wen turned around and left the gate of supreme harmony. The 10,000 sword formation was just too powerful. It would probably take quite some time to storm through it. Zhou Wen planned on heading to the unguarded building to give it a try to prevent any delays. When Xia Luchuan saw Zhou Wen come out, he had no intention of attacking him. He continued fighting Tyrant Behemoth. When Tyrant Behemoth used Absolute Strength, it could only fight Xia Luchuan to a draw. Once Absolute Strength ran out, it probably wouldn't be Xia Luchuan's match. Zhou Wen rushed to the corner tower and, when he arrived in front of it, he leaped up and jumped onto the city wall before jumping to the top of the corner tower. It wasn't that he didn't want to complete the jump in one try, but the log was too heavy. He couldn't do it with a single jump. Zhou Wen erected the log at the top of the corner tower and realized that there was no reaction. He tried to release the log and the word, slave, immediately appeared on his forehead. It's not here. Zhou Wen was somewhat disappointed as he carried the log down corner tower. He knew that this time, he could only attempt the myriad sword formation led by Xia Xianyu. It was highly likely that the peak of Forbidden City was the top of the Hall of Supreme Harmony. After this ordeal, absolute strength didn't have much time left. There were probably only about 10 minutes left. Xia Luchuan clearly wanted to defeat Tyrant Behemoth first, so he wasn't in a rush to chase after Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen passed through the door again and could already see the Hall of Supreme Harmony in front of him. However, with the myriad sword formation obstructing him, it was impossible to gain passage without destroying it. The 10,000 sword formations might is too powerful. Among my companion beasts, probably only Torch Dragon's Bright Torch Vision world can match it. If Truth Listener breaks two earrings, it might be able to put up a fight, but it's not convenient for either of them to be exposed. Zhou Wen thought of something as his eyes suddenly lit up. Zhou Wen, why are you back? Xia Xian Yu asked with a frown when she saw Zhou Wen running over. Xia Luchuan isn't my match. There's no point in fighting him. I still want to visit the Hall of Supreme Harmony, Zhou Wen said as he walked towards Xia Xianyu. Xia Xianyu raised her sword again without any hesitation. The sword formation regenerated as a terrifying sword beam emitted a terrifying might. From afar, it made one scalp tingle. With a thought, Zhou Wen summoned a companion beast. This companion beast wasn't Torch Dragon or Truth Listener, nor was it demonic neonate. Instead, it was a beautiful girl. She was unbelievably beautiful. She had long hair that made all women envious, and her eyes were extremely charming. It was as though a single glance would entrance one, preventing them from moving their eyes away. 
The Xia family disciples in the myriad sword formation couldn't help but look at the beautiful girl. Chapter 745 Eyes of Enticement Previously, Medusa had caused a stir on the peninsula of gods, letting the entire federation know of her existence. However, all the videos that people saw were of Medusa, the snake-haired Demonis. Not many had seen her maiden form. Furthermore, ever since Medusa had been killed, no new Medusa had passed through the spatial rift to enter the cursed demon palace. Therefore, the Sia family members didn't recognize the maiden Medusa. If they knew her, they definitely wouldn't dare to look at her or her eyes. Unlike the snake-haired Demonis, Medusa did not have the ability to petrify others. Her eyes of enticement needed others to see her eyes before they could be of use. At this moment, more than 10,000 Xia family disciples saw Medusa's eyes. Immediately, their bodies petrified as they turned pale with fright. Xia Xuanyue's expression changed drastically as she immediately realized the problem. She closed her eyes and slashed at Medusa. However, because many owners of epic swords had seen Medusa's eyes, their bodies slowly petrified. They were unable to circulate their essence energy, nor could they use the epic swords in their hands to cooperate with Xia Xianyu. This greatly reduced the might of Xia Xuanyu's sword beam. Zhou Wen held the Golden Overlord's sword and slashed out a sword beam to clash with Xia Xuanyu's sword beam. The ancient sword in Xia Xuanyu's hand was also transformed from a mythical companion beast. It wasn't inferior to the Golden Overlord's sword, but the stats of the Golden Overlord's sword were too domineering. When the sword beams collided, the ancient sword beam shattered due to the loss of the myriad sword formation's augmentation. The Golden Overlord sword sword beam continued slashing at Xia Xianyu. Xia Xianyu closed her eyes and shifted her body, dodging the golden sword aura. At the same time, she brandished her sword and attacked Zhou Wen. Her movement technique was the path to snatching heaven that Zhou Wen had seen before. Back then, Zhou Wen had fought Xia Xianyu, giving him the chance to advance the transcendent flying immortal to the divine level. In that battle, Xia Xianyu had also comprehended the profundity of the path to snatching heaven, allowing it to advance to the divine level as well. Now, Xia Xuanyu's path to snatching heaven had become more mature, giving her the boldness to snatch a path from heaven just her movement technique alone gave others a huge sense of oppression. As Zhou Wen was carrying the log, he was unable to use transcendent flying immortal to compete with Xia Xuanyu's path to snatching heaven. The Golden Overlord sword was a little clumsy and wasn't suitable for fighting Xia Xianyu. Zhou Wen threw the Golden Overlord sword out and allowed it to attack autonomously. He drew his bamboo blade and clashed with Xia Xuanyu's sword. Medusa retreated to the side under Zhou Wen's control. Her combat strength was very weak, so he was afraid that Xia Xuanyu's sword beam could kill her. It wasn't suitable for her to participate in the battle. However, Zhou Wen couldn't summon her back. This was because the eyes of enticement couldn't permanently petrify people. It required them to see her to remain petrified. If Zhou Wen were to unsummon her, those people would shortly recover from their petrified states. Although they were both petrification skills, Medusa's skill was eyes of enticement. Its nature was different from the eyes of petrification. Previously, when Zhou Wen had fought Medusa, Truth Listener's evil nullification could restrain the snake-haired Demonis' eyes of petrification, but it couldn't restrain the eyes of enticement. This was because the two had different attributes. Xia Xianyu thought that Zhou Wen had killed the 10,000 swordsmen. She was filled with grief as she no longer held back with the ancient sword in her hand. Together with the path to snatching heaven, she slashed at Zhou Wen again and again. Although my Xia family is big, among the younger generation, only Lu Chuan and Little Yu are promising talents. To be able to cultivate the path to snatching heaven to such a level, I'm afraid even Lu Chuan couldn't do it at her age, right? On the city gates, the middle-aged man sighed. A strange look flashed across old Master Xia's eyes, and he said calmly, Little Yu is very talented, but it's a pity that she's a girl and can't inherit the Xia family's business. The middle-aged man said. However, our Xia family can be considered extremely lucky, since little you can support Lu Chuan in the future. Zhang Chuanqiu was also paying attention to the battle in Forbidden City. When he saw Xia Xuanyu's movement technique, he couldn't help but praise. Excellent movement technique. Dugu, your movement technique isn't much better, right? Her movement technique isn't inferior to mine. Dugugu nodded. Dugugu couldn't see the situation inside Forbidden City, but when Zhou Wen entered the city, he had already secretly released some goo worms to sneak in. Using the information transmitted by the goo worms, he was also aware of the situation inside. Shin Yuchi and the others from the bureau had been using their binoculars to observe the situation inside the city. However, there was a mysterious force inside the city that prevented ordinary binoculars from seeing anything. They could only occasionally see terrifying sword beam shootout, but nothing else. Zhou Wen was rather familiar with the path to snatching heaven. Although he couldn't dodge, the bamboo blade in his hand blocked Xia Xuanyu's sword again and again. As he fought, 
he retreated in the direction of the Hall of Supreme Harmony. This show it is really impressive. He can actually withstand such amazing movement technique and sword technique despite carrying such a heavy piece of wood. Praise to Gugu. Don't you think that Zhou Wen seems to know Xia Xuan Yu's movement technique very well? It looks like he can predict the future. Zhang Chuanqiu said with narrowed eyes. Is it a special ability? I heard that there's a girl in the ultimate family clan who has the eye of Odin and can see through everything. Dugugu mused and said. No, I think it's more like Zhou Wen knows Xia Xuan Yu's movement technique very well. Zhang Chuanqiu said. Are you saying that Zhou Wen and Xia Xian Yu have something between them? Dugugu said straightforwardly. He wasn't like Zhang Chuanqiu who spoke half-truths. I only know that Zhou Wen definitely knows Xia Xuan Yu's movement technique very well. I don't know if there's anything between them. Zhang Chuanqiu said with a shrug. Up on the city gates, old master Xia and the middle-aged man also frowned. Clearly, they shared the same thoughts as Zhang Chuanqiu. Xia Xuan Yu's amazing path to snatching heaven was actually blocked by Zhou Wen's saber. It was as though he had predicted the future. This was definitely not something that could be explained by just having powerful saber techniques. Little Yu once represented our Xia family to be the witness for Zhou Wen's battle in Luoyang. Perhaps she crossed paths with him back then. Perhaps she fought Zhou Wen before and not because she deliberately leaked the path to snatching heaven. The middle-aged man said. Zhou Wen's understanding of the path to snatching heaven isn't as simple as exchanging blows. Old Master Xia said indifferently. Ah Chang, go and settle this matter. What about Lu Chuan? The middle-aged man Ah Chang was somewhat hesitant. I've given him too much time. Old Master Xia said expressionlessly. I know what to do. Ah Chung bowed slightly before jumping down the city gates and walking towards the gate of Supreme Harmony. When Xia Luchuan, who was fighting Tyrant Behemoth, saw Ah Chung coming down, his expression changed slightly. Chapter 746 Great Array Uncle Chung, I can handle it myself. You don't have to do anything. Xia Luchuan said. Sorry, Old Master can't wait any longer. As Ah Chung spoke, he continued walking towards the gate of Supreme Harmony. Soon, he passed through it and saw Zhou Wen fighting Xia Xian Yu. Little Yu, you can stand down. Leave this to me, said Ah Chung. Uncle Chung, I can handle it myself, Xia Xian Yu replied. This is Old Master's order, Ah Chung said. When Xia Xian Yu heard the words, Old Master, she had no choice but to back out from the battle and go to Ah Cheng's side. Ah Chung extended his hand, and a strange yellow talisman appeared. The moment it appeared, Golden runes lit up on the ground in front of the Hall of Supreme Harmony. It blanketed the huge space in golden light instantly. Zhou Wen immediately felt as though he had fallen into a huge vortex. The essence energy in his body was sucked out before rapidly flowing into the vortex. It wasn't just Zhou Wen himself. Even the companion beasts he summoned suffered the same fate. The Golden Overlord Sword and Medusa were rapidly drained of their essence energy. The petrified Xia family disciples and their epic companion beast swords didn't receive any special care. Zhou Wen hurriedly retracted Medusa and the Golden Overlord Sword. At the same time, he switched his essence energy art to the Tao Sutra. The heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder also appeared in his consciousness. Such an array formation was similar to the explosive fiend man's time bomb. It needed to be prepared ahead of time. Clearly, the Xia family was very careful and had prepared everything. Even if Xia Lu Chuan couldn't win, they could still kill Zhou Wen. With the appearance of the heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder, Zhou when immediately felt the essence energy in his body stop leaking. With a thought, he retracted Tyrant Behemoth, who was fighting Xiao Luchuan. Tyrant Behemoth's absolute strength was almost up. There was no need to continue fighting. We agreed on a duel. Isn't your Xiao family being too shameless? Zhou Wen pretended to be alarmed as he struggled to retreat. Ah Chung said indifferently, You are the one who didn't duel. How can you blame our Xiao family for not honoring our promise? All right, count yourselves lucky. I'll admit defeat, all right? Stop your array formation, Zhou Wen shouted as he retreated. He was already very close to the Hall of Supreme Harmony, less than 50 meters away. Any closer, and he would be able to jump onto the top of the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Unfortunately, Zhou Wen didn't know if the Hall of Supreme Harmony was the peak of Forbidden City, or if it could help him escape the log. It's already too late, Ah Chung said. It's easy for you to want my life. But don't tell me you have zero concern about the lives of the 10,000 Xia family members. Zhou Wen pointed at the petrified Xia family members. As Medusa had been unsummoned by Zhou Wen, their petrified bodies were gradually recovering. Seeing that they weren't dead, Xia Xian Yu couldn't help but heave a sigh of relief. She had thought that Zhou Wen had killed all of them, and was extremely furious. Only now did she realize that Zhou Wen hadn't really killed them. However, just like Zhou Wen, 
they were trapped in the array. Furthermore, they didn't have the protection of the heaven-opening scripture of the highest elder. Their essence energy was constantly devoured by the array. Before the petrification on their bodies completely subsided, their essence energy was nearly sucked dry. Xiao Luchuan walked over and said, Uncle Chung, stop. If this continues, they will all die. Ah Chung shook his head. Before dealing with Zhou Wen, the array can't be deactivated. Zhou Wen was still retreating. Having already retreated to the edge of the array, the light barrier formed at the edge of the array blocked his path. The thin layer of golden light was like a metal wall. Zhou Wen tried his best several times, but he failed to slam through it. Furthermore, as long as essence energy struck the barrier, it would immediately be absorbed by the barrier, making its defense even stronger. Zhou Wen was still fine. His essence energy hadn't really been sucked away. The Xia family's disciples didn't share his prowess. They were nearly drained dry. Some of them had already recovered from the petrification. They rushed to the edge of the array formation, but like Zhou Wen, no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't break through the barrier. Soon, their essence energy was sucked dry. After their essence energy was sucked dry, the array didn't let them off. Their essence, vitality, and spirit were extracted after their essence energy was drained. Their bodies aged at a speed visible to the naked eye. They looked extremely terrifying. Many Xia family members shouted in horror as they struggled to escape the hellish array. Xia Xuanyue's expression was complicated. She never expected to see such a scene. Furthermore, she was part of the reason why these people ended up like this. If she hadn't failed to stop Zhou Wen, A Cheng wouldn't have taken action. The ten thousands of Xia family members wouldn't have been trapped in the array. Uncle Cheng, I'm sorry. Xia Xian Yu gritted her teeth and suddenly brandished her sword, stabbing the yellow talisman in front of A Cheng. A Cheng never expected Xia Xian Yu to unsheathe her sword beside him. He was caught off guard as the yellow talisman was pierced by the sword beam. As the yellow talisman shattered, the array's golden light immediately cracked. The light barrier vanished as the golden runes on the ground dimmed. Little you. You? Ah Cheng's expression changed drastically. He wasn't worried that the array formation would release Zhou when after breaking, there was another reason. Xia Luchuan was also shocked. He turned to look in the direction of the city gate tower, and his body immediately trembled. Old Master Xia, who was sitting on the city gate tower watching the battle, had already disappeared. When he turned around, he realized that Old Master Xia was already standing in front of the Hall of Supreme Harmony with his hands behind his back. Zhou Wen was just about to forcefully break through the light barrier when he realized that it had suddenly vanished. Just as he was overjoyed and was about to rush up the Hall of Supreme Harmony, a figure appeared in front of it as though he had teleported. He stood at the end of the stairs and blocked his path. Zhou Wen took a careful look and saw that the person's body was majestic. He was about two meters tall and his hair was completely white. He looked like an elder, but his aura was extremely powerful. He didn't look like an elder at all. Zhou Wen's heart palpitated as though he had sensed an extremely dangerous aura. He couldn't help but feel alarmed. Who allowed you to destroy the array without permission? Old Master Xia didn't look at Zhou Wen, but his gaze landed on Xia Xianyu. Old Master, Xianyu didn't do it on purpose. She just couldn't bear to see the Xia family's members die. Xia Luchuan hurriedly pulled Xia Xianyu to kneel down and admit her mistake. Is that so? Old Master Xia glanced expressionlessly at the Xia family members, who had been drained of their vitality and had luckily escaped. Suddenly, Old Master Xia extended his hand and grabbed. Xia Xuanyu's body seemed to be grabbed by an invisible hand as she was instantly pulled in front of Old Master Xia. He had his hand on her head. On the ground, the golden runes appeared once again. The array was activated again, trapping everyone inside once more. Chapter 747 Heaven and Earth Origin Returning Formation The first to bear the brunt was the Xia family members. Their essence energy was already depleted and they had been innervated of their essence, vitality, and spirit. With the array's sudden suction, their bodies immediately bled as many of them collapsed to the ground. Apart from Zhou Wen and Old Master Xia, who weren't affected, even Xia Xuanyu's essence energy began to drain. Old Master, please let Xian Yu off. She won't make the same mistake again. Xia Luchuan pleaded. Old Master Xia had Xia Xuanyu's head in one hand, yet, she couldn't move at all. Even the mythical sword in her hand dropped to the ground, as her eyes were filled with horror. Old Master Xia said calmly, Don't think that you can do whatever you want just because you were born into the Xia family. The world is cold and heartless. Any mistake can lead to the downfall of a family. As the future leader of the Xia family, if you don't even understand this, you have no right to lead the Xia family. Please give Xian Yu another chance. Xia Luchuan slammed his head on the ground. Rules are rules. A volcano won't stop erupting because of your pleas, and time won't stop flowing because of pity. Rules have no feelings, 
and they are the most straightforward. It looks like you still don't understand what kind of cruel world you will face as the future leader of the Xia family. Old Master Xia didn't have any intention of letting Xia Xianyu off. Xia Xuanyu's essence energy was almost drained dry. Xia Liuquan's body trembled as he suddenly looked up. The evil slaying sword in his hand erupted with extreme strength as he stabbed at the golden light of the array. Lu Chuan! Ah Cheng's expression turned even uglier. He wanted to stop Xiao Lu Chuan, but it was already too late. Clang! The power of the evil slaying sword and the augmentation of Xiao Lu Chuan's protective armor failed to slice through the light barrier. Xiao Lu Chuan was alarmed, but in the next second, the pure hook sword in his other hand slashed out as well. The two swords slashed at the array in a frenzy, but it only caused the golden barrier to sway. It failed to slice through it. Instead, his essence energy was absorbed by the array, causing the golden light barrier to become even more terrifying. Old Master Xiao looked at Xiao Luchuan coldly and asked, Little Chuan, I dote on you the most. Are you going to betray me now? I only hope that you can spare Xian Yu. She's my sister. Xiao Liuquan's swords didn't stop as he continued slashing at the barrier. Seems like I need to reconsider the heir to the Xiao family. A cold glint flashed across old master Xiao's eyes as he clenched his fists. Suddenly, a sword beam slashed over. Old master Xiao raised his hand and grabbed it. The golden sword beam was sucked into his palm and vanished instantly. Instead, the essence energy on old master Xiao's body became even more majestic. At the same time, a suction force pulled Xiao Xianyu out. It was Zhou Wen's demonic astral wheel. You people from a large family sure know how to have fun. You can even make it sound so dignified by killing your descendants. You've really broadened my horizons today. Zhou Wen pulled Xia Xianyu to his side, but she wasn't in a good state. Her essence energy was constantly depleting, and she was almost drained dry. Zhou Wen summoned the heaven opening scripture. The scripture floated above his head, emitting an invisible force that blocked the array's suction force preventing any essence energy in a tiny area around him from being sucked into the array. To be able to withstand the power of the heaven and earth origin returning array, your talent and the essence energy art you cultivate, as well as your life providence and life soul, are indeed extraordinary. Old Master Xia didn't mind the sarcasm in Zhou Wen's words. All he did was stare at the heaven opening scripture above Zhou Wen's head and ask, That's your life soul, right? What's its name? Why should I tell you, you old sicko? Zhou Wen said with a smile. It's fine. Even if you don't tell me, I'll find out soon. Old Master Xia said as he spread out his palm. All the essence energy in the heaven and earth origin returning array gathered towards his palm. Instantly, there were tragic cries. Many of the Xia family disciples, who were struggling, died as they spat out blood. Their bodies were instantly sucked dry as they lost their essence, vitality, and spirit. As for Old Master Xia, after absorbing so much essence energy, his aura became extremely terrifying. The essence energy that seeped out of his body seemed to condense into something corporeal as it swayed on his body. The cracked essence energy made his skin seem transparent. Be it Xiao Luchuan and Ah Cheng, who were outside the heaven and earth origin returning array, or Zhou Wen and Xia Xianyu inside the array, they all felt their blood run cold. It wasn't that they had never seen a dead person, but more than 10,000 epic experts had died tragically. Furthermore, they were members of the Xia family. They had never seen anyone so crazy. Old master. Why are you doing this? This is destroying the Xia family. Xia Xian, you really couldn't understand why old master Xia would do this. There were more than 10,000 epic experts. Even among the six families, there weren't many who could gather that number of epic experts. Furthermore, they had been nurtured by old master Xia himself. Now, he had personally killed them. Xia Xian, you couldn't figure out why. With me around, the Xia family will never be destroyed. So what if there are more than 10,000 epic experts? I spent such a huge price to nurture them. They were originally only used as a stepping stone for my advancement to the mythical stage. Now that their mission has been completed, they have died a worthy death. The essence energy in old Master Xia's body was as terrifying as a volcanic eruption. Furthermore, his body seemed to be becoming younger. Even his white hair was gradually turning black. Advance to the mythical stage? Xia Xian you couldn't comprehend. Was it right to sacrifice so many people just to advance to the mythical stage? Furthermore, among the 10,000 epic experts, although most of them didn't share the Xia surname, many of them were blood-related members of the Xia family. If one doesn't enter the mythical stage, they will ultimately be mortal. No matter how powerful they are, there will be a day when they die. Only by advancing to the mythical stage can one break through the shackles of life like dimensional creatures and become a higher life form. Unfortunately, the human body is too weak. Their talent is too poor. 
Even someone as talented as me can't rely on the strength of a single person to advance to the mythical stage. Old Master Xia explained indifferently. I've studied many essence energy arts and combined them with the great Emperor Sutra passed down in our Xia family. I finally found a path to advance to the mythical stage. It's to pile up sand into a tower and refine rocks into gold. I gathered the bloodlines, talents, life providences, and life souls of many geniuses into one, allowing me to break through the limits of humanity and advance to the mythical stage. This is the only path I can take now. Zhou Wen was dumbfounded when he heard that. He finally knew why the Xia family had secretly attacked so many talented youths. It was all because of old Master Xia. Zhou had originally imagined that Wang Ming Yuan's advancement to the mythical stage was already very ruthless, but compared to old Master Xia's method, Wang Ming Yuan's advancement was as holy as an angel. Chapter 748 Old Master Xia By killing so many people, what's the difference between you and a devil like Jing Dao Xian? Aren't you afraid that the other five Federation families will join forces to attack you? Zhou Wen asked. Old Master Xia sneered and said, You killed these people. What has it got to do with me? I'll naturally kill you to avenge them. You will also become an important step in my advancement to the mythical stage. With that said, Old Master Xia extended his hand and grabbed at Zhou Wen and Xia Xianyu. At the same time, he continued, As a member of the Xia family, you should contribute to the Xia family. Return your bloodline's talent to me. A terrifying suction force was produced as Xia Xianyu and Zhou Wen involuntarily headed for Old Master Xia. This was the first time Zhou Wen had seen a human use such terrifying strength. His strength couldn't withstand the suction force. Together with the heaven-opening scripture, he moved in Old Master Xia's direction, his feet leaving two marks on the stone slabs on the ground. Xia Xianyu had expended too much essence energy and was in an even worse state. Her body had already flown up. Zhou Wen placed the log down with one hand and stabbed it into the ground. He used his other hand to hold Xia Xianyu back and thanks to the log, they finally stopped. The enemy of an enemy was a friend. Now, Xiao Luchuan and Xia Xian you were probably going to completely fall out with old Master Xia. Perhaps, he could use their strength later. Although Xia Xian you no longer had any combat strength, Xiao Luchuan was still outside. Furthermore, he had a guardian with him. Perhaps, he could use his strength to rush out of the heaven and earth origin returning array. Otherwise, in this array, any companion beast's essence energy would be drained. The more companion beasts summoned, the stronger the augmentation old Master Xia would receive. He had to rush out first. That old sicko has absorbed the life providence and life souls of countless geniuses. He has also absorbed the essence energy and life essence of more than 10,000 epic experts. His strength is unfathomable. Speaking of which, even a tiger will not eat its cubs. Yet, this old sicko wants to devour his descendants. Why doesn't the heavens strike him to death with lightning? Zhou would place Xia Xianyu behind the log and got her to hug it. He held the golden overlord sword and slashed out sword beams at the old sicko hoping to temporarily stop his suction force so that he could rush out of the heaven and earth essence origin returning array with the log. However, the golden sword aura that Zhou Wen slashed out was sucked in by the old sicko. Not only did it fail to injure him, but it also became a tonic for him. I refuse to believe that you can suck everything. Zhou Wen summoned the great might Bidra bull and made it shake the soul suppression bell. However, the soul suppressing bell's chime couldn't stir old master Xia's soul. It didn't make him dizzy at all. Instead, as the great might Bidra bull was too big in size, the power of the heaven-opening scripture couldn't envelop it completely. Its essence energy quickly drained as its body moved towards old master Xia's palm. The great might Bidra bull struggled with all its might, but it was unable to stop itself from sliding towards old master Xia. Its four hooves sank into the stone slab, but it didn't stop its slide towards old master Xia, scaring the great might Bidra bull into mooing. Zhou Wen hurriedly summoned it back and didn't dare release it again. Don't use companion beasts. He has absorbed countless life providences and life souls. He can absorb any type of essence energy for his own use. Companion beasts are condensed from essence energy. The power of any companion beast will be of help to him. Xiao Luchuan warned Zhou Wen loudly from outside. How can I rush out without a companion beast? Zhou Wen hurriedly asked. Since you insist on dying, come in and join them. Old Master Xiao snorted coldly. Xiao Luchuan had already used his fist to strike the light barrier of the array, but he suddenly felt the area in front of him empty out. He had already fallen into the array. Old Master Xia used his other hand to grab and suck at Xiao Luchuan. Xia Luchuan's body immediately slid towards him. Xia Luchuan didn't retreat. He gritted his teeth and threw a punch at Old Master Xia. Guardians were life forms and not pure energy. They were somewhat different from companion beasts. The guardian's strength should be able to be of some use against Old Master Xia. 
Boom! Old Master Xiao's palm collided with Xiao Liuquan's fist and was forced back a few steps. The suction force immediately vanished. I'll hold him back. Take Xian Yu and leave. Xiao Luquan threw another punch at Old Master Xiao and shouted. Brother, I'm counting on you. Xiao Wen picked up the log and ran with Xiao Xian Yu. Xiao Xian Yu was still somewhat hesitant, but Zhou Wen immediately said. It'll be easier for your brother to run if we run. If you stay a minute longer, your brother will be in greater danger. Xiao Xian Yu naturally understood this principle. She gritted her teeth and ran to the edge of the array formation with Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen attacked the array, but when his strength struck the barrier, it was absorbed by the barrier preventing it from cracking. Essence energy related skills won't do, but I wonder if pure physical strength works? Zhou Wen didn't think too much about it, as he forcefully switched to the Defy Ancient Sovereign Life Soul. He used the Demon Dragon True Body, and endured the loss of essence energy, as he threw a punch at the barrier. Boom! The barrier trembled. Although it wasn't shattered, it gave Zhou Wen hope. Pure physical strength was indeed effective against the Heaven and Earth Origin Returning Array. Zhou Wen didn't hesitate as he punched the barrier, again and again, hoping to penetrate it and escape the heaven and earth origin returning array. Xiao Luquan was attacking old master Xia crazily, but all his attacks were easily dodged by old master Xia, like a cat teasing a mouse. I gave you everything you have, and I taught you all your techniques. How dare you attack me? Old master Xia easily dodged Xia Luquan's attack and stared at him coldly. Xia Luquan didn't say a word and just kept attacking. In the past, old master Xia had indeed doted on him. In the past, he had indeed treated old master Xia as his closest kin, even closer than his own parents. It wasn't until the year he turned 15 that he accidentally saw old master Xia suck his talented cousin dry. From then on, he rarely went to the east courtyard. I originally thought that you were a little different from the others, but it looks like you're just a beast that will ultimately remain mortal. Forget it. With you as my last cornerstone, my raising of you for so many years wasn't in vain. Old master Xia actually made a move. His palm actually passed through Xiao Liuquan's fist and struck his chest. Xiao Luquan was wearing the guardian armor. Although he wasn't seriously injured, he still took a few steps back. Although a guardian is strong, it's a pity that you don't have the time to truly control his power. Furthermore, do you really think that after contracting with the guardian, he will really belong to you? Old Master Xiao retracted his palm. There was a wound on his finger and blood was dripping out. There was also a smear of blood on Xiao Liuquan's armor. Clearly, the blood did not belong to him. Chapter 749 The Strong Are Respected Crack! Crack! The guardian armor on Xiao Liuquan's body cracked. It wasn't shattering, but the armor was automatically disintegrating. The black jade-like armor quickly disintegrated from Xiao Liuquan's body and condensed into a figure in the air. It was a black jade golem. It looked very strange. It had the appearance of a human, but its body was black jade. Old Master Xiao looked at Xiao Liuquan and said coldly, in this world, only strength is the eternal truth. The so-called guardian only wants to protect humans, who can make it stronger. I'm far stronger than you, so it abandoned you and chose me. The rules of the world are just that cruel. The strong are respected. As old master Xia spoke, the black jade-like guardian had already transformed into armor again. However, this time, it was on old master Xia. Old master Xia's white hair had already turned completely black. Wearing the black jade guardian armor, he looked even more majestic and heroic. His nose was slightly aquiline, giving him the look of the ruthlessness of an ambitious and ruthless character. It made people fear him. Without the protection of the black jade armor, Xia Liuquan's essence energy began to leak out as it was absorbed by the heaven and earth origin returning array. Old Master Xia already had terrifying essence energy and vitality. Now, with the power of the black jade armor, his strength was unimaginable. With a punch, Xiao Luquan only had time to raise his arm to block before he was sent flying. He slammed into the light barrier and spat out a mouthful of blood. Zhou Wen was still striking the barrier, but he hadn't blasted it open. When he turned his head and saw the scene, he was somewhat alarmed. Although I knew that guardians are unreliable, I never expected them to be so unreliable. It actually betrayed its owner just like that. Thankfully, I didn't contract a guardian. Zhou Wen was secretly glad that he didn't contract with guardians. Zhou Wen secretly decided that unless it was a master-slave contract like Demonic Neonate, even if he couldn't advance to the mythical stage, he definitely wouldn't contract a guardian. Now, there was no time for Zhou Wen to think too much. Xiao Luquan was already at his limits. If he didn't leave, he would only be able to fight old Siko Xia in the Heaven and Earth Origin Returning Array. Fighting him here would be too disadvantageous. However, the barrier was too hard. 
the power of the demon dragon true body couldn't blast it open in a short period of time. By the time he blasted it open, old Siko Xia would have already charged over. Suddenly, Zhou Wen thought of an idea. Although he didn't know if it would work, he had to give it a try. Looking at Xia Xian Yu, who had expended all her essence energy and was losing her essence, vitality, and spirit, Zhou Wen switched to the Tao Sutra and summoned the heaven opening scripture of the highest elder to protect himself and Xia Xian Yu. Then, he hugged the log to his waist and slammed it into the light barrier of the heaven and earth origin returning array. I've carried you for so long. If you don't give me some help, I'm going to die here, Zhou Wen thought as the log slammed into the barrier. Zhou Wen originally wanted to try using the heavy mass of the log to aid him, but to his surprise, he heard a loud thud. The entire heaven and earth origin returning array's barrier shattered like glass. It stopped operating as the golden runes beneath dimmed. Everyone was stunned as old master Xia gave up on attacking Xia Luchuan. He turned his head and looked at Zhou Wen, staring at the log in his arms with a puzzled look. Xia Xian Yu, who was sitting beside him, looked at Zhou Wen with a look of surprise. She never expected Zhou Wen to crack the heaven and earth origin returning array. Zhou Wen never expected the log to be so powerful. If he had known this would happen, he would have long cracked open the heaven and earth origin returning array. He wouldn't have needed to wait until now. However, Zhou Wen didn't waste any time being dazed. He ran towards the Hall of Supreme Harmony with the log in hand. Old Master Xia's figure moved as he attempted to stop Zhou Wen. Although he didn't know what Zhou Wen was up to, he didn't think it was anything good, nor did he wish for anything to happen. Just as he moved, he saw a sword beam stab at him. Old Master Xia dodged slightly, and the evil slaying sword flew past his face. Xia Luchuan held the pure hook sword with both hands and cleaved down from behind. Old Master Xia snorted and flicked the pure hook sword with his finger, sending it flying. Xia Liuchuan's figure appeared beside the evil slaying sword that had already flown over. He held onto the evil slaying sword and slashed at old master Xia's neck. I told you, I taught you everything. Your tricks are useless against me. Old master Xia seemed to have expected Xia Luchuan to appear there and punched him in the abdomen. This punch carried unparalleled power. If one was hit, even a steel castle would be blasted open, much less a person. It was evident that old master Xia really wanted to kill Xia Luchuan. However, Xia Liuchuan's person disappeared again. Old Master Xia's fist missed again. Clang. A sword stabbed into Old Master Xia's back. It was the ancient sword that Xia Xianyu used. At that moment, Xia Luchuan held it in his hand and pierced through Old Master Xia's black jade armor. Very good. Really good. I never expected your sword warp technique to reach such a stage. You can use the sword of others to warp. From the looks of it, you never planned on following my orders to kill Zhou Wen from the beginning. Old Master Xia lowered his head as his eyes turned terrifying. Without turning around, he enunciated each word with a heavy tone. The ancient sword had penetrated three inches in, and the sword beam erupted like a volcano. However, no matter how Xia Luchuan exerted his strength, he was unable to move the sword tip any further. Old Master Xia's figure suddenly turned blurry and vanished in front of Xia Luchuan as though he had teleported. Xia Luchuan cursed silently and used sword warp. When he appeared again, he was already beside the evil slaying sword. However, just as Xia Luchuan appeared, old master Xia appeared beside the evil slaying sword and punched him to the ground. Boom! Xia Luchuan's body slammed heavily to the ground, creating a huge crater. Blood spewed out of his mouth as countless bones fractured. Brother! Xia Xianyu struggled to stand up and wanted to rush over. Don't come over! Leave quickly! Xia Luchuan gritted his teeth and shouted. At the same time, he used sword warp with all his might again. When he arrived beside the pure hook sword, his body clearly staggered, but his grip on the sword remained immensely firm. However, the moment he held the pure hook sword, old master Xia had already appeared in front of him. Without waiting for Xia Luchuan to swing his sword, his fists had already struck Xia Liuchuan's chest at an indiscernible speed. Xia Luchuan vomited blood and his sternum collapsed. Chapter 750 Freakish Monster While Xia Luchuan held back old master Xia, Zhou Wen finally reached the top of the Hall of Supreme Harmony's roof. When he raised the log to the highest point, Zhou Wen knew that he was at the right spot. After the log was erected on the roof, it seemed to be sucked by a magnet. Zhou Wen didn't need to support it to prevent it from falling. It's done! Zhou Wen was delighted as he took two steps back. The word slave didn't appear on his forehead again. Zhou Wen didn't have the time to see what changes the log had undergone because Xiao Luchuan was about to be sucked dry. Old Master Xia's hand grabbed Xia Liuchuan's head, causing his essence energy, essence, vitality, and spirit to rush into Old Master Xia's body. Originally, 
Xia Liuquan's life had nothing to do with Zhou Wen, but if he allowed old master Xia to absorb Xia Liuquan's powers to advance to the mythical stage, it would be even harder to deal with him. Furthermore, if Xia Liuquan hadn't held back old master Xia just now, it would have been very difficult for him to escape old master Xia and erect the log above the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Without the restriction of the log, Zhou Wen felt much more relaxed. Dr. Darkness possessed him as he drew Bamboo Blade. He used Transcendent Flying Immortal and instantly appeared in front of Old Master Xia and slashed at his hand that was grabbing Xia Luquan. Old Master Xia's other hand blocked the Bamboo Blade at the last moment. With the protection of the Black Jade Armor, Bamboo Blade failed to injure his hand. However, this was within Zhou Wen's expectations. He held the Orchid Blade in his other hand and slashed at Old Master Xia's neck from a strange angle. Old Master Xia had no choice but to let go of Xia Luquan and grab the Orchid Blade with his other hand. Zhou Wen's movement technique changed as he danced in the air, preventing Old Master Xia's hand from touching his saber. With one long and one short blade in hand, he slashed at Old Master Xia from all sorts of strange angles. He didn't dare use his essence energy skills and only relied on his strength to attack. Although the Heaven and Earth Origin Returning Array had been destroyed, Old Master Xia had the ability to absorb all sorts of essence energy. Even an essence energy skill with powerful offensive strength like the Golden Sword Aura would be directly absorbed by him and augment him. The other essence energy skills were even more useless. Thankfully, Zhou Wen was best at movement techniques. He didn't need to release his essence energy or he would have been sucked in by Old Master Xia. Outside Forbidden City, Zhang Chuangqiu and Dugu Gu were already dumbfounded. With the Heaven and Earth Origin Returning Array enveloping the area, they had no idea what was happening inside. After the array was destroyed by Zhou Wen, they could finally see the situation inside. However, they ended up seeing that Xiao Luquan had been beaten up by Old Master Xiao and how Zhou Wen had helped to resolve the situation and was fighting Old Master Xiao. In addition, more than 10,000 Xiao family members had collapsed to the ground. It left them momentarily shocked, unsure of what had happened. Zhou Wen pushed Transcendent Flying Immortal to its limits. With Dr. Darkness strengthening his body, his speed was much faster than a mythical creature like Six Winged. However, his two sabers did not touch Old Master Xia at all. Path to Snatching Heaven Zhou Wen recognized that the movement technique Old Master Xia was using was the Path to Snatching Heaven. Zhou Wen didn't find it strange that Old Master Xia could use Path to Snatching Heaven. Furthermore, Old Master Xia's Path to Snatching Heaven was stronger than Xia Xuanyu's. Clearly, he had long cultivated it to the divine level. However, this movement technique was somewhat different from Xia Xuanyu's. It was several times stronger. Even Zhou Wen's divine transcendent flying immortal paled in comparison. What was even more terrifying was that not only did Old Master Xia have a good movement technique, but he seemed to have made terrifying achievements in his various techniques. Every ordinary move was like a finishing touch. It was as if every move had reached a divine level. Zhou Wen was completely suppressed in a short period of time. Be it in terms of technique or strength, he was unable to fight Old Master Xia head-on. If not for the fact that he already knew the profundity of the path to snatching heaven, he would have been injured by Old Master Xia. With his understanding of path to snatching heaven and the wonders of transcendent flying immortal, Zhou Wen was barely able to maintain an undefeated stance. This sicko is a monster. How can someone cultivate all the techniques to the divine level? Is he still human? Zhou Wen knew very well how difficult it was to cultivate a technique to the divine level. After cultivating for so long, he had only cultivated transcendent flying immortal to the divine level. Xia Luquan was about 10 years older than him but he had also only cultivated Sword Warp to the Divine Level. As for Old Master Xia, he gave Zhou Wen the feeling that he was omnipotent. It was as though any technique would become an unparalleled Divine Technique in his hands. Although he didn't use any Essence Energy skills, he was already suffocating from the pressure. Thankfully, Zhou Wen was a person who was calmer and less prone to mistakes in times of adversity. He kept searching for an opportunity to defeat Old Master Xia. Typical companion beast attacks weren't of much use against someone like Old Master Xia, who could absorb essence energy skills. Physical attacks were relatively effective against him. However, now that he had the guardian armor, he was like a tiger with wings. Typical mythical companion beasts were probably not a threat to him. Tyrant Behemoth was originally a better choice. Unfortunately, its absolute strength had run out not long ago, so it couldn't be used for the time being. After some thought, Zhou Wen realized that among his companion beasts, the only ones that might pose a threat to old master Xia were Torch Dragon's Bright Torch Vision World, Demonic Neonate's Demonic Sword, and Truth Listener that had activated multiple earrings. However, they might only be effective and not necessarily useful. Therefore, Zhou Wen had to find an appropriate opportunity 
to use Torch Dragon's Bright Torch World. He only hoped to kill Old Master Xia in one strike and not give him any chance. His flesh tore as Old Master Xia's fingertip brushed past Zhou Wen's arm. Immediately, his flesh was sliced open and blood flowed out. If Zhou Wen had dodged any slower, his arm would have been severed. To fight someone whose movement techniques weren't slower than them, whose attacks were more ruthless than them, and whose moves were more ingenious than them, anyone would feel immense pressure. If they weren't careful, they might be killed in one strike. In reality, there was no rewind option like in game, so Zhou Wen didn't dare be careless. He would rather be injured than take the risk of being killed in one strike. You are indeed different from the rest. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw such a movement technique and endurance from an old man in his 70s or 80s, but you are only 17 or 18 years old. To be able to do this much, your future achievements will definitely not be inferior to Antienzwa's if you don't die. Old Master Xia said calmly as he attacked. Actually, he shouldn't be called Old Master Xia anymore because his current appearance was almost the same as a man in his 30s. There were no signs of aging on his body. His majestic figure, domineering aura, and invincible combat strength made him seem invulnerable. Blood splattered as another wound appeared on Zhou Wen's back. I'll help you. Xiao Luchuan struggled to stand up, but his injuries were too serious. He staggered as he walked. Only his hand that held the sword remained steady. Xiao Luchuan wanted to throw his sword at Old Master Xia, but before he could do so, Old Master Xia had already struck out with his palm, sending Xiao Luchuan flying along with his sword. Now, Zhou Wen instantly unleashed his strength. He pushed Transcendent Flying Immortal to its limits as the two blades transformed into streams of light that crisscrossed with Old Master Xiao.